Okay, let's get day eight. New player stream going. So I gotta get the links. Haven't done this in two days. Good to go. What's up, Kaido? You are first. How you doing? What's up, Mejia? All right. So today we got more summons. I haven't opened this since. Uh, yo, what's up, Mu? What's up, Gian? I haven't. I haven't played for the last two days. I had to I had some real life stuff to take care of. But we have finished it all and we are back. So let's grab all our stuff. At least I have 31. Okay. You watched the Game Awards? I, uh, yes, I did. I did watch them yesterday. There wasn't anything too crazy. They had like the Ark Knights Enfield trailer. They had a new Monster Hunter coming out. Those are like the only two things I was interested in whatsoever. My responsibility is important, I guess. I guess. But yeah, I cleaned a ton. Yeah, new Monster Hunter, but it's not until 2025. The new Monster Hunter they like showed, but it's not for a very long time. Yeah, Monster Hunter Wilds. I'm a big Monster Hunter guy. I've always loved it. So we're having free rolls on Hawkeye Star Rail. You also, isn't there, I think you get like 1,600 free Primo gems? Or free whatever they're called in that game. 1,600 for free for logging in. Is that today or do I think you get it tomorrow? <laughs> if it has wire bugs, I'll still play. I like those things too much. Yeah, what's up, Miha? The, uh, so it looked like Monster Hunter World, but with some extra stuff. It's going to be good. I mean, Monster Hunter never misses, really. It's always the same game, so if you don't like Monster Hunter, you're not going to like it. But. Yo, yeah, what's up, Neo Nico? Ooh, Spark? No. Is it possible to get ML5s from Covenant anymore? I haven't seen one in so long. I'm starting to believe it's not possible. What's up, Ewok? All right, well, there's our summons. What's up, Matsu? I dropped a dark light, dark light leg this morning. Does it change something for a new player guide? Dark light leg, what's that mean? What is a dark light leg? I played a demo of it on my DD or DS once, but Monster Hunter is my first Monster Hunter, but I like it a lot. The, I love the old Monster Hunters. The new ones are, uh, I don't know. I love the simplicity of old Monster Hunter. The new ones, like they try to add too much stuff, but they're just trying to keep up with like modern games and adding a bunch of stuff, so I get it, I guess. But I played the ones on my PSP. I played, I played everything. I played N or, uh, Nintendo Wii one, the PSP ones, or what I started on. I just loved how simple the game was. But it was a gear gotcha game. Like that's the thing. It was like getting uh, amulets and stuff. Like it was a gear gotcha game. So Monster Hunter was like my first step into playing gotcha games, I guess. Because the early, early games you farm for like talismans that had random stats. But that's the thing. Monster Hunter is just like a gotcha game, but infinite. The more time you put in, the more chances you have of stuff. And it's so sick. Hey, Mr. Tearless. Nope, we're going to do that today. <clears throat> we got a bunch of stuff to do today. I am so far behind. It's unbelievable. But I... Uh, 
So, guys, I've been living doing the bare minimum in my regular life. So my room was a disaster all the time. It just felt really bad. But yesterday, I just I cleaned everything. I got a went out and got a dresser. Um, I just I'm wanting to get my life more situated going into next year. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I wait. Why don't I have any abyss guides? Huh? Wait, I don't have any abyss guides. How? It didn't refresh my abyss guides? The, what in the world? What a new login day. Why do I not have new abyss floors? Oh, I... I purified. Well, I'm dumb. I purified it. Ah, that's what I did. All right, well, uh, my brain ain't here yet. Whoops. All right, well, we're still gonna do two. <laughs> Are you still using LD player? Yeah, I've always used LD player. LD player is just the most consistent out of all emulators for me and has been for five years. I've tried them all. LD is my favorite. For a new player with a bruiser box, would you recommend ML5? <laughs> five star dar unit dark? Well, I don't know what unit that is. Some five star units are terrible. Um, but no, it's not going to change the guide at all. Normally, anytime you get a, a new character, I say to ignore it. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I purified that. That sucks. I don't, it doesn't really matter. I, I, I have to, or it's always going to be like one day behind. So it's all good. How's your headhunt, Mitch? I hit him out Ken. I don't even know. I just do it every day. <laughs> I don't look at who it pulls because it doesn't matter. I'm going to have to refresh a bunch. I mean, I'm just getting the one character. I don't have options, so I don't know. I don't pay attention to it. I just click it and back out of it. I don't even know if I've gotten Rowana yet. I don't think I have. I dropped Trays. Is he good? I mean, he's good, but he's not going to be good for you for a long time. That's the thing, it's the most characters in this game. If you get, they're not going to be good for a long time. What do I do with two copies of Tamar Artifact? Just save each individual copy. You don't have to put it on anything right now. It's not really the greatest artifact for a lot of things. It's a good artifact for certain things, but they're usually, a lot of times, the four-star artifacts for Soul Weavers are just better. I created an account five days ago. Uh, who else should I pull Tamar or Group Summon? Landy F10A first. Um... So one option you have with that is you could put Tamara and Landy Cerise into one banner and then do 120 summons. You need to do 120 summons and try not to use any sky stones, but do 120 summons over the next little bit. And then if you don't get Tamarin, grab Tamarin from that. That's like the most efficient thing you can do right now um, because then you have chance at other five stars. Are you going to roll Sharoon? No, not while the banner's up. No. On new accounts, I don't summon really anything that's on banner. Unless it's a limited, that's the only thing I'll summon. It's just not, it's just not fair to other players that are starting later. So I don't want to summon anything that's on banner because I don't. I, I'm trying to avoid having anyone think that they are played at a wrong time where their account's not good. So I'm trying not to summon at all, so they can see that you can just be good without it. I always summon on limited, so because usually anytime new limiteds come out, they're always good, and that helps people know to summon unlimiteds because I did it, but I don't summon on any banners besides that on new accounts. So we have Hunt Buff this weekend, but that's like it. I'd say no because Biblis is not limited. Oh, so Biblis is not limited? Nice. Mo can instead of Spectre win? Not gonna happen. But Saul thinks to follow. Biblis not limited? Yeah, so it's not a Lethe side story style thing <clears throat> it's just a i guess uh lytica is going to be more like the galilea story we might have the um the return of that one style of play whatever it is the tft style of game we'll find out all the information for that next week what all was on the lilius we didn't get two new characters Lilius, so we, we just got lilius so i don't know i honestly have no idea what we're about to be getting Charlotte or Sermia better for Golem 13. Um, technically, Sermia is, but hey, Sals, thanks for the follow and the yes, Twitch Prime. Just subscribe. How you doing this morning? All right, boys, we got to make up for lost time the last few days. I got to put some hours in. 
we are going to be doing a new player PvP tier list and a new player PvE tier list today. And that those couple of videos should like help boost everything a lot. They're not the thing is E7 is just super dead right now in terms of being a content creator. Everybody's views are down, everybody's everything's down right now, so a lot of people are just not really doing much for E7. <laughs> This happens every once in a while, but hey man, uh, I've been back in E7, thanks for day by day guides, hell yeah. Well, I hope you are enjoying the game again. Or, well, enjoying the game maybe for the first time, because a lot of people quit and then came back and actually get to experience the game. Are these characters not geared? I am doing nothing. What, are going to get milk for content? Everything is right now. I pulled Ludwig. Ludwig's pretty fun. No, they're definitely geared. It's just, everything's just tanky. But no, everything. Everything right now is going to get milk for content. Like, I'm glad I'm doing the new player guide stuff because that's like the only thing I can think to do outside of making like one Christy video, one whatever video. So. Can I make do with Destine and Brig? Yeah, well, I don't want to waste bookmarks. You, you want Tamron. Tamron and Brig will clear like everything for you. There is, you always want Tamron, any account. There's no no replacement that's as good as her. Destina works for like clearing early story, but Tamron's just, you could get by without her if you really wanted to, but your life's just gonna be way harder. Ludwig's about to be niche since he's more cleave focused. That, that is such a turd. Stop it. I bought him, I bought him like wet food. I don't want to give it to him because he's being a little turd. Uh, do you have a time in mind when to start the tier list? Um, we can do it early. I don't really care. We have a lot of stuff to do today. So, they should bring the side stories like before, not letting us buy with a certain item. Then the game will be less dead. Bring the side stories like before. What do you mean? Do I think full metal is coming soon? Yes, I definitely do. But should I pull Tamarin or group? Oh wait, I already answered that, Miha. But yeah, you can put Tamarin in your in your thing and do Landy Cerise Tamarin for your uh, custom banner. It's the most efficient thing you do as new players. But the uh, the custom banner is gone already, isn't it? But the custom banner left on the sixth. I don't. Even, you shouldn't even have the custom banner anymore. I don't think, unless you started it before, and that then your character's already determined. And at that point, I think if you don't summon on Tamarin, you're not going to have Tamarin to go through story with, which you can do, but Tamarin is very, very good. Okay, so, well, we should have been at Abyss uh, 59 today, but I guess instead tomorrow we're going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so we didn't really change how quick we get to Abyss 70, because Abyss... Abyss 70 is the new uh, challenge here. So, we, uh, or well, it's the next thing. So we need to clear Wyvern 10, 10 times or more. So let's go do a little Wyvern work. I'm going to make some penguins. Start working on our actual full, full term Wyvern team. How many penguins do I have? Oh, I already have penguins. Okay, never mind. Well, let's just grab some of these then. Actually, I think I was supposed to wait on that because I was doing golem challenges. Taking a few day break is very hard because I don't remember exactly where I was in terms of progress of everything. And that is not a good thing. Um, but either way, let's go work on our Wyvern. Should I pull for Shireen? I got Shu and Landy already. I would not pull on anything right now because Biblis is super, super good for new players. Biblis is like she is going to be a very meta defining unit. Oh, Didi, what happened to making Abyss videos on the old beginner account? Or I will do this on the, the uh, I will do them on this account. So guys, a little update. I was doing a heavy cleaning thing like two days ago, and I deleted a bunch of stuff, and I deleted that old account. Or like I, so I did a fresh install of um, my emulator, and I deleted, and I don't remember the login for that old account. Therefore, we are kind of just stuck on this account only now. <laughs> 
Uh, but yes, I will be doing everything. Do not worry. This account, I no matter what, will be doing everything. But yeah, I got a little ahead of myself on cleaning. So we have lost our old account unless I can figure out the login stuff for it. I don't remember the email. I remember the password. It was password is easy. But I don't remember the email. Therefore, old account might be gone forever at this point, which is sad. But is what it is. I I usually have like a document either in my phone that has everything on it. So any ML event are worth any ML event are worth. Yes. Oh, is ML summon uh, at the moment worth as a new player? No. Ludwig, I would not say anyone should pull. They they mean the summon. So they you, don't you want free stuff? They don't mean the event. They they're saying it incorrectly. Um, but I know what they're saying. They're saying is the current um, banner good for Ludwig? And the answer is no. Like Ludwig's a good character, but there's no way. Your OG global? No, I have my OG global. Most of my old accounts I still have, but it's my um, it's the old tutorial, like what I made the old 30 day challenge guide on. That account had like six ML fives and stuff. I got I, I, there's a good chance I'll remember it eventually, but as of right now, I do not know. So. I'm uh, I'm still not at crafting. Is that what they call skill issue? Yes, and that that will go away over time. So don't worry. I was horrendous at crafting for the first year of playing. I knew the very very basics. Like one thing with crafting, you guys just don't need to be as scared of it as you are. One, a if it, if a piece of gear has all good subsets and are not mineral, you can probably use a piece of gear, even if it's purple. Add to the new player. Second, so don't be as picky on gear as you are being. Um, if you see the substats will work on a character that you're wanting to build, just upgrade it and then just sell it later if it's bad. Two, you're going to end up selling good pieces of gear. It's just part of it. You accidentally do it and you don't know any better. I, If I had every good piece of gear from the time I started the game, like my account's already insanely strong. If I had all that old stuff, oh my god, my account would be insane. Like if I knew what I was doing from crafting from day one, it's like you guys got to make mistakes. So never be everyone's so scared of two things, crafting and RTA. And RTA is just go in and lose games and learn. Crafting is just make the mistakes and you'll stop making them later as you start trying to build more characters and see how other characters perform into things. Their mistakes will go away. You want to make as little mistakes as possible, but if you make a mistake, you just I mean, guys, this is a long term game. You're going to be playing it for years. Like, that's the great thing about this game. You're going to be playing it for years of your life. It becomes a daily routine, and you just vibe. Keep playing. Where'd movie go? Uh, okay, let's go ahead and throw gear on our dudes. So do not stress too much about making early game mistakes, because it, it don't matter. Um, then we do HP set. We're just gonna, let's see if we can set up the auto wyvern 13 team for a minute because we need to clear 10 stages. So let's do that. Mui, go ahead and throw him on one of the daydream jokers. I got ML Ludwig, can't even build him a new account? Oh, hell no. New, ML Ludwig, you're not gonna have multiple max books. So he's like essentially useless for new players for a very long time, which sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, this is the gear with effectiveness, so. And then for, which is the one with effectiveness? It is this one. And what's the ring with effectiveness? It is this one. And then we want speed. Now we want attack percent. And we'll just throw him on these. I have 33 effectiveness. A little low, but it'll probably do just fine. We gotta level up gear a little bit. I need to sell gear. Okay, I'll catch up in chat in just a minute, but I gotta click a ton of different things right now, so just bear with me. We are, we have to clear Wyvern 13 or Wyvern whatever multiple times, so I gotta set all this up. I just wanna see how close we are to actually um, autoing. Uh. Do that one. We do this. The bad thing is I want attack for some boots. This has effectiveness, right? No. What's the one with effectiveness? This one? Only a seven? Uh-oh. Kind of bad. Um, so I need to buy the crit set pieces. 
Yeah, we kind of need to buy the crit set stuff. Uh, where's the ring? We don't need as much crit, though. So, honestly, I just don't have anything with effectiveness, which we don't really need on Sigurd anyway, but it's what it is. I could probably just do five piece. It'll be fine. Do I have any effectiveness? No, I didn't level up. Okay, this will be fine. We're way over crit cap because we have Furious, but it is what it is. This is just for beating it a couple times now. Um, what else do we want? Need our Angelica on gear, so let's move the gear over. Having free gear removal as a new player is so clutch. And then the boots. There we go. Let's level this up. All right, let me read. And honestly, I just saw her take come on the Clab Z7 become the only gotcha regret quitting. Why ads? What do you mean why ads in this? Sold it for V bucks. All right, especially change Alexa good for Wyvern. No, she, she's good for Wyvern, but she's just not worth it. Like, there's no no reasons, too many resources for. And does if you're asking why ads, you haven't been here all month probably. I mean, you have to play ads on your stream on Twitch. Click on stream and get greeted by ads. Oh, that's a skill issue. Twitch makes you play ads. No matter what stream you go to, you're gonna get ads on Twitch. Nothing we can do about it. They do not let. They allow us to either play more ads, and that's it. <laughs> Do you want more ads? Because I can definitely set it for more ads. All I can say is if you don't want ads, there's t t Twitch Turbo, which makes it where you have no ads on Twitch, or you can Twitch Prime. Oh, wait, I, I should have did my arena before I did this. Okay, I'll catch up on chat in just a second. Let me go in. I just want to see how close we are to beating it, but AAC, Christy knows Christy Twitch Prime, not to deal with ads subscribe. anymore. Easy. Uh, hunt buff. Yeah, I know. I'm excited. Riff, it's riff buff against Mark too, right? All right, let's just see how close we are with... Oops. I didn't switch my team. Account is bugged. I can't select more. That's everyone's. It's not your account. It's everyone's accounts. You aren't special. We're all struggling. Okay, let me slap Mui in. And let's see how close this is to beating it. I don't think it will beat it. Or even close to beat it, but... Yeah, the rune buff day is the biggest day for you guys. Um, got landing, got in life and custom with free summons. Uh, would it help me with early game PvP? Yes. L Guiding light landing. The only way to use landing in PvP is Guiding light. But yeah, trust me, guys. I know ads are annoying, but there's nothing I can do about it. Ads. I mean, Twitch makes you play ads, so. They give you options to not have them. If you don't want to do those options, then you can't complain. I mean, you can complain, but I just, there's nothing I can do. It's out of my control. I am sorry. I'm almost done uh, with all labyrinths. Took me one month and a half. Yeah, that's about how long it takes. What's up, dang? What about counter bloodstone landing? It's not good anymore. That was good like 20 years ago. I mean, it might work, but the thing is as a new player, are you going to have good counter gear for landing? Probably not. No Croza? No, we're, uh, if you have Croza, I still think Croza's best in slot here, but we aren't doing Croza for this one because I want to show that it doesn't matter which character you use. So we didn't land the attack down or anything. We do need to put more Molas into our Mui. Dude, Furious has landed nothing. Furious has 65 effectiveness, right? I'd be interested if you use Rose Run instead of Blue Croza because she scales in end game expos. I mean, end game expos, you're going to have Brig. So there's no point. Rose is not as good as Croza. I'll never suggest. I'll never suggest Rose over Croza. I mean, if you don't have Croza and want to use Rose, it works, but Rose is nowhere near as good as Croza. Croza's just. There we go. We actually landed some debuffs. Holy cow.
But yeah, Labyrinth takes a long time. AD80, is Green Movie good for anything? No. Green Movie is not very good right now, sadly. Did we? I don't remember if we mulled Furious or not. I think we mulled as S3. But I cannot remember. Should I spend my leaf and unrecorded history to farm Catalyst, even though it's not AP buff? Um, I mean, I always say if you're going to be farming, there's no reason not to just spend resources early. Like, saving everything for only hunt buff, you're going to make less progression. Like, your progression is going to be more, like, you're going to get more out of each thing you spend. But the thing is, you can only farm, as a new player, you're going to be using Skystones for refreshes. So you can only farm so much, so you're going to have plenty of resources to farm all the time at the beginning. Hey, we beat it on full auto. Okay, well, our team's basically done. We didn't really have to do anything. We can fine tune it and make it better, but we have a Wyvern 13 team. That's easy. But yeah, no, um, it's not. Green movie is not good right now. Easy. So I have to beat that, what, 10 times? um in terms of what we could do to make this faster the thing is our cigarette has no molagora so she's doing no damage whatsoever so we need to get a bunch of shiny enchantments and then we need what does he need we need this, the sharp skill thingies that'll give us a little bit more damage and um furious needs to be we did that one we did that one okay so he needs we need one twisted fang for now and that'll put us at 84 five no it puts at 90. So technically we need eight twisted fangs so eight twisted fangs and a bunch of things for cigarette let's go do at least a little of that right now we're gonna level this up to 24 but i never go past 24 on these i just did one pool for new ml hero and got mui so that means you lost a 50 50. you have a 50 50 chance of getting the new or of the uh moonlight character so his thing doesn't matter. His can go to 21. Put his to 21. Okay, well, it went a little higher. It's whatever. Okay, so his crit damage is only 183. That's so low. Um, if we want to make this better for now, this doesn't have effectiveness, right? Oh, it does have effectiveness. Okay, well, we're kind of forced to use it. I have no charms. Okay, so we need... I don't think I have much AP. Let's look. How much AP do I have? Oh, I have a ton of AP. Okay, I don't know how many we need for cigarettes, so I'm just gonna buy 10 of these. And then we needed these for Furious, and we needed these for Mui. So these for Mui, let's buy five. And then let's buy four. Okay. I had way more AP than I thought I did. That's good. But yeah, if you get the new Ludwig, you're really not going to be able to use him on a new account because his whole kit revolves around soul burning and taking early turn. And you're only you're not even going to have one max tag health for like the first two months of playing. I think I usually have my first max tag health after one month. And one max Tiger Hells goes under Spectre Chenebria, making him essentially useless. Spectre Chenebria is not going to be any better for him. Okay, so let's do skill enhance. What's the best skill to enhance? The S1 we get the most out of, technically. So I can do, do the, that, I guess. Does this have a turn cooldown? No. All right, well, I'm going to do this one. So we need to farm a bunch of these. And then let's go to our... Mui. Um, this has one turn cooldown. Let's go ahead and do that. This has a damage, damage, damage. That one doesn't matter at all. Effect chance and this is effect chance. Let's do the effect chance on this. The effect chance is 100% for the decreased attack, which is super nice. Okay, so we just leave that as is. Do I have any boxes? I do. Okay, so let's look at Furious then. Furious very important to get his skill three up to this so i need four more so four of these okay so that gives us 
max effect chance here now and now furious is done i don't think almola is s1 I think this would this would be slightly more consistent it goes to what is it 35 but it's all good so now let's just go farm it let's go set up a five run and see how many times it beats it say we're gonna get another blessing they did but are we actually going to get it before the end of the year not sure also do you were you able to pull him a ludwig yeah i got i got him a ludwig on the main account i built him i, I used him like yesterday i streamed for like two hours yesterday i used him he's he's really good in arena bastard i mean i i pulled him and i still have almost three thousand mystic medals so i should i'm there's a good chance I'm almost to a point where I will just have all the new MO5s as they come out. So now we're just sitting and waiting for Landy to come back. And we have all the MO5s. New Monster Hunter game called Monster Hunter. It's Monster Hunter Wild. Yeah, Wild Heart. I, called Wilds. I don't know if it's called Wild Heart. Maybe it is. I don't know. Should I still take Shu from Selective Summon? Yes. Shu is still very, very good for new players. It's one of the characters you can get the most value out of. That's one thing that I will say the F7 Discord does not understand the difference between being a new player playing RTA and being an older player with more picks. So uh, their advice is just so bad, so, so often. Because they just don't understand. Okay, so we already failed the first one. So they, they were in there saying that it's like destine is not even good right now i literally pulled up khm stream and i watched a i think an elf mage fight yesterday and they both had destine in them and they are both like in the top 100. <laughs> this is like what are you guys talking about how are you allowed to give advice how are you allowed to give advice they they think so highly too of themselves like i i don't get it they just it's constantly in there that i i i don't give new or good new player advice so they're just in there giving the worst worst takes every time i see it would it make sense to go for shoe if i get a malandy since both of them rely on counters so the thing is there's just not many other characters if you have a malandy you could go for senya if you wanted to but having shoe is super super nice and once you get into rta you're gonna see that um what's it called it's ban and right now you get multiple counter sets you get the one counter set from um returning player rewards and you get another counter set from uh conquest point shot that's also why the cast 37 world cup are so bad um what genozad genozad and car car isn't the highest level rta player but genozad's perfect for it but car is a big name in e7 so a lot of people like seeing him on there but Car knows the game pr pretty well. Better than better than like your average player for sure. Like the Genozad's like he's finished legend in like the last or he finished legend like a season ago. So the casters for his own World Cup are fine. When they have the content creator casters. We're already almost pre, um, pre barrier. Not close to free to play though, Marcus. Wait, Marcus, what are you saying? Not close to free to play. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Meant the non content ca creator casters? Yeah, well, we don't really have those, do we? Is Ludwig worth the pity? Not for new players, no. And even for old players. He only... He's only going to work really well in one play style. Like, there are going to be a few people that figure out ways to use him outside of that play style, but Ludwig's going to be pretty hard-focused one play style. Jenna? I mean, I just went about the same as Jenna on my main account. Jenna... Jenna is pretty low spender compared to a lot of people. The only thing Jenna spends money on is summons. So when you like, look how much my movie just got hit for. With Croza, if oh, okay, so if they would have attacked movie right there, I would have lost, and I would have to restart. With Croza, movie never dies there. 
Why don't you buy experience boost for 300? No, you should. You should buy that. I just haven't bought it because I haven't been farming. The only time you buy that is if you're going to be farming heavily. So on this account, since I'm doing almost all of it on stream, it's not worth it for me to buy it because I'm barely farming. So here's... I'm only level 50 on this account, like account level 50. Normally when I'm to day 8, I'm like level 60 because I'm farming nonstop. But I'm trying to play this at a more realistic pace. But those of you guys that are hard farming, which I'm going to cover, I'm making a video today for day 2 and 3. Um, I was supposed to do that like 5 days ago. But... So our Furious turn order is messed up and we get no debuffs. So that's that's the main issue right now. But see, again, Crows in front line. Cigarette doesn't die there. It just makes early Wyvern. Having Crows as your front take for early Wyvern makes it so much easier. <laughs> your win rate just is infinitely higher. Do you still count as free to play if you only spend on skins though? I don't only spend on skins. I mean, the thing is, a lot, like, Genizad almost only spends on summons to do sh character showcases. Like, he doesn't go buy gear packs, he does Spending on this game doesn't even do that much for you. It doesn't do that much for you. Like, unless you're spending, like, $10,000 plus, spending on this game doesn't do that much. He gets 5k every month for free. So do I. I get 5k every month for free. That's $100. We get $100 for free per month. All content creators, any or all content creators in the content creator program, we all get 5k for free a month. Like, how, how many Sky Sons have we gotten for free from them? We used to not get 5k. The 5k thing's a more recent thing. But, so it's not even close to free to play? Who cares if it's close to free to play? Being free to play or a low spender doesn't change your experience in E7. You can just play the game for longer. Like, how much, the only thing is you're going to have more characters. But your gear quality isn't going to change much because they're not, mo other content creators don't, in, including me, we don't use our Skystones for farming. So the only thing is we're pulling more characters, but we're not getting any more gear. So if you're a non-spender, you're just going to have the same gear that we're going to have if you know what you're doing. And you'll just have less characters, meaning that your character pool is refined. All your best gear is on your characters you do have. So spending in this game, any of you guys that have the misconception that spending in this game does a ton for you, it doesn't. All it does is give you more characters. Now, if unless spenders are buying gear packs, buying all the leaf packs to farm a ton more, but if they're not buying that, they're not getting any further ahead of you. They're just, they have more characters. But a lot of people who play RTA only play the same 10 or 12 characters. So if you have a 10 or 12 character roster with crackhead gear on all of them. Uh-oh. If you have a 10 or 12 character roster with crackhead gear on them, then you're fine. When are you doing a new player guide? Um, I'm doing the second episode of it today. There's a ton of stuff I'm doing today. So we're also doing two tier lists today. One I'm going to upload today, one I'm going to upload tomorrow. Um, I, like I said, or at the beginning of the stream, I took like a two day break. Um, I, I mean, I still stream both days, but just barely. So uh, with taking that little break to get like my regular life stuff in order, Got a lot to catch up on. All right, so now we unlock the Mulligora challenges because we hit level 51. We can get a bunch of free stuff, which is big. Grab all this, and we'll grab all this. I got to do Expedition. I don't even know what these are. Oh, these are the um, crafting resources. Nothing wrong with investing into a game when you're going to play a long time? Def I mean, okay. I agree. Okay, we already finished all this before it even came up. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, well, our Molagora Challenge 2 is complete. That was sick. All right, now what level? I think it's like rank 61 to get the next Molagora Challenge. What's the next one? Yeah, rank 61. Okay, tomorrow we get a bunch of bookmarks, but we are, I am going to suggest any new player playing, summon Biblis, the new character that's coming next week. 
She is very, very good for new players. Easy to gear. Just any support character usually that comes out is going to be super good for new players. How many of these do I have? Decent amount. Alright, so what we're actually going to do is just farm Wyvern 11 uh, for this challenge just to get it done. Because I want to hurry up and get it done. So I can move on with more stuff. We're going to be clearing a bunch of story today. We'll probably beat chapter 3 today. Where do you use her? Biblis? Any time the opponent has a counter character. So I showed on my main account. Biblis doesn't need any damage. She just needs to survive. And she AoE defense breaks the opponent every turn if they counterattack you. So if they pick ML Landy, if they pick ML Euphine, if they pick any character in the game that counters, I think it even works on Aiden. Aiden's counterattack. She would proc in and counter. So, like, she works against everything. She is the most meta-defining character I've seen. Hey, I'm a returning player. Play for a month and a half, almost two years ago, and my account is similar worse than yours. Should I reroll my account? It's very advised, too, because you probably don't have any Sky Stones. So, if you don't have any... Do you have a bunch of Leafs, though? If you have a bunch of Leafs sitting, you can save your account. If you don't have any Leafs or Sky Stones, it's very, very hard to save your account. I have 80... Oh, if you have that, no, just use your current account. That's fine. Who's the best to pick from ML Headhunt? A-Ravi is really bad right now. I would not suggest getting A-Ravi. Um, I, I have a video on that, David. If you go to my channel, just go to my or Headhunt video. Actually, I can get you the link. I have a command on Twitch for it. Give me one second. This is the video. I just don't want to answer this and say a hundred billion character options. If I ever have a video up, I'm sorry. If it's a long answer, I'm just going to lead to the video because I don't want my whole stream to be answering the same 10 questions that take up half of the time. Malone is new A-Ravi, if you ask me. Malone is not good for new players to take either. So I would say Malone is a tier under the top tier. Can I use Simple Angelica instead of Wyvern? No. Sinful Angelica is only for one-shotting Wyvern. You, uh, you are probably not one-shotting Wyvern right now. Wyvern characters need to be blue. Need to be blue. Only exception is General Pergus. But no, I would not take Apoc Ravi nowadays. But if you ask in the official Discord, they will. It's funny because another thing I saw in there is they were telling like from the um, Moonlight Blessing 2, they were like questioning why people weren't taking Sea Lilius. They're like, wait, why is he telling you to take Hand Guy? And like I saw that fiasco the other day. If you ask any top legend player right now, they will still tell you to take Meat Eater Kalrick. They just, they're they are in their own echo chamber in there, and it's so bad for the community. I, guys, you saw the, like, struggle I went through with figure, or, like, deciding on what to suggest whenever that came out. I took DDR. I mean, take whatever. You're going to have fun with, too. That's an option. But from Second Moonlight Blessing, I had so many people, like, top players, tell me, <clears throat> do not suggest conquer list so just hand guy because he's irreplaceable and i did and now they're in there like oh he tells you to take this it's like okay uh who discord the official epic seven discord hey dita i need your help what do you need my help on it's like guys you can take my advice too check check main chat you guys can why did you get ruel main chat are you in my channel 143 or check your chat no on discord my main chat oh the substats i mean that left piece is almost perfect Oh, but that right piece has a fiver. But no, you take left piece there all the time. You take you take left piece. The five speed isn't worth the um, one crit chance, two crit damage. 
left side's just definitely better because you want to dodge flat defense, so that doesn't matter that it's higher. Is Biblis a must pull for players a month in, waiting for full Makos and Aespa? I think Biblis is going to be one of the most meta defining units that we've seen in like a year. Like the best thing you can do with that piece is keep rolling it and get uh, defense or HP percent. But the thing is that's so high rolled that you're going to be using your charms to skip the five speed. I would because the other sets are lower. So technically the left one has more gear score. But um, you're going to be using re restart stones on it anyway if it rolls bad. So you take the flat defense, it's whatever. Because if you took it and it rolled HP percent or defense percent, you're probably going to use a uh, reset stone on it anyway. So you can just take that. It's fine. That left one's... I mean, that's the dream piece. You're not going to get... You're not going to get another 5 speed with 5 crit chance, 7 crit damage. You could roll a million times and not get that. But yeah, Biblis actually seems interesting for a lot of play styles. She's good for everybody. She's good for cleavers. She's, she's good for literally anybody. Because she's impossible to kill. She has really high base stats for a ranger for bulk. So you can you build her with no crit chance, crit damage, just a little effectiveness. And she goes crazy. Like I showed, I had a 240 speed one yesterday with 1800 defense, 25k HP. With it was like 80 effectiveness. That's insane. You know how hard that is to kill? Something that tanky. 1800 defense, 25k HP at 240 speed. That is so hard to kill. So as a standard or like using her in standard play is insane. How would you build Pergus for Wyvern? Every front tank is built the same for regular Wyvern. So you just put all HP. Anything for Abyss 462. Is that spec or is that blue says? Who's the boss for 62? So nostalgic seeing Wyvern at 13-1. Yeah, we're just doing this because I want to get the challenge done. It says you need to bring non-debuff characters, so um, you can just use the normal team and bring Sector Tenebria, but you need to... It's hard for me to explain. If you bring Spectre Tenebria, you kind of have to get unlucky and get 15%ed multiple times and then use your Arceus. Like, I usually always beat it with the same team that I use for every other thing, but it's, if you do any debuff on the boss, it is going to heal, right? So you don't want to land any debuffs. You already finished the challenge? It's 10 runs. Have I finished the challenge? Do I take the five speed or pass? No, pass it. Take the left side. Okay, we already finished it. Nice. Okay, so now we need to craft 10 pieces of wyvern. No, pass on the five speed. The left one's way better. So I need to craft 10 pieces of wyvern gear. I'm going to craft necklace ass. And we are going to extract everything that isn't good, which should probably be everything. I mean, this piece technically could probably be used. That's a four speed check. Otherwise, I'm not going to roll this as two dead stats. All right, so we extract all of this. And that is done. Does Kana need her EE to be able to finish Zeo 1010? Um, I don't remember what her EE is. I don't think it matters. You want the EE for the extra stat, I think. But I think the extra stat's effectiveness. So I'm not sure. All right, so let's just go to open recruitment. There are no level one recruitments. Nice. Sick. Okay, we don't care how much damage we do here. We just want to... I mean, we can use Furious, I guess. And then we use Angelica. We just need to clear level one expos. Wait, is attack rate the multiplier for powder? Wait, what? Is ATT rate the multiplier or power? I don't know. I don't know anything about this. Like, damage. I mean, when a character like that comes out, I'm never going to look how much damage they do. That's a character you build full bulk and have her survive, unless you're a cleaver. But the thing is, she can proc that attack every single turn and it dispels you know how crazy it is it's an attack that dispels and two turn defense breaks and you can put her artifact on for more um for more debuffs that's wild she is going to be good there's hands down she's going to be insane especially for new players because she's so easy to gear
they gave Christy an SC and uh, they make a new debuffer. Yeah, the fact that Chris they didn't give Christy a cleanse and her skill three is insane. I'm not summoning until I see the limited. Well, I'm summoning both, so. She, it, she's cute, so it's extra nice. Sure. Okay, we have to clear five of these, so let's do this. Keep spamming these. And we'll move all our gear back after. I feel like they made a typo on SC Christy and it's affecting us, not affecting us. No, they definitely didn't. People are already using Christy and already ruined the effectiveness of. <laughs> my main 50 aspect tubers plus Celius, but I get ML Lane on my second account. I'm thinking of swapping my main. How's ML Lane with PV? I mean, ML Lane is like the best character in everything. So. I would highly suggest going with that other account, grabbing Spectre Tenebria and grabbing, um, but hey, grab, grab Spectre Tenebria, grab Meteor Kark from Selective Summit 2, and then you have Headhunt to grab Sea Lilius if you want. So then you'll have Sea Lilius, Spectre Tenebria, ML Landy, Meteor Kark. That, that count's already insane. But yo, Ixie Mad, thanks for the five gifted subs. Appreciate that. You haven't even, you haven't even said anything, have you? I don't think you said anything in chat. Just come in and drop the subs. Thank you for that. Any of you guys that gifted a sub, uh, MCD, Todrick got one, Cuddly Mouse, Friendly, and Michi Bunny. Congrats on your subs. Alright, we hit our sub goal. Time to end stream. Hope you guys enjoyed this 30 minute stream. We'll be back in three days. <laughs> I just about a returning player thing. Oh, okay. I scrolled up and I, you, you hadn't said anything for a few minutes, so. I answered your question, right? Hopefully I did. I have two chats open, so anytime I miss one of you guys' questions, just remember that and just repeat the question. Because it's a little hard to have both up at the same time. Oh, you're the one that was asking if you should keep your account. Okay, I remember, I remember. But yeah, you got enough resources. Your account's going to be fine. Just try to follow uh, along from wherever you are so like with the guide series just try to follow where you're at currently and find that episode of the guide and you'll be chilling about hi daddy what is your name hi daddy are you calling me daddy i am confused i'm trying to think when should we do the new player tier list should we just go ahead and start that now You guys want to just do that now? I blocked him to see if that's his name. <laughs> that's funny. Let's just tier list of what? We're going to be making a PvP tier list for new players and a PvE tier list for new players. People want me to break it down into two videos this time, so I'll go ahead and do the two videos for it. But the thing is, I need help on the PvE tier list, because you guys know I don't do a lot of the PvE in this game. Well, I, I just do it with my PvP character, so I don't care if a character's good or not. Yesterday I cleared BBK floor 105.16, forgot. But congrats. Lorena top tier. Okay, does anyone have a link to the Cecilia bot? I had someone give me the link last time. I left it open on my computer for two days and I shut my computer down last night for the first time in a year. So does anyone have the link <laughs> by chance? Anyone have Cecilia bot tier list link? Okay, that's done. We can do the Wyvern level one because I know this will get finished instantly. This is too many debuffs, but I don't care. It'll be fine. Add one of 80, get wrecked. Free to play scum. Free to watch scum. All right, new hero tier list. Are you going to combine how good the unit is, how difficult it is to gear them? Yes. That is going to be the PVP portion of the tier list. In terms of the PVE tier list, I'm just going to assume everything is going to be built on free gear. 
Those tier lists include MLs? I guess. I mean, the thing is, most ML characters are not good for PvE. But the PvP one, definitely. I mean, it's just... It, the reason we're doing the tier list is so that people who are pulling X character... Like, is this character good or not for me as a new player? So... I just want to have those questions answered in one video versus me answering always of I just pulled this thing should I use this instead of this I would like to try to get that in one video so we will start with the PVE tier list and we'll make the P I'll upload the PVE tier list today to YouTube after we make it on stream and then we'll upload the um, PVP one tomorrow Another one hour video. I mean, there's no way to not make a one hour video out of it. It's so hard not to. The only way not to is just uploading the video of the end um, careless and saying nothing about the characters. But I, I want like a little explanation into each character as I'm going through. So. Uh, I mean, I've already done enough to where I can open, I think, because my last team was an actual team. So we should be fine. Alright, we did 200k. That'll do. But yeah, Krant soon, little things like that, I need to know because I don't I don't do that generally. I don't do raid almost ever. But I have an account that can do Wyvern 13 auto accessory at 80%, but I'm kind of stuck in episode 3, chapter 4 of the story. I don't have Destino or Tamron. Should I keep going with the account? Are you, are you out of resources? The biggest thing, the only time I tell people to remake an account is when they're completely out of resources. So if you didn't get your account stabilized first before you spent everything on summons, your account is very hard to save. So if you've already spent everything, then a lot of the time, yes, I will say just restart. You'll be very happy you restarted. If once your once your account is stabilized, Epic Seven becomes a completely different game. Can I use Skystones burn energy? Yes. As a new player, I never. You should burn your Skystones for energy as a new player, but don't go below eight k. Like ever, having like right here, this is six or if don't go below six k, but eight k is a safer number. But like this, this is six thousand Skystones for energy. That's a ton of progression to get your account stabilized. You got to just look at it as every resource you, or every Skystone you spend, you're just making your account more stabilized for the future. Eventually, you'll stop burning them for energy after the first 30 days. But during the, or probably after like the first 20 days or so, you'll, you'll stop. But during that first 20 days, spending the extra Skystones will make, it takes your one month account to be a, four month account of playing properly which compared to most people your one month account being four months of progress ends up being a one to two year old account like your account will be better than a lot of people most people honestly who played the game for two one to two years that is why burning sky stones is very very good for new players because then you don't have to worry about oh we got a summon oh wait we need to craft golem pieces Golem. Let's craft golem rings. Okay. I would like that to go away. That's a speed check. That's a speed check. Not keeping that. All garbage, right? All garbage. Extract. Okay. I guess I could have crafted left side for that, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I still have resources to keep going. Yeah, if, as long as you have resources to keep going, if you have a bunch of leaves, you can save your account. Just find where you're at in the guide series and start following along with that. Change your teams up to what I have or as close to it as you can, and you will be fine. Speed checking barrier set with flat sets. We speed, you speed check everything. If you ever want to be fast in this game, you speed check everything. It's the only way you're going to get speed. Okay, you speed check everything. So that's dead. I'm actually going to extract this because we need to trade in for charms anyway. Uh, but you speed check everything. Look, that got a five roll. Okay, imagine that got a five roll and all max four rolls. This could have been a 26 speed piece of gear. 
and you could use it on broken set. Okay. You check anything with speed, but now it hit two other subsets that aren't speed, so we can go ahead and get rid of it. You speed check everything, even if it has one speed. If you don't speed check one speed pieces, you are not going to be able to get 20 speed pieces almost ever. Why Zeo fight so hard? Because you're not supposed to beat it as an early player. I've done the SC for Raz, learning to flirt. Who should I do next? If you have Arrowell, do Arrowell. Um, if you have Arrowell, do Arrowell. If you have, hold on, where are we on? It's in recruit, right? Okay, so the most important ones to do are Falconer, Clary, Lorena. You can do Montmorency, but we use Destina and all the places we use Montmorency. Um, Hazel is a good one to do just to have and have her done, but not super high priority unless you're doing the old Zeo, uh, beating Zeo. Carrot's good to do. Uh, Carmen Rose can be really good to do for Light Expos, but Light Expos aren't here right now, and I don't think we're going to have Light Expos for two, two or three months. Um... Other than that, Chris CSC is actually not terrible for new players because it gives you another night option. I think Chrissy's actually pretty great for new players right now, but Airwell is the most important. If you have Airwell, do Airwell. But Chris CSC is not bad to do. She's an anti cleave character. Um, you can pair her with, like, as an early player, if you have Senya, pair her with Senya. And it makes it your Senya to where she's always just going to solo the opponent. You don't have Arrowell? Okay. Well, any of the other ones I just listed, you can work on them. But it's just if, if you're going to use them or not. So Chrissy versus Pillis. Pillis is not good without the Artifact Rocket Punch. So that's the thing. Pillis is only good right now because of an Artifact. Where do we use Arrowell? PvP. Arrowell is like basically a 5-star PvP character. She's the debatably the best 3-star in the game. Pillows is really good, but only with the limited artifact. So I would not recommend building Pillows for anybody. She just doesn't do enough without Rocket Punch. Especially as a new player, you're not going to see almost any benefit out of her. Christy, though, Christy is solid for a newer player. For in-game players, she doesn't, she doesn't really help you because there's better picks. But as an early player, if you pick her, she will definitely help you. So... Christy, I think Christy was like more designed to be beneficial to new players. And that is that is that. Okay. Starlight Aria. Is 530 leaves enough to save an account? If that's not enough to like so look here, let's do the math. So when you use Skystones to refresh stamina, okay? When you use Skystones to refresh stamina, it costs Okay, well, I didn't mean to do that, but it costs 30. <laughs> it costs 30 Sky Stones for 60 Stamina. So that means every Leaf you have is worth a lot, right? So every Leaf you have is worth 80 Stamina. So do 80 times 540 divided by 60 times 30. That's 500 Leafs is 21,000 Sky Stones, okay? You currently basically have 21,000 Skystones of energy sitting on your account. If that can't put you in a good spot, I don't know what can. I hope, I think I did that math right. Hopefully I did that math right. That is a lot. I'm on day nine, so it's okay for me to clear chapter three. Currently at seven one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that team should, should clear just fine. Could you please recommend gear for a gear crafting event? Yeah. I mean, for a new player, this is the main piece. I'll just suggest to everyone because there's no way you can go wrong with it. This piece right here. And you can change defense percent to flat attack, defense percent to HP percent. But this piece of gear right here, you will use forever. This is, if as a new player, without putting too much thought process into it, this is the safest piece you can use or get. Speed set, speed main stat boots will always be usable on your account. With starting perfect substats, it'll always be good. What about shoe boots though? You can. If you have a specific piece in mind, you can do that. But for a player who's kind of confused on everything still and not knowing what they're doing, so Thinus, you're going extra hard. You're way above the average player. The average player, if you don't know what you're doing, this is just a safe alternative. What's the most efficient way to spend uh, Skystones? So Skystone, most efficient way to spend them. If you want summons, you're going to be refreshing Secret Shop. So you come in here, you click refresh. This is how you spend them to get bookmarks. 
I would never suggest buying straight bookmarks with your sky stones. So the reason we do this, because you get mystic medals, okay? So mystic medals, this is the best way to get mystic medals in the game. If you don't use your sky stones to shop refresh, you are going to not pull nearly as many ML5 characters, right? Sorry, I take that back. No, it's always worth, always worth just refreshing. It doesn't matter, but you will have way less ML5 characters if you don't do that. So that is the best. Otherwise, using these for energy is still great. Using side stones for energy, especially as a new player, is going to be very, very beneficial for your overall account. But yo, Lumino, what's up? That's how you use them. Okay, so let us let me get this set up real quick. Um, in terms of farming, let me put my gear. Before we do the thingy, I want to get farming back on my other thing. So let me set my team back up. I want to farm some unrecorded history. So put gear on her. Put this on, it doesn't really matter what she has. Uh, put this on, put this on, put this on, put this on, put this on. It doesn't really matter put that on but a alarm thank you for remembering i don't even know what to call that <laughs> remembering resubbing all right let me add that to the sub count like in 2.5k size stones i got eight mystics only that's really good moonstar eight mystics well, that's huge what's a good stat line for counter pillows like 2500 defense 15k hp 16k hp and then 180 speed probably more hp i don't know Aim for 20k HP, aim for 2500 defense. I don't know if that's possible. I don't use her on counter. But that would be the stat line I would try for. Try for 20k HP. I'm back. Unfortunately, missed that Kaido. You're good, you're good. You didn't miss that much. I just cleared Wyvern and did a couple little things. Okay, put that back on. And then we put the gear back on Tamarin, and then we go farm. Oops. What am I doing? Bag it up. Uh... Okay. Think we're good? But yo, AJ Cool, thanks for the follow. All right, let me go start unrecorded history farming in the back while we do this, because I want to make progression. That looks good. I'm at 1010 doing your 2023 guideway. Just completed Hazel, Conoscopes, and Awakened Trees. Still anxious though. You're going, it's going to take multiple tries. And you might need to slightly adjust gear as you're going. But learning to do the Zeo fight is super nice. Oh, then I'm super fine. I have 4191 energy, 288 at least. Yeah, you're, you're big chilling. You just, the hardest part of returning to Epic 7 is Crozo's better Angelica or Momo for Wyvern. Yes, big time. For a new player, it makes it to where your gear requirements way lower to have them way more consistent run. When I start building PvP team, clear chapter 3 or chapter 4, it's after you clear chapter 4. It's about day 20 of last guide series. Kinda didn't work for me, use water aid instead. That's a skill issue. Could Biblis be AOL 2.0? No, if anything is AOL 2.0, it is. It is Death Dealer Ray, but it's not really the same thing either. Okay, so let me go and look. Uh, let me pull up the thingy. Let me pull the chat to the side. Okay, guys. Let's go ahead and start the new player tier list. It's untitled tier list. 2024 PVE tier list. Okay, so let me turn my face cam on. Oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't want to do this. Ooh. 
we're gonna try to go pretty fast. If I make any statements, I need you guys' help with us. This is to help all players coming into the game for 2024. So if I pick a character and say they're not great for PvE, but you actually think they're okay for PvE, you let me know. Alright, so the first tier is gonna be... Overall best. Second tier is going to be solid. Third tier is gonna be usable. Fourth tier is gonna be better options. Fifth tier is going to be useless. Okay. You guys, you guys agree with those tiers? You guys can't see what I'm talking about. I understand. Okay, there you go. Me when I spread misinformation. All right, guys, try not to spread misinformation. This is big. Which one is the booba tier? The best. Overall best. It doesn't matter. So with this tier list, it doesn't matter how good the characters are. If their boobs are big enough, they go in overall best. Agreed? So like Arya, terrible for most. Well, I mean, she can be used for a live and one shot. That's where this tier list gets hard. Arya. She's usable? Where would you put her? Just for this example. Can't see tier list? You can see it now. Okay, I need to move my face cam up. I need to move my face cam over here for this. But okay, but Arya. She could be used in the Wyvern one shot. So is she solid at that point? Or is she just usable? That's where this is so hard. I think she's just usable because that's the one spot where she's actually good. Guild War? Guild War's not PvE. PvP covers RTA, Guild Wars Arena. PvE covers Hunt, Story, Expedition. Labyrinth, right? Nah, make it for new players. They don't do one shots. It is, it's PVE tier list, new players. This is for new players. That's important. <laughs> but Ehas, what's up? Maybe have a niche tier for characters with single use. I think that's just a usable tier. So solid means they're usable in multiple things. Usable means they're usable in usually one thing, okay? So you agree? That's how we're going to do this. So I'm going to hit start recording. So I'm just going to record the videos uh, straight out right. Yeah, I mean, uh, so don't give heroes points for one shots, new players. But I mean, it's good for them to know that that character will be usable later because people are going to probably sell units and do stupid stuff. Okay, so we want to make sure people know that for PvE, it will be usable later, but we will talk about it. Okay, do intro. I'm going to do the intro. I'm laying the base things first. Yo, what's up, Ogre? How's your day going? I'd say that are a must to cover for a lot of content should be priority. Yeah, yeah, those will be in the overall best and solid tiers. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. All right, so give me one sec. Um, ooh, but the music, but it's Nikki music. We didn't have Nikki music playing, right? Let me restart the playlist. We don't have to worry about that. Okay, we're good, we're good, right? P7 Discord eating good tonight, dude. They will find any little thing to ego themselves about. They're like, oh, yeah, I have such big opinion on E7. I am goaded. I don't make content, but I help one or two players a day. So my opinion is um, insane. I don't put my opinion out there for anyone else to judge besides the two people that see it as the chat scrolling. Just lower it a bit. Maybe the music. Okay, can do. Okay. I lowered it like... 20%. Are you guys ready? You gonna talk about them in terms of Hell Raid Nightmare? Yeah, we're just talking about we're talking about them in everywhere. Everywhere. This goes for everything. If the character's usable in PvE, this is this if the character's usable in PvE, but we're going to touch on how soon you can use them. Okay, we're good to go. And we're good to go. <laughs> Alright, what's up guys? My name is Mitch Orgidi and today we are going to be doing a PvE tier list for new players. It will be covering any characters usable or any character that new players could use earlier than say a later character. So some of the characters might be bumped up versus an overall tier list. If as a new player you could utilize them earlier on easier to use gear. So this won't be like an in-game PvE tier list. So it's close though. It'll, it'll basically be the same thing. So going through this, we're going to do the best we can. I have chat, I have both YouTube and Twitch. They're going to be giving their opinions as I'm going. So it's not just my opinion, it's going to be a community opinion for this. So if I have a certain thought process on a character, someone else will come in. One thing is if you want to skip to the end of the tier list, you can, you can see all the pictures at the end. 
Um, there is no download link for this tier list. I don't know how it's going to help you having a download list. If you don't have the character, you don't need to know what the name of the character is. You will know once you get them. Or once you see if you should pull them, you can go look at the pictures. People always ask for that, and it always confuses me. I don't see how it's ever going to help you guys. So, but with this, I'm going to go over each character and talk about them. So you can skip to the end to see everything, or you could watch from the beginning and wait till I drag the character over and give my opinions on them. So let's just go ahead and start. You guys ready? So Abigail. I don't know if Abigail is usable in any PvE. Is she usable in any PvE? I don't think so. Abyssal Euphine is usable in PvE. She can actually solo Banshee 13. She can solo Banshee 13. It's just really slow. But I'd say she's definitely solid from that point. You could use her in a lot of different things. So you could use her in Labyrinth, um, solo Banshee. You could probably use her in multiple other hunts. You could probably use her in Expedition. She's very good. Rift is better than Hunt. For gear, yes. Alencia. Alencia could be used in multiple expeditions. She could be used in story clearing because she strips and gives defense buff. She has a lot of things that are overall decent. Ambitious Tywin, again, is actually going to be is good for tower. Yeah, AU Fiend's good for tower. So Ambitious Tywin is actually great for PvE. He's a tank. You can put Orius on him. He keeps you alive. He can be used in most expeditions. He could be used in story. He could be used in um, Labyrinth 2. So he has a defense break that any character with the defense break is going to immediately put them higher. That's why Alencia is already in the solid tier because having defense break in PVE is amazing. Is music too loud for you, chat? It shouldn't be. The music should be like one fourth of my voice volume. Okay. Maybe you're wearing headphones. Are you wearing headphones right now? Maybe it's too loud for headphone users, but headphone users are the vast not majority. So Ahmed. Ahmed, I would say is usable. I don't think she's that great. She does give crit damage buff. She can give you skill null to survive. Um, I, she is used in Hell Raid right side fight. Um, but as a new player, I don't know. Would you guys say she's solid or usable? I'd, I'd put her usable. Apoc Ravi is definitely solid. Apoc Ravi is almost an overall best. You'd lower her. I think she's usable because she is used for that one. But there are better options than Ahmed. So maybe let's put her into better options because she's just kind of a little bit too much to, especially for new players. Apoc Ravi is actually super nice for new players. Can be used in basically everything except for hunts. Um, so I think she'll just go solid. Aria is going to go into the usable tier because of Wyvern one-shotting, but all other content, Aria is not the greatest. She might work okay for some story clearing, but overall, Aria, I'm just going to put her in usable for that. Aramintha, I think think is uh better options because she could be used for labyrinth so let me just go through a few of these at a time and you guys can just tell me our village is still just solid you can use them like everything this is also going to touch on abyss a little bit so think about abyss floors and what um this could cover so this is going to be abyss labyrinth expedition story clearing hunts any pve but we're going to be doing a different tier list tomorrow over guild wars arena and rta but Vildred is still just solid. I, there's no way Vildred doesn't just stay solid. I use them on my main account and basically everything. All right, so RC Mercedes, useless for PvE. There's no one gonna tell me different. Architect Leica, I would say she's pretty useless for PvE too. Alranka, useless for PvE, right? I mean, she, she might go in the better option tier because she does hit kind of hard against like certain things or barriers, I guess. I'll, I'll put her in better options for now. ML Elena, though, definitely useless for PV. ML Elena cannot take a boss and stop them from countering. Uh, Balan Sazan, I would say he's usable. He gives defense break, so he's definitely going to the usable tier. Baikin, solid, best Banshee one-shotter. And for new players, if you have Baikin, makes Banshee one-shotting insanely easy. So because the new player tier list, this is focused on new players, Baikin's getting a bump up because she's just the lowest... Um, gear requirement character to one-shot Banshee. So if you have her, you can build a Banshee team, one-shot Banshee team within like four days of starting a new account. Basar, I would say Basar's useless for PvE. I, he might go in the better option tier. A lot of the useless and better options is going to be hard. Bihu can be used for PvE for burns and detonation, getting some damage. He'll go in better options because Carrot's always going to be better. Bellion, I mean, she can go in better option too. She's kind of almost useless though. 
Um, yeah. Bologna, though, solid. I, Bologna's great. Defense break, a lot of extra damage, usable in a ton of different content. So Bologna can definitely go into solid. Benny Maru, better options. Bloodman Haste, useless. Bamada Kana. Bamada Kana, I'm going to put her in usable. She'd be used to clear um, Zeo. She's almost in the better options category, but she is, for a new player, she's going to get bumped up for sure because she's using the Zeo team. She's using Expo. She can be used in Story. She, she can be used in everything. So she's a great PvE character. Bryceria, better options. She has S1 defense break, but she's just not going to be very good. Brieg, overall best. Brieg is getting top tier, like best character, one of the best characters in the game for PvE. Biblis, useless, right? <laughs> Honestly, Biblis might be actually solid if she can proc off the boss's countering. Think about Biblis and PvE. Like, what bosses counter in PvE? Could could Biblis go? I think Biblis could be possibly decent because a two-turn defense break on Biblis, I think she would be usable for Katie's. Yeah, Katie's guaranteed defense break every 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 turn. Two-turn defense break every turn. I think Biblis is going to be great for that. So, uh, Cecilia is definitely usable. She's great in a lot of stuff. Defense break again. Celine, better options. She's a hard hitting single target damage dealer, but there are just better options. Cerise is very usable. I use her in all expeditions. Um, she could be used in a lot of Abyss, and she could be used in. I think she's in solid tier. Cerise is really good. Um, Ceramia, definitely just put her in usable tier. Charles, usable because of how good he is for Banshee one shotting the first wave. The better options is Vildred. <laughs> Golem. Sermia and Golem. Yeah, Sermia and Golem, but no one farms Golem. Charlotte's usable for clearing story and everything. She does really good damage. If you put her on lifesteal, she sustains, and she's easy to gear because you don't need crit chance. Uh, Chloe's just going to go into better options. Every other character's better. Sermia's good for rift, second be uh, best besides Kane. I feel like that's false information, but I don't know. Shu. Shu is definitely unusable. We use Shu for a bunch of raid plus fire expeditions. She's great in. She's actually usable in most expeditions. I use her in light expedition on usually my new accounts. Closer Charles, just put him in the better option. He gives attack buff, which can be nice. Command Model Laika, better option. She does have the dual attack, but Cerise would just be better than Command Model Laika at that point. Commander Pavel is definitely usable for speed farming almost anything. Commander Pavel is almost in solid. What do you guys think about Commander Pavel? I'll let you think of that. Overall best, I think Conqueror Lilies is one of the best PvE characters too, though. Conqueror Lilies is so good in PvE. PvE. So I think Pavel is a solid. If Vildred's in solid, let's put Pavel, because these two combined is like the god farming team for anything. He's on Record History Slave. Yeah, he's so good. I got Celis on new account. She helped a lot to dual attack. Yeah, I think Celis is one of the overall best you can get. So Dark Corvus, useless in PvE. DDR, useless in PvE. Desert Jewel Basar, useless. Dilibet, probably useless. I don't know where it should be used. Destina is just better options. Deanne, I would say. Deanne's probably unusable. Deanne could be used in a lot more things than Destina. Destina could probably go to usable, but Destina's so high in the RTA PvP tier list that I'm going to put her a little bit lower here. Dizzy, just basically useless. Sea Lilies, where to use? Basically everywhere. Sea Lilies and uh, Hall of Trials, Sea Lilies and Abyss, Sea Lilies and Story. Uh, you can use her in a couple expos. Like, Sea Lilies is just good everywhere. It's hard to ever put her down further. Destina is good in Abyss. Destina is good in Abyss, but Deanne is usually better in Abyss than Destina. And Tamarin's always better in Abyss than Destina. Dizzy is really good in Abyss. Okay, if Dizzy's good in Abyss, we're just going to put her in better options at that point. I know she's really good in Abyss, though, because I did use her a lot. Ida has a defense break, so we'll put her better options. Edward Elric. <sighs> Probably better options. We're going to go at the end and make a couple adjustments, too. But we, we don't want this video to be five hours long. The Serum removes debuff survives, which might clutch up on a boss fight. I know, she's definitely good. I, she's definitely usable. I'm not putting her in useless. Ed is usable. Ed is usable. You think he's usable? I mean, the counters can be really nice. I just don't know any PvE besides Labyrinth that I would use him in. He's actually good in Hall of Trials a lot, though. I think he's good in Hall of Trials quite a bit. I have a pimple on my ear. Ed is good in Nightmare. Okay, yeah. He's definitely usable then. Elena, better options. Elagos. 
Elgo is probably a better option because there's, I mean, I don't even think he's better options at that point. I think Elgo is just pretty bad because he has to kill a character to get his thingy. So like any boss fight, is he actually going to help? I, I could see people setting up like some kind of one shot team with Elgo, but you can't because he loses his buff. I don't know, but Elfo, I'm going to say she's better option too. I don't know. She's usable. I use her in my Rift team. She's good in a lot of things. So we'll put her there. Amelia is going to be probably right next to Dian. Is the, the thing is just Cena doesn't give attack buff, whereas Amelia does. And Amelia gives C, like more CR push and she cleanses. So like I would say Amelia in PvE is better than just Cena too. But hey, Shuno, thank you for the Prime. How you doing this morning? Let me adjust that real quick. But thank you for that. Use Elf Hell and Rift. Yeah, I do too. Okay, so Urvalen, better options. He can one shot Banshee. Ludwig, just. I mean, he could technically kill some stuff, I guess. He'd be in better options. Fairy Tail Tenebria. Is Fairy Tail Tenebria usable in any PvE? I don't think so, personally. I don't know if she's usable in any PvE. I don't think she is. She's really good for PvP. Politica, I would say she's pretty useless. Fallen Cecilia is better option. She's nice to have a tank. Uh, not to up cereal. So you're good. You're good. I appreciate it. All right. Flan. Is Flan better options or usable? Wyvern one shot is replacement for SSB, technically. Yeah. So Flan can be used in couple things which is nice she can be it's a lot of like different one shot stuff you can set up with her but she's pretty replaceable if you put aria and usable you have to put flay in there too yeah i guess yeah because she'd be the same fumir better options fumir can be decent i guess because she could be spamming defense break and sleeps um depending on having the right team plus guaranteed x damage isn't bad ace is going into usable because he's best in slot for rift right now you can hardly replace haste consistently. <coughs> Flan makes one shotting easier, apparently. There's multiple things that she can be used in. Holiday Fiend, pretty useless for... I think she can be used in Hell Raid on Artifact. Thank you. Hua Young, better options. She's... I mean, she used to be able to solo Golem. Ilanav, same thing. Ilanav is pretty good because she can give crit damage buff to your characters. Ashmancer is pretty solid for banner arena. Well, okay, well, Tristan, I'm I'm gonna I'm putting um so this is PvE tier list, sorry. 2024 PvE tier list. So people want me to break down a PvE tier list and a PvP tier list. This tier list is going over um PvE, which in our brain, Guild War and Arena is PvE too. But we are gonna consider I at the beginning of the video I said we're gonna consider Guild War and Arena as PvP. Just just to like break it up a little bit more evenly. So Asaria. I know a lot of you guys know I don't suggest this area starting the game, but it's because everything's beatable without her, but having her is super, super nice. Asaria is amazing. Asaria, Brig, Tamarin, plus one damage dealer basically will clear like everything in the game, especially Abyss. Asaria is one of the overall best picks. Do not get it twisted when I say that we take Destina instead of her, but the thing is everything is beatable without Asaria early game, and you can get Asaria later. So don't think having this area is a bad thing. It is a great thing, but not having Destina getting into early PvP makes early PvP nearly impossible. Jacko, I think it's in the usable tier. She's really good in Rift. I don't know what else you use her in. I think she's probably good in everything. She has insane damage. So I think usable is fair for her. I just don't know where else you guys use her. I think she can be decent in Hall of Trials sometimes, maybe? she gets multi-hit so i'd assume she has multiple use cases judge kisei though definitely going useless here she has a defense breaker on s1 but i don't want to put her in better options i don't think she is going to be too great kane is best in slot and rift but the thing is kane can be used in labyrinth too but kane i don't know we have to put him in usable we can't put him in anything else sorry i'm late where do you use elise outside of hall of trials you can use her as a new this is for new players too so clearing story, if this is for people who like are watching day two of the guide and did some summons and I want them to see, or like they're basically in the first two weeks of the game. So sea lilies can be used in clearing story. She'd be used in a lot of the expeditions. She can be used in uh, Hall of Trials, obviously. But that's one thing I said at the beginning of the video too, is 
Okay, I was just curious on the angle on her. Okay, no, I, I just, I, I want your opinion on some of these later picks. So that's why I'm, I'm giving you the deal. So those of you guys, Tristan Wolf is here, which is the king of PVE. So he'll tell you throughout this how terrible this is at the end. I'll, I'll put his rating of <laughs> what we put. And you could be brutally honest. So, but Tristan is known as the king of PVE. Okay, so Kron, better options for Kron. I do use him in lab. Ken is actually really good for PVE for new players because you get dual attack, defense break. He gives you a ton of stuff, plus he's using gear. So I think Ken could be used in a lot of different things. All right, Kisei, better options. I don't know anything I could use Kisei for besides right side boss, Hell Raid. Prow is about the same. He could be used as a Wyvern front tank. He could be used as Expedition front tank. I'd say he's usable. He goes unusable. Landy, I almost want to put her in best because Landy, you can use in everything. Kind of got to Rift or got to Rift Clear in like 40 hours with a new account. But the problem is that Rift Clear, how many times did he have to beat Rift to fully clear it? <laughs> was it, how much stamina was it? It's going to be a lot. I'm just curious how much that early game stamina is worth it. I'm glad he's doing it because we talked about doing this uh, like a month ago. But I mean, Rift, you can get early, but I think it's bad to push on new players because you're going to hurt the rest of your account forcing Rift. That's why I'm not suggesting Rift. If it's good, then anyone who's getting into game as a super like wanting to get straight to PVP and that's all they care about. Uh, why was just answering why Rift for nuclear? Yeah. So this is, it's not just new player. It's new player gives a little twist on this, but also how good the characters are for, I think Crow is probably better options. Like he's a tank, he could be using quite a bit of stuff. He had survivability, he might be unusable. I think almost any tank can just go usable. Like you don't think LR Crow for PVE because he's so good in PVP. But the thing is, if you fight anything that resets him, he's S3 constantly. And that's, it's decent damage. How would you build laney for pve compared to pvp uh bloodstone artifact and slightly bulkier but you can use landy in everything like i i still use her in everything but king cell what's up um lethe useless in pv i don't see any use for lytica is better options you can use lytica on like golem and uh she's actually pretty good on a couple of abyss floors i did clear multiple abyss floors with her so i'm just gonna put her in better options because i don't want people building her when she's only usable in like two places I think Deanna's a nice soldier for PvP with Rod. She is. She's unusable. Deanna and Amelia are both here. I put them above Destina because they're both usually better than Destina. All right, Lilius. Lilius is going solid. Lilius, if if Conquer Lilius is here, Fire Lilius is here. She is super, super nice on new accounts. What is this tier list? PvE or PvP? It's PvE, and then we're going to do a PvP one. But I don't know if I'll do that today or wait till tomorrow. Lilibet, it's just gonna go in better options. I think she can almost one-shot Banshee, if not one-shot Banshee, but I don't know because you have to build effectness on her, lowering her damage tremendously. So I'd assume she could probably one-shot Banshee. But other than that, is she really gonna be that great? Probably not. Lionheart Sermia is actually very good for Katie's. <laughs> Lionheart Sermia is just really good in general. I think you use her in a ton of PvE, because she's always gonna be proccing. But yo, what's up, loads? uh lqc is just going to go in better options i think she can be okay she has sustainability she has high damage for stark things but i don't know what dark bosses there are <laughs> um what dark bosses are there i think i used to use her in my dark expedition for some reason but i can't remember i don't think she did that much damage but maybe she did she was just slow was the problem but she was dual attack i mean she's usable Better options are usable. Lone Crest and Bologna, I think, could actually be very good in a lot of things right now because she has self sustain. She has very high damage, both single target and non single target. Zeo, I'd never use LQC and Zeo, but she probably could be using Zeo, actually. I didn't think about that. Green Lilies may be the easiest Banshee one shot outside of Biken. Yeah, Green Lilies is going and solid for sure. Lua, Lua is useless for PvE. I mean, she gives defense break. I wouldn't say she's useless at that point. She gives defense break, speed up to your team. And the, you can actually reset bosses, so technically you could use her, but she's just a better option for sure. Ludwig is better options. Lulica, better options. She, Lulica is actually probably unusable, though. Lulica could be used in Wyvern, uh, Expedition, All of Trials sometimes. I don't know how good it is in All of Trials, but she's kind of a nice character. Lover and Nightmare uh, Raid, who? Lua or Lulica? Lulica and Raid is definitely super good for multiple floors. 
She is really good for right side boss. Oh, use Lua Nightmare Raid? Okay, so Lua Nightmare Raid. So do you think she should be higher? Or is that the only place you could really use her? Is there better options? Because if you think Lua is higher, I, I see the value in her. Nah, that's it. Okay, I'm just going to leave her at better options. But she, I know she can be really good in a couple spots. Because Arisa and having speed up is super value. Luna, I'm just going to put in better options. I mean, let's put her in usable. Because she is like the highest damage dealer single target for expedition i think isn't she i think she is way more damaged than lorena for fire expo and she could be used in a lot of abyss she can be used in a lot of things so i think luna is pretty great made chloe better options like she could be used in same as Destina. i think these two are right next to each other i use made chloe over Destina, even though when i do do pv i think ml ken is usable in pv now because if you get a single crit i think ml ken could be pretty solid in a lot of stuff Luka is a girl everyone says is hot, but no one takes a dance because she is good at everything. That's the perfect description of her. Uh, I like where you have her due to her flexibility, though. Yeah, I, th I think she no one really builds her. But if you have her and wanted to because you like the character, you could use her. That's kind of what this tier list is for. If you see a character on here that's kind of higher on the list and you like them, then you can if, you can try to use them. If they're high on here, they're going to be usable. If they're low on here, they're still going to be usable. It's just a useless tier list. Just expect those to be PvP only characters. Meteor Coward getting attack buff and cleansing is actually so nice. I use them in a lot of my everything teams. He gives CR push. He gives a barrier. He gives attack buff. He's, he's very usable in basically everything. The attack buff is huge. Melissa is a better option. Galileus is going in solid. Galileus... You can do all expos with her. You can do um, you can do abyss with her. You can. She is so so good. So Milum is going to go unusable. Milum's pretty solid in a couple. Where all did I use Milum for PVE? Milum's good in expos. I know I used her in multiple expos. She could be used in abyss. Um, she goes there. Mort has a defense break. He's a tank. It can be used in expos, but I think there's better options. I don't think Mort's very good. Mui, I'm going to put down in useless. Nakwa, I'm gonna put in useless for PV. ML Landy. I almost think ML Landy goes in best. Would you guys agree? I, honestly, she might go in best too. Galilius. What do you guys think? Uh, how should I do the best here? The best here is people who could be used in like 75% of content. But I think these two characters, just their ability and story, they're able to clear everything. So I think they deserve up there too. But definitely Brie, Gasseri, Tamron are going to be a top three. But I think these characters are all great for PvE. Summer Lulika isn't bad for PvE. I don't know where all I'd use her. Yeah, Landy solos way too much, Tristan. I agree. All right, Operator Cigarette, though. Better options. Pavel, Candle... I don't think Pavel. Pira. I'm going to put Pira in useless. Pira, the Flan. I'm going to put in useless. She's very PvP focused. Politis, better options because sometimes her CR, her CR stops boss mechanics sometimes from obliterating you too hard. There's a couple spots where she can like cheese you getting more turns, which is nice. Ram is actually pretty nice. For a free character for new players, I think Ram is super nice to have. She's going to help clear a lot of your PvE stuff on lower gear. I, I think Ram could be, or I don't know if that's Ram or Ram. I think Ram could be used in a lot more spots than we normally use her. We just have other picks. But I think as a new player, if you built her because how easy she is, I think she's definitely in usable tier. She's very, very good. Ran is in usable because he's used in Labyrinth. And he's I use Ran a lot in Hall of Trials, even though you could get way higher scores not using him. Uh, Ravi is definitely usable, great in story. Ray, I mean, Ray is technically usable, but who's ever going to build Ray? Rem, definitely usable and quite a bit. Wyvern one shot. Um, I don't know, actually. Rem, I think Rem's just too good in Wyvern one shot. Rem Nevile is definitely really good in a lot of PvE. Requiem Rowana, she has defense break on S1, but I don't think she'd be very good. How is I don't have Requiem Rowana. I, I get her in like a couple days, right? But I don't have her. Is she usable at all in PvE? I don't think she is. Ammo she was S tier in PvE. She can't even she can't even get the extra proc in PvE. It's insane. I can't believe Ammo she can't do the extra damage. Who's ever gonna build Ray? Not Ray. <laughs> Alright, Rimru, I think's 
could go in usable tier. Like, he does flat damage. No matter where you put him, he's going to do decent. I think he's pretty solid overall. He's just always going to do something. Reza Hawkeye, better options. Rowana is going to go in usable. She's good for Katie. She's good for a couple Abyss floors. I think she still deserves usable. Rowana used to be up here. For some reason, I just can't see value in Rowana anymore. Because how bad she is in PvP nowadays, I can't see value in her. But Idols Cheer or Stell Harper Rowana, just, it can go so hard. Roy Mustang, usable, I guess. He's probably decent. There are almost more units than we have unit slots, which is a problem. Yes. Definitely. Because the whole waiting room thing, it's not very good. I'm going to put Ruel into better options because she's a healer. Balance is on for PV, useless. SSB for PV, I'll still give her usable, but she's not in solid anymore. Senya, better options. Senya can be decent. Ruel, better options. Yeah, I think Senya is just better options too. Says. I want to put Sez on useless. I don't think you should ever try to build Sez. Sharoon's going to go in useless. Shuna, better options because she's a healer, but Sharoon isn't a healer. Cigarette, overall, is very usable. She should be used in one shot. She can be used in all sorts of stuff. I would move Rowana up to the, the top two rows. You think Rowana is still up here? Where all do you use her, though? You think Rowana is still really good? I just can't find the value in her. Hell Raid? I don't do Hell Raid. That's a big part of it, or I do. I've done it once. So, she is good in Abyss, so I'll give her that. As a new player, I gotta remember, this is also a new player. So, Rowana is a new player, easy to gear. You can throw her in the things that she's gonna work well, and it's gonna be fine. Silverblade Araminta, we're gonna go ahead and put in... She's not usable, really, at all for PvE, I don't think. Uh, Soul, better options. Solitaria. I mean, these a lot of these useless characters could be used if you really want them to. Says we're not using Says for PvE. <laughs> Spectre Tenebria, though. Spectre Tenebria, I think, goes in solid. For sure. Spectre Tenebria is used for clearing. SBA deserve better. What do you use SBA in? She has burns. She could be used for Hell Lab. Okay, that's fair. So, I'm giving her some better options, though. Because most people use Carrot over her. Don't you? Do people actually use her over Carrot? For a new player, you're not going to have Silver Vitam at the anyway. Like, yes, she could be used in Hell Raid. But I think Carrot would go into usable. And she would go down here. So Spirit Eye, Selene, better options. She technically, nothing guaranteed crits you. Stenny is overall best. Yeah, with her, I mean, if these two characters are there, she's there too. We're putting Stenny in overall best. Strays, for new players, I'm doing this. Okay, guys, you're going to get mad at me. I'm doing this for a reason. New players trying to use Strays is the biggest mistake. BSD, do you have time to make a thumbnail? You got the money I sent you, right? Do you have time to make a PV 2024 PV tier list thumbnail and a PVP one? Can you do two that are similar? <laughs> do you have any time today? <laughs> but Strays, I think, is usable. Because uh, way you sent money, yeah, it should be in your PayPal. Unless your PayPal changed. If so, I just wasted whatever money I sent you. It's like 20 bucks or 18 euros. Make sure you have it, because if you don't have it, I need to not send that address money anymore. Oh, okay, you did get it. I was about to say, if I wasted money and just send it to some random person, I'd be sad. But yeah, if you're able to make a 2024 PvE and PvP tier list, two different tier lists, I can give you my PayPal if you want to test to make sure it's working. It's just you have more money than I'll ever have. I don't want to hear it. All right, Summer Break Charlotte. Pre oh, wait, but Strays. Guys, if you pull Strays as a new player, you're not going to be able to use him to the capacity he needs to be used at. Do not yo anonymous sub gifter. Thank you for gifting Tristan a sub. There are no more ads for Tristan. He probably Tristan probably has turbo. He never had ads to begin with. But thank you for gifting a sub. Um, why is Strays a trap? I'm curious since I'm very new. Because as a new player, you're gonna see Strays used in a lot of one-shot teams, and people are gonna tell you he's really good. The thing is, as a new player, he's super, super challenging to gear. And a lot of people fall into the Strays trap of getting him, trying to put all the resources into him. S not s not understand why he works going and forcing getting crappy pieces of gear like you'll go and upgrade a rage set piece that isn't very good so it's best as a new player to avoid strays until you truly understand the game and progress your account so i'm putting him lower even though i would put him higher and i guarantee the official epic 7 discord is gonna be like he put strays in usable and not in solid or overall best and that is the official epic 7 discord in a nutshell right there they'll see one picture and honestly, they would probably still put strays in overall best for the new players. They're like, oh, yeah, he's so good. <laughs> I can already see that happening, though. All right, we'll see Saria. Let's put down here. 
Silver Sage Vivian, better options. I guess she heals and gives crit damage buff. How is Silver Sage Vivian overall? Like, Summer Break Charlotte gives a ton of defense break. She almost isn't solid. I'd almost put Summer Break Charlotte here. She gives constant defense break. She'll be used in Expedition, used in um, Labyrinth, used in Abyss Floors. Like, Summer Break Charlotte is actually super, super good on Lifesteal for clearing stuff. SSV is actually decent. Yeah, I think we put her in usable, but Summer Break Charlotte... I think she's way better than we give her credit for because we already have all our teams built. I think if you had to have a character to fill certain slots, shouldn't Sigurd and SSB go up because it's for new players? SSB definitely not going up. Why would SSB go up? For Wyvern, SSB is not very good. Goes nuts in PvE. So do you think she deserves solid then? Solid is like the characters that are really good in a lot of stuff. So like all these characters, they have their like one slot they're good in, basically Rift. Um, tanking for story. Um, Remna, like at Remna Violet, if Sylvan Sage Vivian goes up here, Remna Violet goes up here because Remna Violet does so good. Fairly new SSB carried me through a decent amount of content. SSB is. I don't know. I've never used SSB outside of Advent. See, there's a lot of people that have to find different solutions to things, and that's why I'm trying to get you guys' input with this. What should I pick for ML Blessing? Uh, maybe I'll go for Meteor Kyrak. Meteor Kyrak, you from Headhunt 2. You'd put SSV in usable. I think these both go in usable, but Remnant Violet is, if SSV is up there, Remnant Violet's up there. SSV is heavy bias because it's just SSV. She's a lovable character. She was just so good for so long, but she's just outclassed by everything. And for Wyvern, using SSV is an it. Use Sigret, Furious, Mui, Front Tank. So Sigret, these acronyms are going too hard. Okay, Seaside Bologna and Sylvan Sage Vivian. Um, but Seaside Bologna, it's an int to use her in Wyvern. You're just hurting your Wyvern team. And the Wyvern characters to use for a new account are all free. Like, why would you use SSB, who is worse, who costs resources, versus using the free three and four star characters and the free five star cigarette you get? Why would you ever use SSB for that? In terms of other things for SSB, you're going to have a better team, if you're like following my guide series, for story than SSB would ever add to you. You're gonna have you're gonna have a front tank. Like there's it's just not going to be worth it. So I don't think SSB deserves that anymore. I just don't think she does. Like everything can be cleared with free characters, and she just isn't best in slot anywhere. And SSB is only better in Wyvern if you have max strength. That yeah, she requires max artifact for Wyvern one shotting. So it just doesn't make sense. Tayu, I don't even know what Tayu does. But Tamron, we finally got our third overall best character. Tenebria is actually really usable. No matter what anyone says, if you need a defense break, Tenebria is good in some Abyss Floors, she's good in Expo, she's good in um, multiple different things. I mean, you use her in Golem. Like, Tenebria, as much as no one uses her, she's definitely usable. Top Maluka, better choices. I mean, Top Maluka can be used in Katie's, that's why she's going there. Aaron, same thing, Karen technically. Kron might actually go unusable, but no one's tested him. What do you think about Kron? I think he could go crazy, right? I think he, for story especially, he if he can't be stripped, I think he could be really good in a lot of content, and we just don't use him. Yeah, he counters on stop. Yeah, auto tower. Yeah, Kron and auto tower, great. Tywin can go unusable. I mean, wyvern front tank and giving defense break and I don't, wait he doesn't have his s2 anymore though most bosses ignore er though he's not he wouldn't be four bosses he'd be for like the smaller things and most bosses don't ignore er some have skills to ignore er but most don't urban shadow shoe useless in pvp or pve she can't get the extra injury damage vildred i'm gonna put in usable because he's the best for one shotting first wave of banshee and he's just overall good in green expo um Villager's, Villager's just always going to be usable. He's good for farming. Hard to take that away. Violet's also good for Katie's and things like that. So Violet goes into a usable tier. Vivian, I guess, could go there too. She's, she is a buffer. She can one-shot Zeo or use in the one-shot Zeo team. Vivian's pretty nice, so she can go in usable. Euphine, also great for Labyrinth and things like that. Yulha, better options. Yuna, better options. Zahak, better options. Zeno, don't even know what he does. Zeo better options is used quite a bit i think yeah vivian's good so we might move some of the usable characters into solid at the end giselle better options Rina, better options she could be used i guess ning ning i'm gonna put her in useless winter kind winter can be used for some um story clearing so i'll put better options 
Acades. Acades is actually really nice for a lot of stuff. AOL. AOL is pretty good in, in Hell Raid. Zeo is potentially useless in PvE. He does a lot of damage. He still does a lot of damage. His S3 is based off their max HP. And then his S1s, he's getting double hit every turn. But AOL, guys, she's usable against Nightmare Queen. She's usable against Nightmare Queen, I think people say. So is that enough to put her in usable? She's like one of the best in slots for Nightmare Queen, supposedly. Hi there, I'm new to your channel. Well, welcome out. We're doing a tier list real quick. What do you guys think on that? Zio is cool. I have him and got him in episode three in three days. Zio's cool, but in terms of, I think for a new player, if you put gear on him, he's going to be getting double hit and he's going to do a lot of damage because as a new player, if you're using it for PvE, you're not going to build him fast. So you know how much Zio damages on two hits every turn? It's a lot of damage. He's like, he's going to be smashing everything. Plus he has survivability because of DFI. I think overall Zeo is probably pretty solid as a new player. If you build him for stuff. New player tier lists are doing new player PV tier list. Angelica is just going to go into better options. Uh, Carmen is going to go into potentially useless. I don't know. Fat Cat, potentially useless. Acid, potentially useless. I don't know. It's... Is there anything for Sid? I don't think so. I think it's just better options. He's a damage dealer. A Coley, I'm going to say he's useless. A Sid, he gives himself evasion. That Armin. A Lots is actually usable. Um, I don't think Angel, Angel of Angelica deserves. I, I guess if she's like best in slot for that, she can go there. Armin, better, better options. Who are you using Armin for? She stuns. She doesn't even, she provokes on stuns. She doesn't even do anything that can land on most things. Broman? What do you guys think? Broman has defense break now. Broman has a defense break. What would you use him in? <laughs> he has defense break. This is very biased. Useless? He's not useless. He's better options. If having defense, AOE defense break is better options. Blaze Dingo is actually pretty solid for Labyrinth and stuff. I use him because high morale, but I'll put him down there. Too much RNG. BBK, better options. Don't know what that character is. I'm just going to throw C Dom, better options. Broman could have ML Landy skin, and people would still not use him because Broman, true. Champ Zerato. What is, how is Champ Zerato for PV nowadays? I haven't used him in a long time. Also, give me one second while we talk about this. I got to blow my nose. Champ Zerato is good. All right, we're, we're putting him in usable for sure then. Champ Great and Raid, Zerato, uh, auto counter on any debuff is good. Yeah. Roman helped me clear episode one, stage one. All right, shut up. Stop trolling. All right, Sid. How is Sid? I mean, Sid's amazing in PvP. Is Sid very good in PvE? I don't. I think he just dies too fast. I feel like better options for him. Clarissa, better options. Coley, say pretty much useless. Corvus, useless. Rin, useless. Carmen, better options. Crozet. Prozet is statistically the highest win rate character for Wyvern. So he goes into usable for new players. For new players, Croza is super good. Okay, he takes your overall... So you guys know how Furious takes your overall damage requirement down? Or, or like, you don't have to build crit chance? That's what Croza does. Green set is great and ISIS, but okay. But Crozet is literally just Furious, but tank mode. So Crozet is getting usable for, for new players. He is the highest win rate percentage character for Wyvern 13. It keeps your backline alive for, through wave one always. So I cannot. So Dingo is usable. I used him in Rift. The Minial, Minial, probably useless. I'm not telling you to move them, just saying where they can be. Wait, but oh no, I, I agree. So I'm just taking you guys' opinion, and then at the end we're going to change a couple, like go through and change a couple characters too anyway. But that's the whole point of this. I wanted to do it together, so it wasn't just my opinion on each thing, because I'm not going to think of every scenario. Fighter Maya, I don't know. Fighter Maya is probably essentially useless. Lakari is anti-cleave with Minio, but that's PvP. Free Spirit Terria, better options for sure. Furious is going to go into usable for sure. General Purgus usable. I think he's still great. ML Kawana, best in slot for Katie's. What's the text for both thumbnail? 2024 PvE tier list, 2024 PvP tier list. 
something along those lines if i ha or if i hard disagree i'll let you know i uh, just didn't want my comments to come off as argumentative oh no dude i don't care they're not gonna come off as argumentative i don't so tristan this is a pv or tier list when do you see me doing pv i have no strong opinions whatsoever about pv so <laughs> i need any any input i can get so guide right there she using pv anymore was cerise placed anywhere yet i have her in solid cerise is really really good i use her in everything so the same rank as a lots in your opinion okay i can see that inferno kawazu i feel like he's usable like but uh, great chief kawana best in slot for katie's she is insane in katie's um but inferno kawazu is he unusable I, there has to be some spots where he's good in pve isn't his damage too low for pve he has good survivability and burn damage of like 15k i feel like he's usable but maybe there's better options i could see better options he's really good in pvp infinite horizon and katie's i don't know if she's good or not i i just pulled her i'm tempted to pick random violet on my second since i already have meteor Kauric. i mean either you can do me Death Dealer Ray, Remnant Violet, Sylvan Sage Vivian. I would do, well, Sylvan Sage Vivian is kind of in a weird spot. Or Conquer List. Conquer List is the best you can pick there. Didn't know if skipping. I would know. Conquer List, I mean, you see here, I have her in the overall best. Because anytime I get her on a new account, she's very, very strong. Base game is off, by the way. Yeah, give me a second. Before I turn it back on, I need to look at myself before I make sure i don't have boogers on my face playing ren is like using metronome pokemon not useful but fun true so karen's just gonna go into better options kawana better options kawazu how's kawazu versus inferno kawazu which one he defense breaks is fumir good she's okay and everything he can golem he defense breaks though and burns so shouldn't that mean he's decent okay katie clarissa though usable for sure kazuna ai better options last piece Karen better options she is a super hard hitting character she's really good in uh light expedition like last piece Karen. is there any other spot besides um light expedition is ai a consideration i guess yeah ai could be considered in there but if a character is bad but only for ai i don't know when following a guide but not a new player i've been struggling with lack of charms any advice you need to farm unrecorded history non-stop Farming unrecorded history is how you get more six stars and you sell all the gear in there for charm dust. So Leo, Leo is honestly best in slot for Banshee one shot defense breaker, right? But is there anything other than that? Majika Art thinks to follow. She's using so many challenges. Yeah, Kid Kitty's definitely there, but I'm I'm thinking LPK. LPK is insane for Light Expo. Lots is pretty good for Green Expo. Maya essentially useless. Mercedes better options. Moonbody Dominion useless. Peacemaker Fury is useless. Pergus useless. Ren maybe usable. Romy War Leader useless. Roman I don't know. I think he poisons, so maybe he's usable. Rose better options. Shuri I don't know what Shuri can do for PVE. What's, what can Shuri do for PV? Doesn't he have a dual attack of some kind? No, he has an extra turn if you soul burn him or something. Every time I try to get back in the game, I get overwhelmed and I can't. Just play at your own pace. Abyss? Okay. Oh, yeah. Wait, Shuri gets CR. Shuri's actually really good. Now that I think about it, Shuri is actually really good for the Abyss challenge floors and regular Abyss. Shuri's almost... He goes unusable. His CR push is insane. Cyril is actually really good in Abyss and just overall defense break now with her buff. I think Cyril goes unusable. Shadow Rose, if Leo's unusable, Shadow Rose is too for a defense break. Shooting Star Arcades with the Euphine combo, but like this is a very specific thing to go over, so it's weird to put them in there. Silk, useless. Uh, Sinful Angelica, best front tank for a lot of one-shotting. Surin, really, really good for... Uh, CERN, better options, but CERN's really good for Rift. T. Crows it, better options. Veronica, better options. Silk, better options. Watcher Shuri, very usable, high one shot uh, things. Rift ain't for new players. It's not just about new players, it's with a new player thing in mind. So, and. It says people getting into the game. If they get characters that are usable, I don't want them to think they're not usable, okay? 
so this is it's technically a general overall tier list but with new players in mind so some characters are going to be higher on the list than they would for a general pve list because new players can use them which i explained at the beginning of the video mercedes definitely usable then she's a better option though mercedes there's better options than mercedes i didn't put mercedes in unusable did i no mercedes is in better options there are better option damage dealers than her cecilia definitely solid pve yeah she's up here she's unusable usable like use solid means they're good in a bunch of places right so cecilia do you think she should be moved up as a defense breaker because a is going to be up here too how many characters do we still have or two of the three stars the so three stars will go pretty quick zorado aiden better options for most things adlay unusable raz raz overall is solid so it's ease of build considered yes so on some of the characters i talk about each character and if that's part of their kit that they're easy to build but it's just like strays strays is a character a lot of people would say is insane in pve but he's lower in the tier list because as a new player he's not gonna be good all of these characters up here are pretty easy to gear even you fiend if you're gonna use her for pve it's easy to gear all of these characters will be usable on easy to gear stuff you can build a 230 conqueror lily since she'd be great check discord real quick um i don't know if i like the red text i think i do yellow maybe yellow text a different color text that red text it just blends in too much it doesn't pop at all i would i would say i would say use a different color text like yes that matches but it doesn't pop all right i knows for pv is i knows she has defense break on s1 well i knows 2.0 um Ines, unusable unusable alexa better options round rwanda I don't know what Amiki does. She's probably not really great. How many days do you have to be on offline or get returning player gear? You can't get it until next year, I don't think. Use cigarette as unusable? No, cigarette's up here in this tier. Cigarette's unusable tier. She's good for one shotting. She's really good for new players overall. She's almost up in solid. So if this is a, we're gonna change this at the end. Amiki useless. But cigarettes probably going to go up into solid because we're going to take at the end. We're going to do one last thing because Ken technically is going to go in solid too. Ken's really, really good, but we're going to do one last adjustment. Angelic Montmorency, she can go in solid. I mean, Angelic Montmorency for new players is great. There's just other options that work well. Airwell, PVP only character. She can be used in Abyss and story if you want. Basque, better options. Batiste, no thank you. Chaos Inquisitor Axe can be used in Expos. Camilla is definitely usable. Rickerus, useless. Carmen Rose, where's SC Carmen Rose? So Carmen Rose, I think she has an SC somewhere, but I don't, I'm just gonna wait for her SC. I'm gonna put her in useless and put her SC. And same with Carrot. Carrot will just put into useless, which is gonna confuse people, which is annoying. I hate that they do the two different kinds. Like just leave that off the tier list. Um, Celeste is unusable. Chaos Inquisitor, that's the actual version. Chaos Sectax. Is Chaos Sectax usable in any PvE? This got ran for prepulls. Is he good? Yes, for late game. So ease of where'd you put Zahawk? For PvE, he's in better options. Because I don't know where Zahawk is going to be like really, really good. I mean, his damage is insane. So maybe he is in, goes unusable tier. Zahawk's, Zahawk's right here. Do you think Zahawk's a usable tier? Is he good in PvE? Okay. Um, Christy for PvE, probably usable at this point. But Chaos, Sectax, Nightmare, Raid, and Light Expo. And yeah, Zahawk is easy to gear. His, the slower you build him, the higher his damage. I don't know how good Chaos, Sectax would be in anything. Uh, best in slot for Jewel Leaf console. Zahawk is. Okay. Yeah, Zahak is easy to gear. Axe God is good. Yeah, easy to kill. Okay, we're going to put him in better options. I don't know how good he would technically be. Commander Lorena is definitely going into solid for new players because everyone's going to have her and she's really good for Abyss. She's going higher. Um, Doris can go in this. Eaton, I guess, could go in here because he's going to keep your team alive forever. Elson, no. I don't know what Ezra does. I'm just putting it at the bottom. Falconer Clary is going up in solid too. Axe God is def not usable. Some people do use them. I have seen people use Axe God. So I don't want to put them in unusable. You got Cerise level 60. She's really good for a lot of Abyss and Expeditions. So Glenn, I'm going to put Glenn down in useless. 
Gloomy Rain and useless. Godmother. I'm putting Godmother in useless. Don't give me any of that nonsense about oh she can be used in Rift. I don't want to hear it. So Hazel. Isn't isn't Hazel the one that can like solo Nightmare Queen? Does PV even reliably uh crit how ML Ken is usable? PV doesn't reliably crit, but ML Ken is so tanky that he's gonna end up healing before he dies. So the thing is, if you're playing PvE and the enemies crit, that's banger. If they don't crit, he's so tanky, he's just going to survive forever. And if they do crit, then he just pops off. So ML Ken is definitely usable in a lot of PvE stuff. He's RNG, but he's he's always... I mean, he has defense break on his skill 3. So I think this one's done. Thank you, boss. ML Ken solo straight to Antonia. ML Ken, no matter what, is going to be very, very good. Even if he doesn't proc consistently, he's still going to be great. So Hatan. So we're, we're almost done, guys. Hazel, we're going to do specialty change Hazel. Helen, I looked at Helen. She was terrible. Helga, we're going to do her specialty change. Holy Flame Aiden, I'm sure is maybe usable. Ian, no. No. I don't know what these three stars do. And I don't think it's ever worth telling new players to build. Kiki Rod, though? Kyrus. Kyrus is going into the usable tier for sure. I don't want to put her in solid because she's only really used or that is sc helga that's not sc helga okay so lena i'm gonna put her in there lilka is actually really really good for a couple things right now so we already have sc lorena lucy lucy i gotta put her in better options because she has restrict for banshee if you really want to do it magic school or doors better options mascot hazel i'm gonna put her in usable because she's really good in rift she's really good for zeo she's just good all around so definitely very good um, most of the SCs are just going to go into usable because they're good. Mersa, better options. Missy Chain, don't try it. I've tried it, don't try it. Muse Rima, better options. Mui, very, very good. Nemesis, not good. Ort, don't even know. Otil, no. Pearl Horizon, no. Penelope, no. Illus, no. Illus has a cleanse and defense buff. Maybe she's usable in something. Regular Raz has already put up higher. Requiem Roar. No, Carrot, definitely usable. Uh, Ruzid, probably not very good. Rikris, Rima, Ruzid. Aiden is definitely unusable. She has a lot of stuff she's good in. I'm going to put all the extra Aidens down here because I don't know how good they actually are. Shadow Knight Pillis. We'll put her in the tier instead. Shepherd Jenna. Would Lorena be usable for new players? Guys, there's two versions. We have the Command of Lorena up here. Any character that has a specialty change, we just move their other thing down here because they have their specialty change up higher. So I want people doing the specialty changes. Isn't Green Aiden a PvE monster? She might be. That's we're gonna. I'm gonna ask at the end. Silver Tide Christy. I'm pretty sure she is probably better options. I think I put the other Christy in here too. Sonia, no. Uh, Alexa, better options for sure. She's good, but definitely better options. All right, so Terranor Guard is definitely going higher on this list because how good he is in um, Challenge Force Abyss. Tyrion, no. Better options. So this is Green Aiden. I'm going to put all three Aidens together, okay? Actually, where are the, all the Aidens? Oh, no, that's Basque. I don't see the other Aiden. Oops. All right, so Vigilante Leader Glenn, no. Wanda, no. Yuner Young, which is... Is it Hazel or Yuner Young that's actually really, really good? Which of these two is the good one? Water Aiden is nice. Defense break, S1 AoE. Green is good in Banshee. I know the Aidens are good. I'm going to move them probably if they actually have multiple uses. Thank you, Link, for the PV one. Thank you. I'm going to upload it right after stream. I think it's Yuner Young. I, th I thought it was Hazel. It's Yuner Young. So is Hazel good in anything then? I'm just a new player. I think that's very helpful for me. It's going to be overwhelming, but after you play for all and go back, check if you want anything to change. Okay. Uh, nope, that looks good. That's perfect. That'll do. If you're willing to do the PvP one, just like slightly change it. That'd be awesome. But if you're busy today, I get it. But I'm going to be uploading the other one later. Hazel is in Labyrinth. So they're both usable. Yuna Young and Hazel are both usable. Okay. Yeah, I can't give you a few minutes. Thank you. And Guild War 2 versus counters. What's going on here? We're just doing a new player tier list. So uh, we're doing Carmen Rose and Usable. All right. So what do you guys think I should change? Now that we're here, what do you think I should change? 
But yo, Deppler, thank you for using your Twitch Prime. Let's go. Oh, we got a ton of subs today. That feels good. I took a day off and was super stressed. So all of you that came back and used your Primes, thank you. Taking a day off of streaming was... Uh, I technically didn't take a day off. I only streamed for like an hour yesterday, though. So I still technically streamed every day, but a one hour stream doesn't feel like a stream. These are used in like the really hard labyrinths. Where is D Deanne and usable? So Deanne is unusable up here somewhere. Yeah, Deanne and Amelia both usable. And I have Destina down in better options because these two are just overall always better. And guy usable? Do you think hand guys should be higher? Mega Levy. This is PvE tier list. Mega Levy, you're just showing PvE tier list. I'm doing a PvE and PvP tier list. So, do you think he should be higher? I mean, he's really good. PV hand guy is really good. Okay, we'll move him up higher. There's a couple of characters. Like I said, usable tier list. We're going to move a bunch of these characters up into solid. I know he's always high, but I just didn't want to give him too high of a rating. I have C. Lilius and overall best. So, C. Lilius is just super good for new players. Even if you build her to 220, 230 speed, she's still insane to clear story and expos and stuff. I really want to fight for Merc. What's the difference between Merc and other AoE DPS? Where's Mercedes? Is she not unusable? I mean, I can move her up. But this discussion that we're having here, I think for people watching is, is going to be good. I think she's already... I don't even see Mercedes. Where's Mercedes at? I'm just blind. I thought I had her and higher than better options. First column, usable Mercedes and usable first column. I don't see her. Wait, why is Muse Ream? Oh, wait, this is better options. Yeah, I don't see Mercedes. Lower left above Eaton. Well, Eaton's down here. Oh, Mercedes. Okay. Mercedes definitely can go in usable, though. That's fair. I agree. Okay, and uh, Haze can argue into solid maybe. Esther is a pseudo heal with. For new players though, do you really want to tell new players to build Haste if they're not going to be getting into Rift? Like right now, some of these characters are in there for Rift, but Haste without Rift go falls down to just better option tier. But because of uh, Rift being out right now, even though new players probably won't get there in time for this first Rift, he wouldn't be there. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. Like, the reason I put a lot of these characters in here is because these usable characters, if you gear them, it's pretty safe. And I have Biblis up here just because I don't know where she's going to go. Having a two-turn defense break every time they duel or counterattack, she has to be in usable tier. But I'll, any of these characters, if players build them, they're not going to be sad that they have them geared. Like, any character here, these are just five-star characters for um, setting up one-shots. But And same with Shuri goes in that little segment. But I, I think if anybody builds any of these characters, they're going to find uses for them. Whereas if people build these characters thinking PvE, they're going to regret it. Because like Illinav could almost go up higher because she gets crit damage buff. Kitty, solid, that dual attack plus cleanse. Kitty Clarissa is really good. Do you think Kitty Clarissa deserves solid though? There's Halloween Girl, she's unusable. Isn't Vildred and Sez good for general farming? Vildred is, but Sez no. Sez is building a character just to farm story is stupid. When like Vildred can be used in multiple other things. You think Kitty's solid for sure? Okay, I agree with that. All right, what else? This is the finalizing of the tier list. The tier list is currently one hour exactly. So I'd like to wrap it up in the next like five minutes. Is Teresa solid? Kitty is? Okay, that's fair. Any Any other changes between these two tiers? The bottom tier here, I'm confident in this. All of these, they can all be replaced. I think you're better off building other characters if your goal is PvE than these ones down here. Like, Dizzy can go unusable for sure because she's really good. So maybe she can get bumped up, but all these other characters, I think you're just better off doing other things. Mask and, like, Hazel. I think I have Mask got Hazel up higher. So let's move Hazel it's down here since I, that's where I put all the not social days. Blazing is a cheap Bansy clear, right? Nah, I don't think so. Blazingo works for Abyss. Or not Abyss, sorry. Um, uh, Labyrinth. He has really high morale. All right. After you finish this, can you up, uh, upload the tier list? See, I talked about that. Where's the tier list? I'm going to... 
Guys, I'm going to shrink out so you can see the full picture. Like, you'll have this as a picture. Where? What do you think having the tier list is going to help you? Like, what? what is it going to help you with? Having a picture of it. I said that at the beginning because everyone always asks me that. What is it going to help you with? Having like a printout or what? Like, what are you, what are you wanting after this? But I'm uploading this to YouTube, this video. But like having a picture version, I'll make a picture version. Yeah, there's a lot of units, exactly. Like there's gonna be a there's gonna be a a video that you can just pause the video with this right here. This can be like information overload, it is. But this way if people have the question of is this character good, they now have their answer. And I don't have to answer the same seventeen thousand questions every day. And it's just fun. I mean, tier lists are just for fun. I mean, obviously everyone's gonna have a slightly different opinion on tier list. Like it's is what it is. I'm not saying my this is if you follow my advice then and use a different character, you're not gonna see success. Since I'm a new player, I will know what to build each character next. Well, I wouldn't Okay, kinda. If you listen to the video, you'll know. But if you go and build like randomly go and build Hazel. Uh, that's not going to help you as a new player. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. If you go randomly build Infinite Horizon to Katie's, not going to really help you as a new player. Where Violet, he's unusable because he's good for Katie's. You clear map four without a Syrian Tam? Yep, that's why I tell everybody to take Destina. This is a PvE tier list, so Destina is lower. But I tell everyone to take Destina over Assyria because you can clear everything without Assyria at the beginning easily. So it's better to have a easy to build PVP character to get you into experiencing more of the game than taking a Syria early. I'd suggest building characters that help you finish hunt events first, yeah. But this is just a general, like if you guys gotta remember, all new players have a ton of free summons right now. So they're all pulling characters and they're like, is this character good? So do you guys agree? Is this pretty solid? Any changes you would do? This will be the final wrap up thoughts. Is Ren and Violet really that good early PvE? You got him a few days ago. He's very solid. He's, I mean, he's really, really high damage. And he has survivability in his kit. So I would say Violet is really nice. You can use him in Automaton Tower. You can use him in some Expos if you wanted to. C. Bologna can be higher. I don't like C. Bologna. Like, Bologna is definitely lower. This, that's one thing I guarantee the official Lobby 7 Discord is going to complain about is I have Bologna down lower because there's anywhere Bologna is good, there's better three and four stars now. There's like no point to put Bologna up higher. I don't want to put Bologna up higher and have people build her when they could just build three and four stars that will cover everything. So like she's the same tier as all the three and four star characters that'll just beat Wyvern for you. That is just how I look at it. I don't want people building Seaside Bologna because she's not that great. Like, yes, she has a, it's like a 50% chance of defense break when she counters. Or does her thing? Are we talking about limited or collab? I mean, yeah, we put those in there. Galilus at the top. What do you think Milim's solid? Milim's solid. She's definitely usable. I don't think she deserves solid. There's not that many places to use her. So I don't want to put her too high also because she's limited. I'm putting Galilus at the top because she is that insane. But Milim does though. She does throw a giant eyeball whale, which is pretty great. But I agree. Yeah, I mean, Bologna is still a good character. That's why she's unusable. But I don't think it's worth pushing people to think she's as good as she used to be. A lot of people will be, Emma Ludwig damage for PV, not good. I mean, are you really gonna use Emma Ludwig for PV <laughs> when you have Spectre Tenebria? Like, why would you ever use Emma Ludwig when you'd use Spectre Tenebria in a slot? Are you gonna use Spectre Tenebria plus Emma Ludwig ever? No. Is Spectre Tenebria gonna do more damage? Yes. Does Spectre Tenebria have poison? Yes. Does Ludwig have poison? No. Spectre Tenebria is just infinitely better and everyone's gonna have her. So why would you ever suggest Ludwig for people? He's, he's not. He's not anything better than any of the characters in Usable that deal damage. Yeah, I agree, Lindy. The bottom is definitely the characters that... Some of them that I'm making a PvP tier list too. So when I go through the PvP tier list, you guys will see some of your characters and be like, oh, okay, I won't build them for PvE, but I'm glad I have this because I'll build it for PvP. So like some of these characters down here, a lot of the useless characters are actually great in PvP. So just keep that in mind. Like Fairy Tail to be a great in PvP. Knockwell, insane in PvP. L uh, Lethe, okay. Sage Ball, very solid. Captain Flan, very solid. So a lot of these, Solitaria, S tier. So I think this is good. All right, so let me turn my face cam on and we will wrap up the video. All right, so this is the overall tier list. I sat here, I mean, you just, I'm uploading this whole thing. So you saw, I asked, 
I mean, we have hundreds of people in here between the two chats as to what their opinions are. And I think we all pretty much agree. And Tristan Wilson chat. So there you go. We have like some, uh, <laughs> we have a little credibility. Tristan would make some changes. I know Tristan definitely would. But overall, you wanna, you wanna, it's, it's semi PV certified. L little, little effort. But so just, just know that this is not just me, it's multiple content creators. We have people that are in Legend RTA in my chat right now. So that's not just my opinion, but I think overall this is a very solid tier list. So if you're a new player getting into the game, if you have any of these characters, these are, if you end up building any in this top segment, you're gonna be happy. Um, maybe you won't use them right away. So try to only build characters that you feel that you could use now. Don't try to build one of these characters like Twisted Idol and K-Ron take some pretty intense gear. Um, but even on lower gear, I think he's gonna be really helpful for Automaton Tower and clearing different things that may be harder for you. So. Overall, though, any of these characters you build, you're going to end up getting some use out of them, so don't feel bad. The lower characters, the better option characters, sometimes you might have to build these because you don't have the substitute character. This is super overwhelming, I know, but maybe going through this, you'll have uh, maybe better understanding as to where certain characters go or just better overall understanding that there are options for everything. So that's all I got. Thank you for watching. Uh, I will have the PvP tier list up tomorrow, and I will see you all then. Peace out. Why is Destina down there? Because better options. Better options. Like, Destina's going to be lower when you have Dian and Amelia. Destina doesn't give attack buff, so does, is having a revive that good? Realistically, is having a revive that great? Like, Maid Chloe would be better than Destina for PvE. This is PvE. But yeah, I don't think it does. If your characters are dying and Destina revives, your characters are usually in PvE just going to die again. Right? It's very hard to stabilize your revive, but she is good. Don't get me wrong. The, the, she's in better options here. She's not in useless tier. You could use her. But, and I have everyone pick her for selective. So I'm going to use this, you know, more than Mater, D and PV. Well, then you're missing out on attack buff, okay? So I think attack buff just creates a better option for the other characters. But Tamarin, every new player is going to have Tamarin if they're following my guides. So everyone's going to use Tamarin over Destina in 99% of scenarios. So Tamarin just immediately knocks her down and then any other attack buffing cleanser like Deanne or that is going to knock her down further. So I, I can't, I can't in good faith suggest Destina as high as the other characters. I don't, but okay. So we got the YouTube video done for today, which is good. Tamarin needs her own tier and I stand on that. Nah, these top three right here, like if anything, these three are in their own tier and then these guys would be right after, but. I don't know. I'm very happy with that. I think Abyssal Euphine is sleeper underrated in a lot of PvE. Even though she's not best in slot, she's just usable in such a variety that she goes higher. Being able to solo Banshee 13 is insane. Do you Discord for PvP thumbnail? All right, let me see. Who'd you put on PvP thumbnail? Emma Landy? Who'd you put? Sermon, Euphine? Okay, I can, I, I can get behind that. That looks good. I'll, so we'll do the PV one pop a little bit more and then that one. Okay, so we have a PvE tier list, though. So let me go ahead and hide the display capture. That looks great. So now, what are we doing? Wait, cancel. I am going to export this as a PNG. Okay. So now I'm going to save the image so you guys will have the image in my Discord. Before I exit out of this, we have the PNG saved. Um, I guess I could save it, too. Okay, I saved it. There we go. We have a saved version of it. Now we can go to our regular content. I'm not going to, I'm going to do the PVP tier list tomorrow for new players. Let me move all the chats back over. So what are we going to do? We stream for two hours. I do want to upload that. I really need that folder badly. I'll see if I can get it. I got ML Ken for no freaking reason on my new account. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, did you? I mean, ML Ken's insane for PvP, bro. Another ad? That's just how I, I don't know what to tell you guys. Twitch makes me play ads. What do you want? I have to play ads. If you don't like ads? Get Twitch Turbo. I don't know what to tell you. Get Twitch Turbo. You have a Twitch Prime sub, you probably use it on another streamer. But if you watch a bunch of streamers, guys, if you watch Twitch more than five hours a day, Twitch Turbo is so good. 10 bucks a month and you never have to watch another ad. Any upcoming banners? Yes, we have Biblis next week. I have to pee really bad. 
Um, we have Biblis next week. Or sub to the channel. Yeah. I mean, like, if you sub, you don't have you don't have ads. I have to play ads. Any YouTuber or any Twitch stream you go to, you're going to have ads. So, complaining isn't going to get you anywhere. I know it's annoying. I'm sorry. It's the holiday season. This is the time where Twitch forces so many ads, it's insane. We're going to get ML landing on new account. Should I keep it? Yes. For sure. But yeah, Biblis, Biblis is going to be very... Do I need good gear for C Pavel? Um, not really. If you're gonna use them in PvP, yes, but for PvE, no, you can just sell them all, whatever. Would this team work for annoying RNG draft? A cart, Euphine, Aiden Rylet? No, because then they're going to pick Briar Witch Asaria, Zahak, um, last piece Corin, Illus. Like your four characters can be countered with four other characters immediately did you do a vid on biblis i did not i could do that today too god i'm so far behind taking one day off as a content creator obliterates you like i i took mostly yesterday off to like clean my room i went to uh the store i got um i got like a dresser because i haven't had a dresser And I did I did some stuff I needed to do, and I feel so far behind. Like I did a one hour stream yesterday. I pulled Ludwig, and that's all I did. Take some notes from asthma. Don't clean. Are you really a streamer if you don't stream? I did stream. I just didn't stream very long, but it is like I didn't do a video on Biblis. I didn't do a video on ML Ludwig, and I'm to a point where I don't think I'll do a vid on ML Ludwig because what am I gonna do for that? All right, but guys, should I upload that video right now? I guess I could. And I'll, I'll look at it before I upload it, but I'll upload it right after stream. That way you guys will have it. Plus, if you're not in my Discord, uh, Bro and Ludwig Soulburn, I did do a bunch of uh, Arena. If you guys aren't in Discord, the picture will be uploaded in Discord. Discord is where everything is. There's the link to it. Yeah, Mel Ludwig too. He looks cool. Hoping you could use him. Uh, probably won't be able to use him. Probably won't be able to use them, but we'll see. That gearless ML Ken goes hard. All right, how much does this do? Gearless Kron too. Why does he have like an actual team comp setup? Why is this Acadius not dying? Is this a revive again? Am I fighting the revive again? No. Okay, that's just a heal. Okay, we're done. But no, I I don't know about Ludwig. For If you don't have a really stabilized account, you're not going to be able to use him. But yesterday, I was using with Broman. Super fun. And in Arena. For new players, I'm a Ludwig. It's easy to skip ever if anyone considers if to get him. Yeah, you can skip him for sure. I think I'm going to find a use for him later. That's going to be pretty solid. So... If I were to use him, I would be using him against someone who picks like Spectre, Tenebria, Lua. Right? Because he can one-shot Spectre Chenebria. That is my idea behind him, but he's going to be like a 1 in 20 draft character. It took me a while. I thought about it yesterday as much as I could. Um, but I do think I'll be able to use him. But I'm not going to use him in the general cleave setup. I'm going to use him into if someone picks Louis Stene into me. I think I will pick him. No chance. The problem is he's a late draft pick. As a late draft pick, he will be fine there. But if they pick B Dom, they won't. If they're gonna pick Lua B Dom, uh, what's it called? Then at that point, I'm probably just gonna win the draft anyway. Like Lua B Dom usually is really bad against me. Lua Lua regularly without B Dom, good into me. Lua B Dom, I know how to fight. Lua B Dom Stenny, that's that's pretty simple to fight. One in twenty pick, even in. Even in cleave or of just you? No, mine's a 1 in 20 pick, not cleaving. I don't cleave. A Hanson's bug so annoying? How's a Hanson's bug annoying for you guys? Just auto click. Click auto plus 3. You don't have to. Just click auto plus 3. That's all you got to do. Just click auto plus 3. I don't see her working anything other than cleave. You, you'll see. Give it time. I told you it's going to take a little bit and people will find an additional slot for him. 
It's just like picking Milam. A lot of people will pick Milam into Lua. And you're literally picking him in the same spot. It's the same draft. It's just not a common draft. It's it's legit picking him into the exact same spot. There's no difference. Anywhere you'd pick Milam in that in that kind of scenario, you would pick him instead. Did you dare put Milam in the same tier? It's not in the same tier, it's in the same usability clause. If they do a certain specific thing, then you can pick it into it. Trust me, I will do it. I will show you guys. It won't, no one picks Stenny into me because I early pick you Fiend. So it's not even something that's gonna happen almost ever unless the only way it happens is if they ban Bellion, you Fiend. There are some people out there that ban Bellion, you Fiend. If they ban Bellion, you Fiend, then yeah, I'll probably be able to get it more often. But Milim also works in like 50 situations. Well, yeah, obviously, but Milim doesn't work into Stene. You guys, you guys, M Mega Levy, you are high RT. You realize there's the scenarios that having that one flex pick just wins you the game. So having more of those flex picks, the thing is you can't pick Milim or there's very few characters to pick into that flex pick scenario. Because once you get Cleave doesn't care for Stene. No, Cleave doesn't care for Stene. It's, oh my gosh, you're killing me here. My normal drafting, how can this character increase my normal drafting flexibility? It creates the situation now because I didn't have a pick into that before. If they picked Lua, I didn't have an AoE damage dealer to deal with Stene. Now, if they pick Lua, I now have a character that will go before Stene if I draft it properly, and I can I can then one-shot Stene. That that wasn't a it wasn't an option before. I understand you're looking for some way to make it work. I'm not really even looking for some way to make it work. Like when you get characters, you build them to fill the slots that you're weak in. Got toasted by AU Fiend Bellion, yeah. Hand guy still used this season? Yes, hand guy will always be used. For new players especially, Meteor Cowork is an irreplaceable character. Uh-oh. Okay, one shot. Good. Meteor Cowork is still number one pick. There's no Sorry, I'm doing my best to not pull for Ludwig. For you pulling for Ludwig, it'd probably be pointless. But for me, I just know there's a certain situation when drafting. I know my drafts better than anybody because I'm the one that does them. So I know there's a spot that he would he would fill the role for sure. Now, is Zimmel Ludwig going to be good for most people? No, he's going to be terrible for most people. But Cleave is not the only place where he can be used. It's 99% of the place he can be used. But I'm telling you, having... If you want to truly be like top, top RTA, filling those little gaps is just going to make you so much stronger. Because there, I usually have a, like, I usually have a solution for every draft picked against me, but I always like super mentally break down on stream during a draft whenever I cannot figure out what, what it is that I could do. Wait, I just got cooked by two ML5s. Terranor Royal Guard is pretty solid. Full single target strip on S3. Wait, I canceled the auto. Whoops. Please hit. Thank you. RNG win. Judging a character first two weeks is always a great thing to do. Well, no. Megalevia is right. It's not going to be very good for most people. But trust me, I know... I dress, I know where he could be used. It's very hard to fight Lewis Stenny. If you can find, or Knockwall Stenny. It works in a Knockwall Stenny too. So finding a character that can can work in that scenario is worth so much. Zio must have used Ludwig. Yeah, I mean, debatably, but yes. But guys, as a fourth to fifth pick character, almost anything in the game can be used, okay? Anything in Epic 7 could be used as fourth of the pick character. There are very few things that can't be used fourth of the pick. What team comp for Banshee? I mean, there's like a million. I show in my new player guide series a Banshee team that you can use, and then on my new new player guide series. I will have a another team. Honestly, I think Ludwig's better than Milim PvP. I think Ludwig has more use cases than it because you can knock characters out of stealth. 
Like a lot of what people do. So the guys, there's one person that streams that I fight all the time that picks Milam into Lua. Always. They pick Milam into Lua all the time. If they were to pick and they would be able to soul burn out of it. If they were to pick Ludwig instead of Lua and almost all those drafts, they would beat me. Milan doesn't bridge like ML Ludwig too? Yeah. ML Ludwig gives flexibility. You can knock people out of stealth with Ludwig? Yes, you soul burn him in the S3. Milan can't do that? No, I'm saying that's what Milan does. Milan like stops stealth, but Ludwig can still do the same exact thing. What's your opinion for new Chris CSC? She's very average. Very, very average. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> it's probably the safest way to put it. She is very, very average. Um, but for new players, though, I do think Christy's actually pretty, pretty good for PvP. I think Christy fills a role that you will not have filled as a new player. So I, I do think Christy as a newer player is going to be actually solid for a lot of people. She creates a knight drafting opportunity. So if you have Arrow Christy, it pretty much fills all your knight, knight drafting that you have to do. All right, this is actually, a, what am I fighting? This team is so hard. I don't feel like SC changed much about her. It really doesn't, but. Okay, um, we might be cooked here. I haven't seen a single Christie since SC changes. All right, who dies here, Raz? Raz explodes. Wow, that was some crazy damage. You guys see this? Well, this sucks. Turns out Chrissy doesn't need effectiveness. Who would have thought? Not me. I saw the effectiveness. I got excited. Man, I can't kill nothing here. Dude, climbing arena up until challenger. Very easy. Hey, we kill you. Imagine not giving her HP. Dude, how how is the effectiveness not HP? I think if the effectiveness would have been HP, it would have made so much more sense. I don't understand not giving her more HP. Like any good build Christy I've seen is so low HP. It's impossible to give her the like overall correct stats. If they made Christy, you know, everyone would be complaining. That's the thing. At Smilegate, Smilegate's always at a lose-lose, no matter what they do. Oh my god, guys. You know all these American Eagle sponsors I've been getting? Check these jeans out. Pretty nice, right? Dude, those American Eagle sponsors have been going so hard. I have updated my entire wardrobe. Like, these jeans, some of the best-fitting jeans I've ever bought. Are those jeans clean? Those things are nice, dude. They're so cheap too. Like I, I haven't bought American Eagle. Like no sponsor. I don't have a sponsor for them right. Well, I did one yesterday, but this isn't. This isn't sponsored or anything. Was my zipper undone? No, it was up. But dude, these like I have my my shirt on it. It's American Eagle too. Like my whole wardrobe now is American Eagle, and it's so sick. Everything. They, so every time I take one of those, they give me a hundred dollar gift card. So I've spent like, it's a lot of money overall. I spent, looks like denim, dude, they fit. So guys, you, you know, I'm six foot four. So trying to find jeans, I'm skinny and six foot four. So trying to find jeans that are skinny and long is really hard, but they have 2934. 2934 is the greatest size ever created for humans. I love it. I'm so happy. Like, I have a whole new wardrobe because of these sponsors. It's 
So if any of you guys are tall and trying to figure out what the hell to buy for clothes, I highly, highly suggest. No sponsor. They're not paying me anything for saying this. I'm so happy. And they, uh, I, if I get, dude, the more sponsor they get from them, I'm going to have clothes for like the next 10 years of my life. Just set. So nice. So all those little eight minute sponsors you guys sit through, 29 waist. Yep. I have a 29 waist. Twenty nine waist and I'm six foot four. Imagine. I don't even know what else to buy. They have like these. They have these like sweatpants that are like. I could only dream. Thirty thirty waist is like thirty or thirty two is probably the average. But most like skinnier people I know are all thirties. We have the same waist, but I'm way shorter. Yep. <laughs> Not surprised. Are you going to make a Guild War tier list? I'm, ma I'm making an overall general PvP tier list. In a PvP tier list, we're going to be going over what characters are good and everything. So there are going to be characters that are a little bit higher because they're in good in Guild Wars versus just doing a general RTA tier list. So when I do that tier list, everything will be all in one. And that's going to be tomorrow. So new play it's going to be a new player PvP tier list, though. So like Destina, super high because she's easy to gear. So gearing is going to come into effect for that too. Characters that are easy to gear are just going to go up higher. So tanks, just tanks overall are going to be very, very high on it. I'm trash Sarte, but I can cook in Guild War. Evan, what are the dots for? Just got back home from work. How's it going? What's up, SC? But Biako... So tomorrow, if you guys are here, it'll be the same time tomorrow. If you guys want to help me with that tier list again, like today, is this you, just so you, I mean, there are going to be probably 50 to 100,000 people that are going to see these tier lists. If it's anything like my last year guides, 50 to 100,000 people are going to see it. So our opinion is going to affect 50 to 100,000 people getting into the game. So it needs to be. I would like to have as many opinions as I can get because this is kind of important. It's a 2024 overall guide. It's going to be getting people like that last video we just made. It's probably going to over time reach 50 to 100k views. Ludwig review win. I used him yesterday. I mean, he's good for cleave. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to use him as a non cleave character. He's he's really fun. He's probably the most fun character I pulled for. It's actually making me do arena. We'll put it that way. I never do arena or guild wars, and he's making me want to do arena and guild wars because he's just enjoyable to use. Now and he's good. I mean Ludwig's good, but how good is he? If you play most play styles that isn't just turn your brain off and cleave, he's not very good. Does it matter what server you play on EU versus global? It doesn't, but it does at the same time. So it doesn't change anything. Every server always gets the same rewards from like any anniversary or anything. Um, but what it does affect is the amount of people who play on it are different, like the amount of guilds you have, how active expeditions are, things like that. So technically it does matter, but. Oh. I mean, I'm pretty happy with today's stream. We didn't really get a lot done on the new player account, though. <laughs> we spent an hour and a half making a tier list. Hey, what's up, Rick? We got a lot of subs, though, so that's a good stream, right? I hate Garen E7. I only get low rolls. Even with low rolls, your characters can still be put on that gear and usable. You can reach... Uh, guys, I'm actually thinking about making an account and pushing to champion RTA, and I'm only allowed to use blue gear. But hey, Big Pork Chops with the Prime 2. Thank you, Big Pork <laughs> Big Pork Chops. What a name. Not Rift? No, I'm not going to do it. But do, doing a new account and only using blue gear. Because I want to show that you guys that are being too picky on your gear, you, you can just ignore it. That's a cool idea, but seemingly time-consuming. It would take a month. I mean, I would just... I could start it right now, technically, and just play it alongside this account would be insane with blue gear it's not it's if you guys knew most if you look at most people's accounts their gear is lower gear quality than purple gear for like the average player so that would be the best 
thing I could do is just make an account. I'm only allowed to roll blue gear because blue gear, I you're able to get speed so fast plus it takes less charms to upgrade i mean that would be insane if you would make it i think i can make masters in 30 days with blue gear do you guys think i could you want me to do it i could start it i could start it like tomorrow you think i could reach masters in 30 days with blue gear i'm i reached champion day in 32 days with not blue gear it's a huge waste of resources i mean who cares this account is just gonna get thrown away after i lost my last account because i forgot the thing i've been signing extracting it so far don't use blue gear i'm okay guys definitely get rid of all blue gear but i just want to do a blue gear style thing so when i do extractions i'm doing blue gear extractions i'm only going to feed so much to get blue gear out of it but i'm pretty sure i could get it i could get masters in 30 days with just blue gear from a brand new account i i technically could just stream oh <sighs> Would it be worth it? That's the problem. Would it be worth it? So as a content creator, you got to weigh the value. Everyone will talk about it. Everyone would talk about that. If I were to reach that, everyone would talk about it. Right? So as a content creator, I think it would help the community a ton. Gearing overall is hard. Have the characters rip and make the gear work. You don't need to worry about rift as a new player. If everyone talks about it, then it's worth exactly. That's kind of why is blue gear bad because you're losing out on one one roll immediately. So red gear is always the best because you start with four rolls, so you get an extra roll no matter what. So purple gear is going to be a step below red gear, right? Because you're going to be already missing up to nine percent equipment score. People would do it regardless of a guide. What do you mean? A guide will stop one or two from being Pepega. Well, yeah, the guys is trying to get people from stopping to prevent as much Pepega as possible. But the thing with that, it would it would get a ton of people. Wait, am I gonna die? I might die. We actually have to soul burn. Lost to PVE, didn't lose to PVE. Almost lost PV. Big difference. <laughs> but what do you... Should I do that? I mean, I'd have to... Sh if I stream 10 hours a day, I think I could get to Emperor by the end of the... Or not Emperor, sorry. Masters by the end of the month on a new account. And then that way I could just show that gearing and I would just make a whole like little series out of it. Gearing in Epic 7 is not as hard as you think it is. Because it, it would completely change people's opinions on the game. Anyone who's quit the game in the past because, like, gearing's too hard. If they see someone is able to get that far that fast, you know it would change everyone's opinion coming back to the game. Because, like, oh, okay, maybe I am taking gear too stressfully. I would always appreciate more advice on gear and gearing. I think I should do it. I think that's the best idea I could do while I'm working on this. They quit the game because they picked her 230 CLS and me and RTA and died. Imagine a new account though. Blue gear, you can get you can get an average of 14 speed probably with all your pieces in how many days do you think that would take? Rolling only blue gear, you could get a 14 speed average so fast. It would be in like 10 days. So 14 speed average on a Lua, what is that? 280? It's about 280. 14 speed average is about 280. Gearing is hard. It's not as hard as you think it is. If I could find a way to dumb down gearing, it would make Epic 7 so much bigger. That's my goal. In 2024, my goal is everyone who... So right now, let's just mathematically say 100 people, you can reforge blue gear, you can reforge gray gear. I have a gray piece on my main account reforge. But mathematically, out of every 100 people that try Epic 7, five people stick with the game for at least a month. That's probably the current statistics. Imagine if we're able to get the guide series up, show like extreme examples of things to where people, we can raise that number for every five out of 100. It goes to every 10 out of 100. You know how fast the player base would grow? Like by the end of 2024 with enough resources out there, I really think Epic 7 could really take off. Question, I got a perfect sword with all the stats I was looking for, but some of the rows were lower. Is there any way to reforge tier of the stats? No. There is not. Even if the stats are a little bit lower, if it's all the stats you want, just level it. And you will get upgrades later. You need the basic gear on your account to build characters, even if they're not perfect. 
And then from there, you will eventually switch out those pieces and those that gear that's mid becomes PVE pieces. So whenever you level a piece of gear with no waste of subsets, even if it minerals the whole way, it's still usable. And a lot of people don't realize that. They think, oh, if I didn't roll into X thing, it's already not usable. You have to start your account at some, some spot. Like if you have a sword with attack, crit damage, crit chance, speed, and it's a red piece of gear and everything's mineraled, if you plus 15 it, you are going to be able to use it. It's going to not have good stats, but you are going to be able to use it until you get a better one. And yes, it sucks because getting charms this game is hard, but it's better to have at least something usable versus having nothing at all. And that is a huge thing I've been trying to push. You have attack, crit chance, crit damage, speed. If you have a ring that is attack percent with speed, crit chance, crit damage, flat defense, you roll into flat defense two times and still hit the other stats and their low rolls, it's still a usable piece of gear. Now, if it's all minerals starting at that point and with the wasted stat, then it's it's kind of scuffed to do. But I think if a lot of people just aim for 80, 85 equipment score after Reforge, instead of aiming for 100, it would dramatically change. Imagine you 300 speed plus, uh, from blue gear, you can't. Well, okay, 19 speed is the max you can get on a blue piece of gear. So 19 speed average, how fast is a ran on 19 speed average? Every piece 19 speed, he's 302. I think he's 302. What is Rand's base speed? Hold on. What is Rand's base speed plus speed set? He's 129 times 0.25 plus 129. So with speed set, Rand's already 161. So if you have 19 times 5, be 95 plus 45 plus 1. Yeah, you would be over 300. So you could have a you could have a Rand. That is super hard to do because you need all max rolls on speed. But so it's 129 with speed buff, it's 160 plus the, the rolls. You would have like a 303 ran on blue gear. So it is possible. I don't I don't suggest anyone rolling blue gear. Don't get me wrong. I'm not that's not what I'm trying to say. The only reason I would do it is just oh my god, we're fighting Mort. I just looked at my screen and I'm panicking. This is usually when you put a I would put Angelica in here. But maybe we could clear it without putting Angelica in here. I want to show you a purple piece if you don't mind. It's on destruction. Put it in. I mean, yeah, you can send it to Ares. Imagine you threw in your speed post from blue gear. You can. It is very possible. That's the next challenge. I think that would have the most impact on the Epic 7 community. Is getting to masters with blue gear only. I've shown it's doable in 30 days. Getting to Masters in 30 days with blue gear, that's that's definitely the most impactful thing I could do. So should we start that tomorrow? I have a lot of stuff I need to get done today. If I start that tomorrow, that means I'm committing to like eight hours of streaming per day because we're going to be just sitting, chilling while I'm farming. That gives me eight hours a day to beg for Twitch Prime subs though. Sounds kind of nice. But you proved uh, everything you needed to prove, but I guess it'd be fun to do. I just, I, I don't know. It's even with what I've done so far, even with what I've done so far, making the guide showing how far you can get, like the official Epic 7 Discord will still say, oh, there's better, or there, that this stuff is better to do. Like follow this stuff. Even though I have a video evidence and everything documented of my entire journey, they still refuse to believe it which i know i need to not care about what they think but it gives you the goal okay even if you do it without any gear yeah i know they'll still be haters but oh okay never mind more was easy but i don't know i really think it, it, it's it, it becomes a mindset of i want to prove them wrong in every way possible so anytime they they say anything negative they they have no ground to stand on so it's like a, I guess an ego thing. I just want to prove that I'm right. But I've already proved that I'm right. Like with the advice I give, you guys can follow it. You've seen I've reached Masters RTA. I've given, I upload all my games. Uploaded every step of the way. But hey, Stranger Things, thanks for using your Prime too. 13 subs. Wait, it's Friday? we have 13 subs that means the rest of my day is gonna suck friday the 13th you're welcome thank you 
They will say you 15% so it doesn't count. Yeah, the first one was, oh, we had Solitaria. Solitaria hard carried him. I, there is no winning in a game like this. There are some people that just have the brain capacity of a chipmunk. I don't know. That piece of gear? Uh, I mean, it's like 90. It's not very good. What do you need? The only thing it could be good on is Aria. That piece of gear is not great because it's crit chance effect resist. So if it was crit damage effect resist, I mean, the piece is usable. I just don't know who on. Like, it's after reforge, just like 92. That's a usable piece. It's just your stat allocation. I don't know what would use effect resist crit chance besides Aria. And I destruction set Aria isn't very good. So I don't know who used that. Chipmunks are pretty smart. Look at the rescue rangers. Okay. What's something dumb? I don't know. Those eggs are pretty annoying. I don't even pay attention. I'll be honest. I don't pay attention to anything but the bosses. And, and that's only if my run fails while I'm not paying attention. Then I'll look and be like, okay, I need to manual this. If you got 12 match upload, 11 out of 12 matches, and see they count every match to do drama, yeah. There's no winning. That's the biggest thing I need to realize. There's no winning. No matter, no matter what I do. It's mostly that we check with a lot of players. IDK, who are DD sources other than himself? There. I just open it right now. So let's see what this, this guy says. All these guys and you're still bad anima. Wait, hold on. So there's one guy. Well, the guys in here are made for ages before his. You're free to follow what you like. So there's this Daffro guy. He's super cool. He was in my Discord for a while helping some new players, but um he's very heavily opinionated on certain things so and that it's fine his opinions they all work he's a little annoying generally the procedure is the same but mcd these are weird from what i've seen IDK has changed them recently i thought guys tell you what's the best way to progress i expect them to be the same based off that that's the thing is this game so complicated all guides are going to be different they don't really see that uh it's mostly so this, it's mostly that we check with a lot of other players. IDK, who are DD sources other than himself. I stream to hundreds of people a day, and we have, like, how many legend players come into the chat whenever we're doing this stuff and help? We have, like, 10 legend player opinions, which are the top, top opinions you can get for this stuff. We have multiple legend player opinions on every, and, like, probably 100 emperor level, or level player opinions, plus at least 5 to 10 legend players' opinions. And like how it's it, like every time I do any of this stuff, it's live. You guys, I always get advice from people who are at the top. The difference between them is their advice is all people have been hard stuck PVE for the last 40 years. I don't know. I don't know what else to say or do. There's nothing else I can do. If you keep doing it, at some point it's going to be, oh yeah, you can, but do it with, uh, do it without the Stina. Uh, meanwhile, I remember a lot of these just start over you advice. Yeah, that's, that's one of the main complaints. They still are like, they don't know how to even do anything in the game without this area. And they also think that Tamarin is like, requires this area. They think Tamarin is useless without this area. It's crazy. For Banshee, should I use Fal SC Falconer Clary? I did. Yeah, I did use her for Banshee. So Banshee, an easy team for Banshee that's slow is just Destino with 200 effectors, which you get from the free gear, uh, as long as you buy the resist set from Arena Shop. Falcon or Clary, then any two green damage dealers. I don't think they need to be green. Preferably green so the Banshee doesn't heal. <coughs> <coughs> well, that's all you need. But yeah. It, it, of course, Duty of Master got LEC. Yeah, the last time, I, I don't know if you guys are here, last time that I pushed to Masters on the new account, I had to fight. I, I had to fight them on. They're like, oh, we got LHC. Now he's going to get to Masters with LHC. So I had to go in and not use LHC to show getting to Masters. And then once he got to Masters, they started using LHC. But it's just like, because of their that one guy's one comment, it made my Masters climb. Like, my win rate would have been like 20 or 30% higher. <laughs> If I would have just been able to use that one character. It was so hard not using her. It's like, I don't know. I don't know what to do about it. I am Lali Senya, I think. I wonder if Lali Senya is going to be free character or if they're going to make us pay. I uh, clear with Arena and Estenia. It was pretty annoying. Well, they're meaning for an auto team. Are you, well, Quincy, you're meaning for like autoing and actually farming, not just first clear, right? But yeah, see Lorena, Estenia can't clear. 
But yeah, if they hit anything that isn't grass, she heals way too much. It's not advice. You're going to pay nothing personal? <laughs> True. <laughs> I'd be shocked if Senya is limited. I'm, it, dude, if they make her limited, the kid Senya limited, that'd be frustrating. I do like that though, because the last, it's funny because we talked about doing the rift challenge and then Kana went and, went and did it. So I think the blue gear challenge is my, I'll just do that. Kana didn't, Kana didn't copy or even hear what I said about that, but just funny he came to the same solution of like something that could pass some time and be fun to do. Because the, the rift challenge on a new account, his was like speed running it though. Mine was from farming all the like initial resources, how would your account look versus a regular account that's what i was gonna do for it but i just didn't have the time so i even said at the time i was like i'm not doing this it's gonna take too long but i think doing an account just just for the sake of using blue gear only the thing is i don't have to make videos on it so it's something that i can just play on the side not even worry about just let it farm imagine that account's gonna get like some crazy red pieces that i just can't roll because <laughs> i can only do blue gear <laughs> so it's so funny i'm gonna be selling like 36 starting gear score red pieces what if but what if people start calling the blue gear guy they already do because i made a video four years ago teaching people how to get decent speed and a long time ago rolling blue gear was the fastest way to get speed as a new player because people are like i can't get past 210 speed it's like dude you literally just roll four pieces of blue gear you're gonna have 10 speed average you're gonna be 250 speed i made a whole video of like rolling blue gear is the highest chance of getting faster so if you're not above a certain speed roll blue gear to get to that speed and then adjust later it just blew my mind that people did not have 10 speed average per piece three or i guess it was like four years ago Today's rune buff day, right? So technically I should be farming runes, but I don't want to farm rune buff on a new account whenever other people aren't going to have it. So I think I'll skip out on farming uh, rune buff for the first buff that we get. So I don't have 10 speed a piece. Well, nowadays there's epic crafting and stuff. So ever doing blue pieces is just bad. It's, it's, it's just not worth it at all anymore. But in the past there was not epic crafting. There were a lot of things that were different that made it to where it was actually valuable to do it. Like, at the beginning of Epic 7, I was one of the fastest players, especially on Europe server. Like, for global server, there were quite a few faster, but overall, I was one of the faster players. Do I play Nikki? I do not. I've been debating on giving it a try, but I've got too much stuff to do right now to, to play it, sadly. The Blue Gear Broman guy. Broman's actually decent now, though. Oh, guys, I have a tournament coming up that's draft mode. That draft mode tournament is either going to obliterate me or... Because that's another thing. If I lose in draft mode, they're going to be like, Oh, he's terrible. Draft mode is so RNG. I'm in a tournament, and I'm the first person that plays in the tournament, too. So every if I get a terrible, if I get terrible RNG on my characters... Like, last time I played draft mode, I didn't lose a single game. But I'm playing against somebody else that's actually like high level so they're gonna they're gonna pick super safe too this could be so hard and it, i guarantee if i lose then i'm gonna have to be like oh deity sucks did you see him lose those draft mode matches oh uh, i don't i'm not looking forward to that i'm praying i get good rng so i can just skip out on that whole debacle <laughs> i just say no matter what you do true if i won they wouldn't like, last year I won the tournament, no one said anything negative. They said I got hard carried, but I won the last last match. The only match I played, I won. Wait, we're doing draft mode? No, I have a tournament that I have to play draft mode in. And I'm not looking forward to it. What am I doing for food today? I guess that's a good question. I stream three hours, usually I go out and get food around this point. What do I want for food today? I need to stop spending money, though. I need to cook more. 
I keep spending money on just random stuff I find. Oh, when will it be on YouTube? Uh, well, it's gonna be streamed. It's like an official tournament. So it's it's through Smilegate. So I don't know when it is. I don't think I could announce a date even if I know, but there is a tournament coming up that I'll be playing in. Nah, let's say skip a leg day or something. Dude, I've never even had a leg day. I've skipped every leg day my whole life. Dude, I wanna go golf. Hey, it's 54? Wait, it's 54 outside. Ooh. I could go to the range and get outside for a little bit. I could go get some food and then go to the range. That sounds like a good day. It's only 10 o'clock. It's already 54. Hold on. Where's my phone? My phone's on my bed. Damn. We'll support you all the way. Well, I appreciate it. I know you guys. Those of you guys that actually watch me, you, I mean, you know how things are. But it's, it's the people that never have seen a stream. They don't even watch streamers. Their only time they play the game is them playing the game and them talking to the Discord. Discord draft tourney. I can do a Discord draft tourney leading up to the, the tournament because I could enter the tourney myself. I'll, I'll make like a $200 prize. Whoever wins gets the money and I'll just beat all of you guys so I don't have to pay anything. Genius, right? I just win the tourney myself and then I save the money and then I get the free practice. That's what I did. I really enjoyed it for feeling. Once you get used to it, eating your own cooking feels well. I love cooking. Don't get me wrong. I cook all the time. I If I lived on my own, I would cook every meal. The only reason I don't cook here is because I try not to uh, disturb my roommates too much. I know they don't really care, but I, I just try not to go up there too, too much. So, and also dishes. I... I the bad thing is right once I cook I can't do my dishes right away because they're too hot and then I have to let them sit and if I get in the middle of anything then my dishes sit up there and then I feel lazy so and I don't want them to what's my favorite food dude I love making quesadillas I, it's so simple but I make some crazy quesadillas that's my favorite food to cook Favorite food overall, though? I just like anything buffalo chicken. I'm a simple food guy. I will occasionally cook, like, some extravagant pasta or go hard on some kind of rice. I don't know, some kind of fried rice. Fried rice just takes too long, though, because I always put rice in the fridge, pull it down, and harden it before I fry it. To try Vietnamese food? I've, I've definitely tried it at some point. The bad thing is I live in America, so it's a very hit or miss depending on where you go. So like Chinese restaurants around here, they're okay. But it's like if you go to a Chinese restaurant that has like fatty chicken and the rice, it just completely ruins it for me. Whereas if I cook my own chicken fried rice, it's perfect. All the chicken's perfect, seasoned perfect. Gotta use a day old rice, yep. That is the, the cheat code. I don't always let it be one day old. You just need to let it cool for at least eight hours. Eight hours and you're chilling. In the fridge. If you let it, you can let it sit out too, just in the container and cool down, but that takes longer. But I usually just immediately go put it in the fridge and after about eight hours, it's, it's, a, it's the same. Especially faux broken rice. The last girl I dated had me try like a million different... Wait, I think I went for faux. I went on a date at the end of... So I got out of the relationship. I think I went to go get faux. Like it was like two months after my birthday in August. No, because I wrecked... Or my car got wrecked. When when did I go? There's one girl I went out with and I think we went and got faux. And it was really spicy. There are various Vietnamese restaurants. And yes, I know there are restaurants, but are the restaurants actually good? So is it, is it gonna be, like, do they actually care about their food or are they just trying to make money? Is it actually real Vietnamese restaurant? Is it ran by people from Vietnam? Or at least some kind of Vietnam descendant? Or is it some American dude just using that to make money and making very average dishes? In Houston, there's a famous faux restaurant? Yeah, I'm sure there is around me too. There's gotta be some good ones. Is Bologna worth building and following a guide? Green Bologna? She can be really nice, yeah. Hunt buff soon. Hunt buff tomorrow? Isn't, is not Hunt buff tomorrow? 
if you got a uh, bun bow hue, if it's spicy, it plays stuffed up. Well, they ask you like a spice level. Maybe it's not foe that I'm thinking of, but they ask you like a spice level. And I got like a two and it was too spicy for me. So I am someone who has like no, I love spicy food, but I have no spice tolerance. So like when I went on that date, I was sweating so bad trying to eat that. It was not good. Oh, it's for Asia today? Okay. Yeah, because it's currently rune buff. Uh, so that means in 11 hours I'll have hunt buff. So I'll crank out some rift. You got LPK and straights. Who do you think will be better for an early account PvP? They're about the same. I would think LPK would be better because she's easier to gear. Um, I think LPK would be better for you because you're going to be fighting into Aiden and having her as an Aiden counter is really nice. But both are really hard to gear. So they're both harder to gear is a better way to put it. But hey, no bless. What's up? So it's 11 o'clock. I guess maybe I go get... What do I get for food? I don't want to end the stream and sit and think about food. I want to make a decision now and just go get it. I don't have anything I want to cook because everything I have is frozen. The only thing I could cook is some kind of pasta, but even like the chicken for my pasta is frozen. No restaurant sounds good. Going to Subway, a foot long from Subway is 1165. A foot long from Subway is like half a meal. Why is a single sandwich that isn't even filling 1165 i want subway like their garlic herb and spice or whatever bread like sometimes i just crave that because it's so good but it's 1165 for the most basic empty sandwich frustrating upgrade your robin game got me through college i i've never had actual ramen i always do like the noodle ramen and i can't eat it very much because it's too high in sodium so it just makes me feel like garbage all day. Subway's a joke, dude. I miss being able to go and get a, f just go. I don't know. Taco Bell has uh, chicken chipotle melts. I get those constantly. They're like $2 a piece. You can get three of them for six bucks. And I'm, I'm pretty full off three of them, but it's crazy. I could spend $6 and be full, or I could go spend 11.65 and still be hungry. They even had a song about five dollar footlongs. I know, and now the minimum footlong is like nine dollars. Like if you get one of their pre-made uh, options, because I always like did a build my own, it would cost like six bucks. But now, if I do a build my own, it's eleven sixty-five. I love banana peppers too, dude. I'm getting hungry. Banana peppers. That's the only place I ever get them from, the Subway. But banana peppers on a Subway sandwich, I get like spinach, salami. Pepper jack cheese, banana peppers. The amount of sugar in their bread is insane. That's probably why it's so good. How popular is Subway in the US? It was the most popular restaurant for a long time. They had the most stores. I guess I could just, I, honestly, I'll probably just go get chicken nuggets. <clears throat> Some French fries sound good, so let's get like a 10 piece chicken nugget combo. How about Korean food? I'd have to look as to like what's around me and what, what it's rated. Have I tried it before? I, I definitely have. I've tried like every kind of food at this point. Last year, all I did was go and try new food. It's part of why I was broke because I went out for every single meal and not to like cheap places. When I heard there's more Subway's and McDonald's, it blew my mind. Yeah, Subway, when I was in high school, Subway was the most popular restaurant by far. But I don't know about nowadays. Subway is nowhere near as big. I used to an update new player guide. I purchased a starter account for $20 and I did MLK. Uh, MLK and MLK. I don't know who MLK is. It also had like 700 leads. That's the thing. A buying a new account that hasn't progressed story at all is the like that's the best money you can spend, and that's why it's against service service. So don't go. Never tell anyone you bought the account if you can, because you don't want to get banned. LRK, yeah, that's huge. LRK, MLK, Spectre, Shinhebria, Meteor, Kyra, and Conquer Lilith start probably. That's huge. Like your account after six months is gonna be banger. Martin Luther King, yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. And then uh, Jared diddled kids, yeah, he ruined their company. That's the bad thing about putting one person into too much of a spotlight, because if they do anything wrong, it just kills your company. Like Subway almost better off rebranding or just letting Jimmy John's buy them out at this point. 
I went and got a Jimmy John sandwich last week. It was so boring. I ate it on stream too. It was like, it's like I was eating nothing. I don't think there was a single flavor in the entire sandwich. Do I stop farming unrecorded history today to farm light and green roots? Yes. Yes, do that. I did a discovery today. I was using Airwell, but forgot to level anything on her skill tree. Yeah, the skill trees are a little important. Like I have, I have a like actual ramen restaurant near me too. But anytime I go to any, okay, anything that's going to cost me more than like twelve dollars, I want it to be like a go out with people kind of deal, right? I want it to be like a an actual fun experience. If I'm getting anything that costs more than twelve dollars, otherwise I want to always spend below twelve dollars for like my fast food. Just because, just get whatever, eat it. Like I eat. Normally pretty healthy. Like yesterday I did get Taco Bell, but then I got a bunch of raw green beans and two cucumbers. I had like a huge plate of greens I ate after it for breakfast. Actually, I'm going to cut up a banana before I go out. Like I, I still get a good mix of stuff. I think if you eat fast food with like a little bit of vegetables and fruit, it's the cheapest you can live. Like cooking is not cheaper than going and getting like cheap options from fast food places anymore. And even though that stuff's unhealthy, like if you're still getting your nutrients and stuff from elsewhere, plus I take vitamins, I honestly don't think it matters what I eat as long as it's something. That's the biggest thing I do is just not eat. If I, if nothing sounds good, I'll just not eat. That's probably part of why I don't get sick too. If you guys ever like research into fasting, like if you fast for X amount of time, your body just resets completely. And I think I've done that so much that I just almost can't get sick anymore. My family found Domino's. Yeah, Domino's is a really good value. Actually, I get Domino's sponsors sometimes through Twitch where they they give me like a $50 gift card. I just have to like pull up the Domino's website and we look at pizza for eight minutes. Maybe I have good genes. I don't think that's it. I think it's a big part of it is because all my family members are always getting sick and stuff. I really think it's part of like the fasting. The human body isn't made to always be content. Like whenever it's not made to always be content. Like you're supposed to experience hunger sometimes because it makes your body like actually like being hungry for a 12 hour period has to be really good for you. That's my wife. She does not eat and never gets sick. I get sick constantly. Yeah, it's because our body resets. Our body goes into like our old cells die out and new cells come in. I don't know how it works exactly, but that sounds smart. But there's a ton of research on it. But I I really think if a lot of people just that eat, especially specific times, like, oh, it's six o'clock time to eat. If you just didn't eat for that meal and waited till morning and just dealt with being hungry, like your life would change dramatically. We were made to eat once or twice a day at most, I heard. Yeah, yeah, you're like, think about it. Think about how hard it was to get food when our bodies, or whenever we weren't civilized. Food was so hard to get. Like you would spend all day hunting and eventually you'd be able to get something you could eat. It's called ketosis, yeah. But eventually you would get some. Some days people would go entire days without eating. If they didn't have any success with hunting, they might eat like a couple berries or something. Like what else are they gonna eat? They're gonna eat very little or nothing depending on where they're at. If there's no food options, people go a whole day without eating. They will go two days without eating. And then finally they eat something. I fast twice a week uh, and then 30 for Ramadan. Okay. I think that's part of why like fasting is so like big in certain religions too, is because they knew it was good for you a long time ago. Uh, rule of threes, three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food. You can go three weeks without food. I don't think that's a good idea. I think I think there's like a 72 hour I think it's like 72 hour fast that's like where your body like almost completely resets but you get like all new cells at that point to fight disease you get it's really good for you so if any of you guys are ever hungry and it's nighttime that's the easiest time to do it so like that's a big joke is whenever you're broke it's like well what'd you eat for dinner sleep because <laughs> when you're hungry enough you just go to sleep and then wake up and you're usually when you wake up, you're not even that hungry too. But getting through that little 12 hour period, I really think everyone would see 
quite a bit of health benefits from it. It's not good to eat at night? Yeah, yeah. Or it's not good to eat at night unless you're trying to gain weight. So for me, I should be eating like two bowls of cereal every day before I go to bed. Because then I guarantee that would that would help me gain weight. But and for trying to be healthy, yeah, eating at night is not advice. Like that late night ice cream. I had sleep diet during college years. Yep, me too. Hey, we're going to be getting this in you soon. How much do you weigh being so tall? I weigh about 140. I, I fluctuate between 135 and 145, depending on how active I am. But I never go above 145. I've never weighed more than 145 in my entire life. I'm six foot four. You're six foot 190. See, Tristan, that's that's my dream weight. 180. If I weighed 180, 190, dude, I'd be, I'd be a monster. I'd still be a pussy, but I'd be a monster pussy. I'd have like somebody who's like five foot four try to get a fight with me, and I'd just immediately in my mind think I lost. Still, wouldn't even try. Just run away, pull a UG, and lay on the ground crying. Six one one eighty five. See, that's good. I think that's like perfect BMI, isn't it? May I don't know. I'm pretty sure the minimum weight I'm supposed to be is one fifty, with my BMI or like on the BMI thing. So I'm technically around five to ten pounds underweight, which is not good. But hey, I never get sick. Always. I mean, I always feel consistently the same. If I don't sleep, that's the only time that I don't feel good. It's really close to perfect. tad on the overweight side. Yeah, I, I would see six one. I think one seventy is probably like the the middle number for that. I think six four. I'm supposed to like the the middle ground for me is one eighty. I haven't looked in a while though. That's what I always always thought. It better be skinny and fat if one has to choose. Not necessarily. When you're skinny, if you have overactive thyroids, you're way more at risk of getting like. Uh, which is me. That's literally, I just described me. You're like more at risk of getting diabetes than someone overweight. And just your overall, like everything is being slight, slightly overweight is usually healthier than being underweight. Now being way overweight, like being 10, every, it's like 10 pounds underweight, being 30 pounds overweight is healthier. 2024 main objective for me is health. Yep, that's what I'm kind of doing. I'm prepping everything because next year I, I went and got a bunch of like decent food yesterday to cook. Like going into next year, I want to stop going out for food. I have potatoes. My my year is more uh, weight gain. But setting up a dentist appointment. Beachog, you're a monster. Then what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you are gym bros it's i don't understand how people have the like motivation to start going to the gym if you don't have anyone else in your life that goes to the gym how do you do it what kind of you know what's effectiveness and counter set death the ray or sharoon those are like the only two characters i think you can do arch two mercedes but very weird discipline i just i just can't do it with all the people recording in gyms and stuff now, like I don't want to go out and get flamed because I'm like, if if there was a gym that didn't allow for like recording, I'd be more likely to do it. But I don't, I know nothing about the gym. I, I'm not gonna know, I, I know how to bench, I know how to deadlift, I know how to do basic stuff. But most of the machines at a gym, I'm gonna have no idea the proper way to use them and I have no one to teach me. So if I go there with everyone recording, that's the main thing that will keep me from ever going to the gym is the fact that people can have their cell phones in there cuz I don't want to I don't want to end up on some video trying to learn how to lift weights properly. I don't want to do something wrong and forever be on the internet getting flamed for it. Now nah, people usually don't record or flame usually. Yeah. That's the thing they usually don't. But where I'm from very likely is where half of all the cases are from cuz people around me are all assholes. I don't like it. 
it's okay because Joey Soul or whatever protects you by shaming the recorder. They'll shame the recorder, but then that gives it even more publicity. And the thing is, I'm a streamer. It's okay, so if I go there and people are like, wait, that's that's deity. And then now I've like, for the rest of my streaming career, if I were to ever get bigger, find a game and get bigger, I always have that stain on my online persona. If I wasn't content creator, I probably wouldn't care. I, I, I don't give a shit at that point, but I don't want to always be reminded of that day as a content creator, if that were to happen. All right, that's the better way I could put it. It would become a meme, I know. The thing is, if I went there with friends, I would not care at all. That's usually people's social anxiety about gyms. Social media is really ruining experience in certain ways, yeah. But that that right there is the whole reason I won't go. I was a scrawny manlet and strangers at the gym were the most welcoming, helpful, positive people when I, or where I learned the internet is an accurate reputation of the actual environment there. That's what everyone says. That's what everybody says. But I dated a girl who was literally that, though. Like, her friends, I, I could just see, and that's part of why I never went. Because she wanted me to go with them. And I just saw how they, like, talked about everyone. And, like, they always recorded their workouts. And they would always, like, rag on the people that were in their things and how they were doing stuff. And it's like, that alone, that one experience from dating that girl last year made me never want to, never want to even try it. Like, she wasn't the rude one, but her friends were just the most toxic. I did not want anything to do with that. Your knees hurt so much. They were being girls, I know, but it's still. I, I I could just work out at home, if anything. Like, that was one thing I got out yesterday. Like, I'm not out of shape. Like, if I, I mean, I could, if I went and tried to do push-ups right now on like my perfect push-up thingy, I haven't done push-ups in probably a year. I, I could at least do 30, straight easy. I used to be able to do 100 without stopping, no problem. But the bad thing is, that just makes me lose more weight. Are you going to clear chapter three today? Depends on how long we keep talking. But like I can, and like, like with golfing, I'm pretty good at golf. Any, any sport I'm good at, I'm still athletic, but it's just though I don't know, I don't know proper weightlifting. I never, it's not something you learn. So I just don't want to be the idiot that does it wrong. Like I have dumbbells, this perfect push of things. So I have this like bench press band. That goes up to like 200 pounds if you set it all the way up, which is way too much for me. I can bench like 120, I think, right now. Which isn't bad for... It's almost my body weight, technically. I think that's pretty good. Bench 120 when you weigh 140, it's not terrible, right? <laughs> when you'd never work out. P90X? I haven't seen a P90X. They used to have commercials. I haven't seen anything on that in forever. I need to go to the gym, but now the gym job makes me not want to go. If you can just find a way to work out at home, that's the best thing. Because that, that shows the most discipline, is working out from home. Going to the gym, getting out of the house, like there's like incentive to it, which makes it easier. But if you can get yourself to work out from home, you are a superhero. Because when you have the option to sit and do anything else, watch TV, eat snacks, sit on, watch X streamer. Like working out from home is a superpower. Everybody I know, if working out from home was as easy as you would think it is, everyone would be in shape, right? Everybody would be in shape because everyone just do some push-ups at home. Why not? Do some, do some sit-ups, do some push-ups. It's easy, it's easy, but are you gonna actually do it? You work out from home while watching you do everything at home? Okay, maybe it's not a superpower. Everybody I know, the only way I ever see them work out is if they go to a gym. Yeah, so my old apartment did have a really empty gym. I mean, do you brush your teeth? Good question. I actually bought a new electric toothbrush yesterday. That thing is was awesome. I need to use it this morning. I didn't brush my teeth before I started streaming. That's the one bad thing is I sit down and start streaming right when I wake up. But... No, I need to wash my I need to brush my teeth and I have a new toothbrush, so it's gonna be fun. Wait, sorry, that's Shuna. Yeah, I get them confused too. Every time I say the wrong one. Use Celestine on Shuren? Yeah, that's what I I or I used to use counter Celestine DDR. But now I just put them both on speed set.
All right, quick question. How many of you guys brush your teeth in the shower? So that is, I always, like, there's never a day I haven't brushed my teeth, I think, in my life. But eventually I got to a point where I started brushing my teeth in the shower. It's more of a guy thing, I think. Like, guys, for some reason, just evolve into that. Because it's just, it's so nice to brush. Guys, if you haven't tried it, try it. Buy, so I have an electric toothbrush that I keep on my sink that I'll brush my teeth when I'm not showering. But anytime I shower, I always brush my teeth. So it gives me like an extra brush that I wouldn't normally do. It's so nice. Because you can just, you can go to town. Like you don't have to worry about keeping the toothpaste in your mouth. You just let that flow. It's so good. That is, as a 29 year old man, that is the best life advice I can give is start brushing your teeth in the shower. It's, it's game changing. I got a tub to sit in and brush my teeth. Yeah. Always brush the shower. It's time efficient. I don't think it's really actually time efficient, is it? It's just like you can, you can just go to town. Like drool, I'm drooling on myself. I don't know that I'm drooling on myself. I don't want my wiener to be minty. Your girlfriend might though. Are you single right now? That might be why you're single. Because you don't have the minty, minty junk. Minty wieners, I hear. Through the grapevine. 20, I'm 29. Not 20, 29. I will be 30 in 10 months. My is I, I would love this conversation. Wait. Brushing your teeth in the shower, there's no way that's not unhygienic, right? Wait, do I need to manual this? Nah, blue says goes crazy. Oh my god, wait, she did so much damage. Where are my souls? Wait, is this why this stage is kind of hard? Is because you don't get any souls? Because there's actually a lot of people that get stuck on the stage. As long as you use toothbrush on your teeth, it's fine. Mold? You heard of mildew? Well, don't keep your toothbrush in the shower. Keep it on the sink next to your shower and grab it when you go in the shower. Like, where are you putting your toothbrush? Like, obviously, don't keep your toothbrush all in the water doing water stuff. Grab your toothbrush. Like, so you go into the shower, you have your towel, you set your towel down, and you grab your toothbrush and get in the shower. Huh? Because of bacteria, shower head, get in your mouth? If, the, if wait what bacteria from the shower head getting in your mouth what's the difference between your shower head and the sink wouldn't the sink be dirtier than the shower the sink gets used probably more rinse your toothbrush for soap i put shampoo in my toothbrush you can clean the grout out with toothbrush see i actually use all my old toothbrushes i slam them down the drain and scrub around so anytime i switch my toothbrush PVE master toothbrush multi-use. But now when I'm about to throw my toothbrush away, I, I scrub with it. So it becomes a multi-use tool then too. I don't know. I've technically every time if you're worried about mildew and stuff from your shower, whenever you're gonna be switching to I mean you should switch your toothbrush every month, isn't it? So every month when you switch out your toothbrush, your shower toothbrush, use it and scrub the your shower head with the toothbrush and that'll clean it. So then you're cleaning your shower once a month. At that point, your shower is going to be cleaner than probably anybody else's shower. That's what I should have did yesterday. That's what I'm going to start doing. Do you brush your teeth with your open mouth under the sink? No, but I drink straight out of the sink all the time. Like when I will go and get water, I just turn the sink on and just stick my head under. It's like a water fountain. Are you, are you too scared to use water fountains? It's the same thing. A little bit of bacteria ain't gonna hurt you, all right? If your body is shutting down from the tiny bit of bacteria from leaving your mouth open in the shower, I think you need to worry about some other aspects of your health. If your immune system can't fight off a tiny bit of bacteria from in the shower, you can't drink this thing? Okay, true. Some places, some places your water isn't the same. But I grew up with a well, so like all my water was well water. So I just drank straight out of the sink. Just use it like a water fountain. Sometimes I'd get a cup, but if I was ever leaving, I'd, I'd never get a cup. I'll go drink a bunch of water and then go get in my car and drive off. Might as well just brush your teeth on the shitter and spin the bowl. I mean, I've done that too. What's wrong with that? Oh, I just max out on fluoride? Oh, yeah. 
Wait, don't do that? What, brushing your teeth over the toilet? Just don't stick your head too far in the toilet. Okay, another question. Do you guys, when do you use Listerine or like mouthwash? Do you use mouthwash before brushing your teeth or after? Curious on this one too. When do you use mouthwash? Before brushing. I Googled this recently. Okay, so you guys that are saying after, it's at, you're supposed to do it before because leaving mouthwash on your teeth, bad. Brush, floss, rinse, bed. See, that's actually bad for your teeth. Y using it after. So KPI, you Googled it recently. You're supposed to do it before you brush. I learned that recently. Shut up, man. Fake news. Nope. Look it up. Look it up. I live with a dentist, guys. I could go ask her. She would know. But you're supposed to do it after. Or before. So you're supposed to do it before and then brush after. Because mouthwash, leaving that stuff on your teeth is going to hurt your teeth more. But mouthwash is mainly for killing the bacteria in your mouth, right? So you use it to kill the bacteria and then you brush... And then you get all the stuff that was stuck on your teeth. One out of dentists agree with you. Look it up. Use Google. <laughs> Use Google. What do you mean? Call your local dentist. Guys, I would that's some that'd be really funny stream content. I could look up a dentist right now and call and ask them. I'd be like, oh, I set up an appointment. But then ask them and see what they say. We could call like 10 dentists right now. That's banger stream content. No one thinks to do that. I swear, if anyone watches these new player guides streams, the conversations we get into, there's no way people don't. I think you learn more of more about life watching my new player guide than you do learning about the game <laughs> right now. If you watch the streams, we go the amount of topics. The Mayo Clinic recommends using mouthwash after brushing and flossing your teeth. However, the National Service recommends avoid using mouthwash after brushing, since this may wash away the fluoride protecting your teeth. Recommends using mouthwash at a different time of day. Mmm. I think it depends on the kind of mouthwash. It's like Lister. There's certain mouthwashes that you're supposed to use before brushing. So like anything with high alcohol content, you're not supposed to leave the alcohol content on your teeth. That's also why people who drink a lot, their teeth just evaporate from their mouth. So I think it's I think it's kind of about the mouthwash you use too. So if you use like the high alcohol bacteria killing mouthwash, that's one is more important. So, yeah, I do. I haven't learned much about the game, though. I'm having fun. <laughs> well, most of the streams are just me clearing content. So if there's ever a boss that you're stuck on, you should just see that I come in and auto it and then maybe stop in manual for a second. So th that's the reason I'm doing the streams, because, hey, you can just skip through, find where I beat the boss and watch me do it and see it should be easier than you're making it out to be. But this way, I mean, last time I had like hundreds of people ask, they're like, oh, did you, do you have the full stream? Dentist said the cavity 15% me. Well, I have, I, okay. I haven't been to a dentist in 10 years, guys. 10 years, no dentist. That's bad. I need, I'm setting up a dentist appointment right at the beginning of next year. What's your opinion Tomica? She's not very good right now. I haven't been to the dentist in 10 years. I currently have two cavities that I know of. How does your living dentist feel about that? I don't know if she knows. She's offered that I could go to her, but no, going to a dentist that you know when you haven't been to a dentist a long time and you have no idea what's going on up in there, uh, I don't think I want to go to her. <laughs> Tell her on camera. I think, I, I think I've told her I haven't been in a long time. I think she knows. But no, I, I have the guy that don't have health insurance. Or a dent, I don't have any kind of insurance. I haven't had it. I, I had until I was 25, but I never thought to even use it. I've always taken care of everything, like my teeth, my health. I've always felt good, but I know I have a cavity. I can feel it with my tongue, that which means it's pretty big. So I'm pretty sure I have two, because there's a second one I'm pretty sure I have, which means there's probably nine cavities I need filled. And nine cavity fillings is at $180 a piece, probably. That is $2,000. And up until recently, I still don't technically have two grand to go drop on that because I have to pay taxes next year. But I'm hoping by February, we'll do a sponsor. Next sponsor will be the dentist sponsor, okay? So I'll have a game. Every person that downloads, they get like $8 or something. 
And if we can get 250 downloads, that will cover my entire dentist bill. And I will be good for years. So if you guys want to help me protect my future, <laughs> future self, quick two minute download of a game, easy, easy deal, right? Get insurance that, that covers gas. The gas is awesome. Insurance that covers the gas. Like inside gas. Are you still doing a sponsor survey? We are doing a sponsor survey. If any of you guys are from America and want to get into, I mean, whoever does it right now, I think wins 120 or someone's going to win 125 bucks. If we get more surveys done, someone wins more. But if anyone wants to get into that and be willing to do a survey or two, I can go over it all. But you have to be from the US. I don't think there's too many people that entered it. So your chance of winning 100 bucks is like one in 12 right now or something. Very high. So if any of you guys want a chance to win. I feel like healthcare in USA is trying to build a strays for PV with new player. Yeah, that's a very good example. I think someone asked a question earlier and I read it in my mind and never answered. And I feel bad now. I don't remember who it was. It was on Twitch. I don't remember the question. We started talking about brushing her teeth and their question got obliterated. <laughs> but yeah, we're still doing the sponsor survey. So if any of you guys from US want to get into that, is Nightmare Raid worth getting into? Yes, it's always worth doing Raid because it's an extra currency that if you don't spend you get nothing out of but for the time commitment for it i will never do raid i'd rather just farm hunt and have a little bit less i'll have one less pen neck every month oh well for the for the time for me getting one extra pen neck is not worth it now if i were to do raid i would just do hell raid i wouldn't do nightmare and i would just get the piece every two months instead but if you want to maximize your account then yes you want to be truly efficient yes hell raid is definitely worth getting into because a piece of gear is always going to be usable no matter how it rolls it's always going to be good so and it has the potential to go like 25 speed is there a link yeah uh i think it's like straight point giveaway on my twitch yeah here is the link if you want to do it every survey every survey takes like one minute so if you're willing to do like a couple just two or three surveys it would help out Okay, every time I try to get the stupid link, I have to copy and paste it. Alright, there we go. But yeah, if anyone's from the US and wants to get into that, they don't ask like any info, it's just a survey company. They'll ask you like your email. You can use a secondary email if you want, it doesn't matter. But someone right now is winning, I think, fifty dollars, but we, we should hit two fifty surveys by the end. I haven't promoted it at all. So someone I think wins like 125 bucks or something. And your chance of winning is very high right now because there's not too many people doing it. I have a noob question. Are you supposed to 100 percent explore hell raid after killing bosses? No, it doesn't really matter. If you're a completionist and want to, you can. But every time you go around doing like the extra bosses, uh, I mean, if you have enough currency to do it, sure. What do you even get for 100 percenting? It's like 80 sky stones. So... I guess if you have the resources, go ahead if you have a bunch of extra entry tokens, but. Unless my math is off, Nightmare Raid currency is 17 a month, Hell Raid is 12 currency a month, and of course you mix and match, yeah. But Hell Raid takes you how much time? Hell Raid, each boss you just go and auto it at this point. So the amount of, the amount of actual time you put into it is less, but hey, if you love playing Epic 7, then it could be good. What's a good team for feeding? Rampage and Yola, episode 479. I have a video on my second YouTube for that. I will send you that video. If I can find it. YouTube. Deity rerolled. Um How to beat Yola stage 4-79. There you go. I have a second YouTube that I have like certain specific things like that on. I'm gonna be uploading more stuff as I'm going through on this. So I'm going to go take like the cuts and beat it. Legit six extra currency a month. Only you can decide if it's time is still the E7 is game of time management. Yeah. Epic seven is resource management. And then you got to take your IRL time management. in. And I think a lot of people just do not think about that. Oh my God. This thing, she slapped some debuffs. A little annoying. What's the best anti-heal for Abyss 90? Anti-heal. You don't have I don't think you need to use anti-heal on that for any reason, do you? 
E7 is a baldening management game. That that too, that is true. You have to do the things that stress you out the least to keep the hair on your head for longer. I agree. I'm sorry I didn't catch the answer earlier, but it's worth switching EU to global. Uh, only a week? No, it doesn't really matter. Global is the best server to be on because there's more players, but that's the only reason. Should I choose Conquer Lewis or Meteor Kyrak? Because there's also Headhunt, which should I choose from there? Meteor Kyrak is going to be the better pick, especially for new players. For I mean, for anyone. But Meteor Kyrak is the best pick from that. I got advice from as many people as I could of high rank RTA before I suggested Meteor Kyrak, and they all said Meteor Kyrak because I was debating between the two. They all say Meteor Kyrak because he's irreplaceable and. We're going to be entering more debuff meta, guys. Right now is heavy debuff meta. Not having Meteor Kyrak, as a new player especially, and having no options whatsoever, sucks. So Meteor Kyrak still number one. Headhunt, I have a headhunt video, exclamation point headhunt, where I talk about all the options. If you want to just get C-list Meteor Kyrak, that's going to be solid. Very safe to do. But Meteor Kyrak from the ML, or uh, from Moonlight Blessing 2, Always going to be what I suggest. There will never be a time that his skill cat isn't just insanely beneficial. Uh, under your about me, it says your Pokemon streamer, what type of Pokemon I play. So I used to play, um, so I got partnered on Twitch like eight years ago playing Pokemon Sun and Moon. I did shiny hunting and I also did some competitive battling. But I, I used to play every Pokemon that came out, but I just haven't had as much time as I got older. But yeah, that was eight years ago. Got partnered on Twitch for playing Pokemon. Meteor over Celis, like asking pizza or ice cream better? Yeah. They're they're essentially the same. It's just for a new player, I think Meteor Coward's just easier to gear. You're going to use them faster. You're going to use them in literally every draft. And your opponent isn't going to first pick Meteor Coward. Your opponent is likely to first pick C. Lilius. Then you have one less character on your account that you can pick. Um, most people do, most people do not first pick Meteor Kyrak, but as a new player, you can first pick him. If you counter, if you counter Kyrak and counter the whole game, basically Lua, yeah. But Meteor, is the biggest difference in RTA, or, hold on. The biggest difference is in RTA where Smogate makes counters to Lewis, no one counters have ever made for Kyrak. Yeah, the only counters for Kyrak are, um, Lua and Knockwall, but the thing is, Meteor Kyrak is going to survive until turn two, or survive until turn two most of the time, so it doesn't matter. You finally beat Zeo in your main, did it in about five minutes, never did it before because I was lazy. Did you do the one shot, Sigurd? So AOL holds hand guy hostage, but then slow AOL, even though it holds hand guy hostage, your hand guy is holding AOL hostage, right? So at that point, you're just holding each other hostage and you each are fighting a 3v3 at that point. You did one shot it. What if hand guys DPS? Yeah, if hand guys DPS, then your art. Well, even if hand guy isn't, hand guy does good damage without being DPS. So if you're ever in a situation where it's AOL versus hand guy, hand guy's already infinitely better. I don't know. There were just too many people that were high RTA players that told me Meteor Coward. So I, I just, based off that, I cannot suggest C Lilius. So this is riding in gear two since I don't have the bulk for it. Yep. It's very hard to build a proper sea lace early. Like you could get away with probably a way worse one than you're thinking in your mind, but not not overall too good. You don't want to be scared to try to use a character. One meteor coward you can just put free HP gear on him. One of your free HP gear from Golem or Hunt challenges, whatever. And you're chilling. I'm s uh, sorry, I didn't catch any answer. The worst. Oh, wait. I right, answered that. Who knows how long it'll take for me to get motivated to do Laden Quest? Dude, the Aiden Quest is the worst thing in the game. It's amazing once you get it done, especially for new players, because then you have Aiden. But as someone who has done the Aiden Quest about eight times now, uh, yeah, not fun. Like, doing Aiden Quest on this account, I'm just dreading. But hey, gotta do it, get it done. I saw KHM fighting slow match, solo DPS hand guy versus Sunny and somehow hand guy won. Yep. Hand guy used himself CR push. Gives him, like, he's. Meat Eater Kyrk is so good. And dude, Megalevia, in the official Epic 7 Discord, there was a comment the other day about 
Um, there's a comment about, what was it? Destina not being good. There were people in there. It's like, why is he even suggest Destina? She's not even good right now. And I was just smashing my head against the wall. I just can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Those are players that are allowed to give other players advice. I can't. Oh, not good where he's, she's better. She's she's so good everywhere. Those are the kind of players that when someone pulls Rand, they're like, oh yeah, he's really good. You should build him as a new player, and they have a 240 Rand. That's what the their Discord is. And they Oh, it's so brutal. So brutal. 240 ran more like walk yeah <laughs> crawled i think 240 is crawling running ran is 280 <laughs> that's actually funny but yeah i've i've i have a 270 hand guy but man the damage hand guy looks so nice as I could build a crazy one. If I took my ML shoe gear and put it on Mediator Kaurik, he'd be so strong. But I wonder what ranks your haters are. I don't know. A couple of the people in there are decent rank. They're an Emperor. But majority of them giving advice are people who don't play RT. What about Counterhand Guy? Counterhand Guy can work too. There's a few people that use him. I just, I don't know. I don't, I never liked Counterhand Guy because you're just relying on RNG. But the amount of times I've lost to Counterhand Guy is a little too high for me to think it's ever going to be considered bad. Yeah, it's it's 99% don't even play RTA or they played it like two seasons ago and they have no idea what the current meta is. That's the biggest difference with my guide is I keep up with every RTA meta. And I'm also willing to cook a little bit. So I find that that's the one issue I would say though. It's good and bad. I cook a little bit too much, so I find things that can be good for new players that wouldn't be good for old players. And then the old players are like, that's terrible advice. But they haven't played low level RTA or like new player account RTA ever. Uh, that part's hard. Counter Sage Ball, that sounds annoying. Bro, first pick APOC. They would probably, if you ask them APOC right now, they'd probably tell you she's pretty good still. Like, I really feel like they're, like, always one year behind in the RTA mode in there. Because whenever I made the first new player guide, they were all telling people to build Spectre Sebria on Lifesteal set. Like, they were all still on Lifesteal Stenny, which was, like, a year, year and a half ago. So I'm pretty sure the official Discord is just, I would say, at least six months behind the RTA mode on average. If not longer. And that's how it works. The high RTA meta is going to adapt faster and then it slowly trickles down to low RTA. But yeah, EB, that, that, was, that was the start. Peop Some people have changed their minds though. This is why I've been like super motivated to to change things a little bit because some people in there have changed their minds. So like, oh, it's... It, like his stuff works now they don't say you're bricking your account they say your stuff works but ours is more optimized sure for Kirkerbat it works yeah but Kirkerbat has god tier gear like how many lifesteal stennies are out there especially for new players who is building a lifesteal stenny as a new player nobody you're not gonna have good enough lifesteal gear to make her very good like you're better off like your abyss lifestyle gear is better used on aiden nowadays then but in terms of stenny i would say at least 90 percent of all stennies are either speed or destruction and either pen set secondary crit set or immunity very few immunity stennies out there nowadays too second so painter like a sage can't beat her pain in the ass what stage is that that's the that's not even this chapter is it or is that chapter seven stuck here for weeks now i should make a i should make a like video guide for beating each boss for the second channel i did it just for you all to test it but i should go through and just make one for beating like any boss i think people could be stuck on even some of the early bosses 
And if they get a 3k defense Apoc Ravi tech, yep. Yeah. Lighthead is a standard immunity until the other day and was raging how ineffective it was in this meta, yep. It's just like, we're in a debuff meta. Like, Meteor Cowork is is really important right now. And a lot of people aren't playing him as much as I think they should be. I think he'll see a, like, a big uptick. The one before Bell, Bell, or, uh, Bellion? Okay, so it's in chapter nine. It'll be a while for him there. It'll be like this afternoon. How the heck do you change skins? And the stupid new UI? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I have not I have not touched skins since the UI changed. Yeah, but debuffs are way too strong right now to take anything but Meteor to Kyrick. You just won't take a turn. That's the biggest thing. If you don't have debuff cleansing, if you don't have Destino, you don't have hand guy, you can't play RTA as a new player. If you don't have Destino or hand guy, I don't see how you could ever play RTA. Ones especially the cleave, yeah. This is a debuff mode and somehow and somehow Ed still sucks. Yo, why haven't we gotten prototype Chloe? Prototype Chloe, Dark Unit, ML5 coming soon. Dude, prototype Clo Chloe's in stage three. Is prototype Clo Chloe a uh, moonlight character or is she I think she might be one of the next MLs. If she is a moonlight character. I don't know her story. She she'd om she could almost be a four star. Imagine they made her a four star instead of five star. Completely shake the game up to where you're feeding five stars into a four star for imprint. That sounds like a uh You still alive, I guess. Guiding light Angelica? Ooh. Should we get ML Melissa next? I don't even own regular Melissa. It's the only five star I don't own, so. I don't know if I'd like that. Get resisted nerd. Imagine ML Luna. I can't believe we haven't got ML Luna yet either. There's a lot of characters. I just don't understand why they haven't released them yet. Wait, did someone do surveys? Any hey, whoever did a couple surveys, thank you. We should hit the 250. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go over the surveys. I wanna stream later today and go over it more. I would like to hit 250 so if someone wins. I think it's a hundred something dollars. A US based only sponsorship though, I'm not doing again. It um, well. I might do it, but I'm just no not to get my hopes up because a US, most of you guys I've learned are not US. So trying to do a US based only sponsorship, very, very not good. Cause I, it just feels bad because a lot of you guys get like not included in it. When you some DDR counters, I really thought that Christy would be a DDR counter. I thought she would have a, um, either her S3 would cleanse or her uh, she would be given like some kind of passive ability to cleanse when someone uses a non-attack skill. I really thought she'd have some cleanse in her kit. Everyone's complaining about her getting like effectiveness. That's the main thing that was the problem. Right? That's the main thing. She doesn't have a cleanse. Like Pillis gets a cleanse. Why is a character that's like Effectors base not the one that gets a cleanse? Do you use Sermia later? No, I never use Sermia. You can. I mean, Sermia is an okay character for PV stuff, but... I don't remember putting Sermia on my tier list. I put her in okay, right? I gotta remember to upload the tier list after. Did we, uh, did we do the tier list? Yeah, the tier list will be up on YouTube and shortly. Uh-oh, wait, wait, wait. We have to go ahead around that anytime between 15 and the month, which should, yes. Oh, right, guys, I have a six sponsor at the end of the month. So we're gonna have two more game sponsors this month, guys. Both of them are pretty cool. Like there, there's one though at the end of the month the, it's an anime style game with boobs the size of northern texas so we have two two sponsors for us a month one of them is like a raid shadow legends style game i would say that starts next friday and then the friday after that we'll be starting uh it's like it's it's our style's close to e7 but it's got some some massive ball honkers didn't want this to get lost on the suggestion channel how about a prior list for scs yeah um, we have like an advisor channel, so I can put it there and get that. Like effectiveness don't make any sense on Christy, true. 
All right, but they just they just messaged me back. Hold on, I'm just gonna show it. Nobody download this yet, okay? I'm gonna show it, I don't care. Hold on, let me find a video of it. All right, you guys ready? We're gonna have this sponsor at the end of the at the end of the month leaked. I don't care. I'm excited for it. It's got to be fun. Okay, I know what you guys are gonna say. You're gonna be like, "Oh wow, chibi game," but once you see, you'll understand. All right, you ready? This is uh, just gameplay of it. Sheesh! Look at those! Look at those! This is my sponsor at the end of the month, though. Look at that! Sheesh! Okay. Hey, what do you think? What? Do, how do you think I did? Pretty good sponsor, right? Looks good. Pretty good. I swear I saw nips. Yeah, there's one character that only has nip covered. But yeah, that will be end of the month sponsor. So all you have to do for that is legit download and open the game. But I have a feeling a lot of us are going to be playing it. Have I tried a new Black Clover game? now? So we have, it's Nikki 2.0. You'll see. It looks very plot heavy. Something's heavy about it. That's for sure. But yeah, so honestly, same size as these seven characters. Yep. What's the name of the game? It's called Echopolyps. Uh, Echopolyps, I believe. But again, try not to download it until I do the sponsor. So that, that way, because if you download it now, it won't count towards the sponsor. <laughs> but the sponsor for that will be on the um, like 23rd. I think it'll be on like the 23rd. But I have another sponsor before that. So if any of you guys are wanting to help me out, make sure I can go to the dentist next year. If you guys, if you had to download the sponsor stuff, then I go to the dentist and I can ask them directly. What do you think about mouthwash before or after brushing? Yeah, it's called Echopolyps. Like E-C-H, like Echo. Um, it's like Apocalypse, but Echopolyps. But yeah, I don't know. I have two, I have two cool sponsors and they're the easiest things in the world to support. You legit have to download and open the game. It's already done. And you play the game however long you want. If we can get as many downloads on these two, that means next year, starting the year, I can pay my taxes. Usually after brushing, most people do it after brushing, but like as I got older, I learned you're supposed to do it before brushing. But maybe it was with certain mouthwashes, I don't know. But yeah. So at the end of the month, I will happily take any support possible. Because if we get, say if, if we got 250 downloads, which, it's super easy. Like you guys could download on your phone and emulator and each person could count as two and it would take you five minutes to do both if that. So it should be doable to reach 250 on each one. Maybe. Because you can download an emulator too. So downloading your phone and emulator if you want. I don't know about doing both. You probably shouldn't do both. I would say don't do both. That's cheating the system. Never mind. But just each one of you downloading, there's got to be a 250 total that'd be able to do both, right? If I stream enough. And I could pay my taxes next year. If we win that E7 video competition too, dude, my next year could be so good. I could maybe buy a house. I just saw a car six buy a house and I'm so jealous. Dude, getting married in life is such a cheat code. Having two incomes is so, it's so, so powerful. You can do so much. You have to marry the right ones, I know. That is the hard part of it. It's a cheat code, but you have to do it right. Dual income, no kids. Dude, the dink thing is so annoying. Those videos, like they're all accurate. It's like, oh yeah, you guys get to live the exact life you want. But they, they're they like, we're dinks, we can blah, blah, blah. And they say it every two seconds. It's like, okay, that word is super annoying to hear. That's also skamaz for men, though. Dude, it's not skamaz for men if you find the right one. 
if you find the right person you get tax it, like tax benefits you get there's so many benefits for being married dinks are the modern age vegans agreed people get married way too early i feel like the age 28 to 35 that range is like the safest marriage range but you never know divorce rate is like 65 percent or something in america and usually in a divorce the male gets screwed but the reason those stats are so high is because multi divorces get counted in that so i don't know what the actual statistics are on first marriage divorces i just don't like the government being involved well yeah I got, can you betray someone take all your shit think this bs yeah like it's and the fact that you can cheat on your significant other they leave you and then you get half of their belongings is insane i don't understand how how many of you guys okay i'm about to get you in trouble i'm not gonna ask this but how do people cheat 41% first marriage divorce. That's still almost one, like 50 50. The thing is, we summon on characters with a 0.1% or 1% odd of getting them and are okay with it. So you're really okay with signing into a binding contract at a 50% chance for it to go bad? Like, would you take a 50% chance on a summon that you just delete a character in your account? Probably not. I'm 25 and never dated a girl in your life. That might not be a bad thing. I'll be honest. That might not be a bad thing. Probably saved a lot of money. But how do people cheat? How can you cheat? Like, and what... How... Like, why would you not... If you're not happy, why do you not just end the relationship? Like, when you're married, I understand... I, I don't understand it, but... I understand why you're not ending it. You're just trying to find a short-term happiness. Like, how do people do it? How do you cheat? Some states don't actually allow that and definitely a cheater gets taken to cleaners. Oh, really? Okay, I need to check with my state. Because the thing is, I'll never cheat. If I if I am ever in a relationship, I don't even... If another girl texts me or anything, I don't even look at it 90% of the time unless it's an emergency. I'll text them back usually three days later to prove a point. But I just... Now suddenly, hot girls... Wait, wait. Step one, you drink a lot of attractiveness enhancement. Step two, suddenly hot girl hits on you. I never put myself in a situation where I'm drinking without my other person there, though. Like, even if I go with the boys, I wouldn't drink at that point. If I knew I didn't have the self-control, like, I understand how it happens, Tristan. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't put, like, if I get in a relationship with somebody, I have the most respect for that person out of anybody. Or else I wouldn't have gotten in a relationship. So there's no way I would, there's no way I could see it. See you're doing it all wrong? Okay. At that point, if you're gonna be, if you want to just sleep around with everybody, that's perfect for modern day dating culture. No one wants to commit to anything, so just go bang everybody you want. Who cares at that point? You know how hard it is to find someone who actually just wants one person, and that's all they want in life. Do I need to make you a how-to guide? Yes, Tristan. <laughs> New player guide for cheating on your girlfriend. Perfect. I guarantee that does numbers we've never even considered. Married Asian woman? The last girl I dated was Asian. My man spends every waking moment with me and I am home all the time, but he looks at the cars and most men look at women. I would be the same. I don't know. If I am ever with somebody that I'm interested in, they're the only person I'm thinking about. Like, I, it's the hottest girl in the world could walk by and I don't think I'd even notice them just because my brain just shuts off. It's just like the same with, like, if my friends are ever dating anybody, I don't even like think if they're attractive or not. I don't have that ability for, I don't know what reason, but like usually friends are like, oh yeah, she's really good looking, good job. I don't even, I just look at them as a homie. I don't under, I, I don't know why, but like any of my friends' wives, I've never even thought about like, do I find them attractive? I just think, oh, good for them. They found their person. It's weird. I don't know. And I, but everybody else that I know, they're like, oh yeah, X person's dating whoever. Good job. Gonna clip this out of context and cancel you. Math is interesting, multi partners, and even tends to work out really. Took a master's level human sexuality class for my grad program. 
I mean, I'm sure it could work out better. New Dater Guide 2024. The states you're thinking of, I uh, use something called No Fault Divorce, or it's a 50-50 no matter what. Is a 50-50... I... That's the thing with a 50-50. 50-50s... Nowadays, a lot of wives make more than husbands. But in the past, 50-50s were always bad for the husband. But now, like, modern times, that most women are working... Like, I did, a lot, it might be the woman, women getting screwed over in, like, the next five years. If anyone gets divorced, women are the ones getting obliterated. They're the ones that made 80% of the income for the household, and now they... That's why you sign a prenup? Well, yeah. I don't have anything for them to take. Like, I, will, I, I would not marry someone who wasn't working. Like, I'm not going to have someone be completely reliant on me. There's no way. And I want the dual income because that's how you get further in life. At that point, I'll just go date. Not get too attached to somebody. I'm super nervous getting into a relationship. I've never dated. Just be careful. The first relationship you get into, you're going to be heads, head over heels for that person. You're going to do everything they want. And they, if there's someone who's been in multiple relationships, they will notice that and take full advantage of it. So be careful. Jokes aside, cheating is something that most people do because they got in a relationship when they weren't ready to. Yeah. Mature self-awareness is the right thing. And that's why cheating is common in the under 25 finding themselves crowd and why divorce rates are supposed to be higher in pre-25. Yeah. That makes sense. I really feel like marriage past 25 is the best. Now, some people make it work early and that's great. But most people's brains just aren't developed to think about, to truly think about the consequences of their bad actions. Prenup just for your cat. I didn't even think about that. Your pets, how do pets work in divorces? How do pets work? Because I could see if you split 50-50 and like the one person doesn't doesn't like any of the pets. Like, could you have one of your pets taken? Whoever, whoever the pet likes more? <laughs> I would hate that though. Of course, like some people, the pet's gonna like more because they're the person that doesn't get onto them. You cut the cat in half. <laughs> okay, okay, chill. Buddy. He's so cute. Oh my god, I love cats. Something, there's just something about cats. There's the cutest things to exist. He's snoozing on my bed. I call. I just did that little noise. He, he opened his eyes, super tired, looked at me. He's like, what do you want? And then laid his head back down. It's so cute. Everyone who's in their 20s thinks they're ready. No one in their... No one in under... Wait, hold on. Let me move my chat over. I'm missing out on half of this. No one who is 25 thinks a 20-year-old version of themselves is ready for anything? Exactly. If I look back to myself at 25, holy cow. The amount I cared about what other people thought, like the, the decisions I made because I was worried about other people's opinions, that didn't go away until I was 20, like probably about 25. But whenever you're younger, you think people care at all about your life. And then as you get older, you realize, why am I not just doing what I like? That is the, I think that's the biggest part of growing. Once that goes away, you are unstoppable. You just start enjoying everything you do. I was banner, I met my first boyfriend on Twitch at 18 or 27. We got married at 25 on our ninth anniversary a couple weeks ago. Hell yeah. I think people can make things work. Yeah, definitely. Everyone's different. So there, I really feel like a lot of people just get into relationships with the wrong person. They get into a relationship, they don't want to end the relationship, but that person's actually not right for them because they're not truly happy. Like, I I really think when you find the right person, you know. Like, I mean, there's, I don't think there's soulmates. I feel like everyone has like 50 billion soulmates. There's so many people in the world. But there's, there's a big difference between being reasonably happy and then finding someone that you would just give anything for. Like, you see them as like a perfect person. They are, they are the perfect person to spend the rest of your life with. I have not found it yet. I will tell you right now. Not even close. It's never too early or late to start dating, for sure. Just d the judge decides. So if someone had a pet before going into a relationship, they're not going to lose the pet. That's good to know. 
I'm 29, still a little bit of you, but 25 year old me is a huge idiot. Yeah, I know I'm still dumb. And you guys hear some of the stuff I say and talk about on stream. You guys know I'm still an idiot. But I feel like if you lose all your idiot, then life becomes more boring. It's like there's certain things I don't research because talking about it just makes it way more fun. Like having an ignorant perspective in any argument makes that argument so much more enjoyable. Like when to use mouthwash exactly. Like little stuff like that. It doesn't have to be like big life advice. But just just finding the uh the little things that you can be an idiot on, make a fun conversation. It's not just for streaming, especially if you're dating. If you're dating and and go out and bring up a stupid conversation about mouthwash and the person actually has an opinion on it, you can come up you can create the dumbest conversation that's not going to be forgotten. That's not a great conversation, but that's just an example. That's why I say ignorance is bliss. That is the case on a lot of health issues. For sure. The less you know about it, then like what taxes? Actually, that was a big topic of my last first, like the last first date I went on. I sat and complained about taxes forever. <laughs> I had to, like, cause they were self-employed too. So it was kind of back and forth. But dude, I was, last year I was so mad about taxes. I never thought I'd get ass blasted that hard. <sighs> what was your best date ever? Best date ever. Like first date or just all dates? That might be hard. Because like once you have an attachment to somebody, the dates are always more fun and it makes everything better. But first dates are always like awkward. Well, not always awkward, but you don't have as much attachment to it. I don't know. It's probably just like a late night one going around uh, the city. I'm trying to think the exact. Like anytime I go out and like either go to a park late at night and walk around or anything and just explore the city. I don't remember any specific one, though, that I would say. Because usually the person at that point doesn't matter. As long as they're just there, I'm happy. Because I'm just going out for myself at that point. It's like I want to get out and go explore. <laughs> Alright, here we go. I think this one might be my favorite first date. Or just date in general. So I went out and met this girl first time. We were going to go to watch a move. And I don't think we're going to watch a movie. We're going to go do something, but we didn't know what yet. So we met at this area that has just a ton of stuff to do. And then we ended up going to a super fancy restaurant. I got a steak. And then uh, we're like, all right, are we going to do anything else? And I was like, I said that there's a park nearby. So then we went around and walked at the park. It was around Christmas last year, actually, or Thanksgiving. I think one of the two. I think it was closer to Christmas. But I went, we went down, we walked around the park for a while. There was a bunch of like Christmas stuff going on. There were Christmas lights everywhere. So we ended up, well, we got hot chocolate, went around, drove around the Christmas lights and looked at those for like two hours. It was like a six hour. We planned to like meet for like probably an hour or two and then it turned into like a six or eight hour thing. That was probably my favorite just because nothing really happened. But the funniest part about that is even though that was like my favorite date looking back on, I never, I, I told her I wasn't interested because <laughs> she, she wasn't what made it fun. It was just going out that made it fun. She was like, I don't know. Well, you got to go work 1.30. All right. Have a good rest of your day. Mountain Dew for life. Wait, Mountain Dew for life. There's like a Twitch Mountain Dew thing going on. But the funniest part about that is I would say that's probably my favorite date I went on, especially first date. But I told her I wasn't interested after. <laughs> this was fun. Not because of you. <laughs> I just enjoyed being out like it could have been anyone with me and I mean I, I I thought about that while I was in the car I was like this could literally be anyone with me and I'd be having a good time she was just she was just boring and she was okay guys I this might be this might sound toxic but I care about health okay I'm really skinny which is a flaw but I don't want to date someone who is how do I put it? How do I put this without saying something terrible? How do I put this? When you look at someone, you can tell in five to ten years, they're probably not going to take care of your, themselves and be overweight. A big fat slob, yeah. And that was the person that 
I could just tell, like, if, if I were to commit to this person, I know they're not going to take care of their health, and I will probably not find them attractive for very long. It's the best way to put it. That's the thing is like, I'm skinny, so I'm not in good health. I'm not one to judge other people's health, but I know what I want. Okay. And that was what I saw. And I was like, I don't, she wasn't even, she wasn't super skinny, but she wasn't over, I would say like overweight or anything, but I could see, I don't know. No, she didn't pick out. She barely ate anything. And it, when, a, when someone barely eats anything and they're already a little, like you could tell they're on that track. That, I don't know, dude. I don't know how to put this. This feels so bad. <laughs> Too many politically correct words. I don't know how to say it. I'm going to sound like an asshole no matter how I put this, but... <sighs> Unable to take care of themselves? They could take care of themselves, but usually... <sighs> I don't know. Let's just stop there. Either way, she was... She was not as skinny as her profile picture. She wasn't fat, but I could just tell long-term she was not going to be healthy and if i'm gonna have kids with somebody i want them to be healthy not just for me but for the kids too over time i want them to have a was she dirty no guys i okay it wasn't a catfish either her profile pictures were just from a little bit before people could put on like five to ten pounds in no time okay if she wasn't fat but I'm just telling you, when you look at someone, you can tell. Like, maybe I have a superhuman power. It's like, when you look at me, you should be able to tell. I'm never going to be fat. It's impossible. There will never be a time. Like, look. Okay? When you see a 30-year-old... Let me adjust myself. When you see a 30-year-old that looks like this, is, are they ever going to be fat in their whole life? No. So if you're turned off by someone skinny, then yeah, you should get out of that too. If being someone who's who's a little like borderline underweight, then you should get out of that. Like that's just obvious. If you're not gonna find that attractive or you don't find that healthy, then get out of it. And that's what I saw with that. They were a little bit bigger, and I knew that like they're not going to be that same. <laughs> I don't know. Let's be done. Let's be done. This is awkward. <laughs> But that is, again, back to the beginning of the story. That was my first, or like favorite date I've been on, but I never talked, or I never, I... The reason though, okay, let's go deeper into this. The reason was I was talking to the other girl at the time, right? The girl I ended up dating for the, the last, last year. So I was talking to her at the time and I was supposed to go out with her like right after. And I talked to her, but I already knew that I wasn't too interested, but I still talked to her and like was thinking about why not go do a second thing because I'm bored, whatever. But then I went out with this other girl, the doctor girl. The doctor girl, she had me. I was like, okay, nope, this is this could be something. I'm going to put all my time and interest into this. And that's where the last year of my life went. And that's why also I decided not to go back out with the other girl because this girl was better. Debatably. Long term, maybe not. But <laughs> at the time, I was like, this girl... Dating a doctor? Hell yeah. I'm, I'm as skinny as you. A lot of people are. No one's happy with their weight. That is one thing. And you shouldn't let your weight dictate how you think about the world. Because I know I'm skinny and a lot of people aren't attracted to skinny people. And if you're fat, a lot of people aren't attracted to fat people. Some people don't care. You eat 100 grams a day? I drink like nine... I drink like nine sodas a day. I eat everything that I want to eat. I just can't get weight. It just doesn't happen. I know for a fact because I was as skinny as you and even more I was 179 I got addicted to Red Bull and went for 80 big belly recovered 65 but never say never dude trust me there is nothing in this world unless I get put on like some kind of medication like thyroid medication or something that will ever make me gain weight it's not possible steroids or thyroid medication only two things antidepressants maybe if that even did anything you shouldn't care that much about your weight, but at least think objectively. Yes. So don't, don't like beat yourself up over your weight too much. Like you, obviously there's going to be a way you want to get to, but the thing is people are going to be attracted or not attracted. There are some people that are attracted to people who weigh 500 pounds. And some, there are some people that they have that thing in their head that they're like, that's what I want. And so no matter what you are, there's going to be, there's somebody out there that's going to want you. <laughs> All right. It does not matter. What happened to trying to quit soda? <laughs> We're not going to talk about that. Guys, I get the worst headaches. How do you get past not drinking soda? 
Like, how do you do it? I get the worst headaches. I even bought like a big bottle of ibuprofen to try to help it. How do you get past drinks? I got a dad bod. Girls love dad bods. I think if you were to take us a, uh, a test of 100 people, 100 girls who would uh, put, would they rather have a buff guy, dad bod, or skinny guy? I bet you dad bod would win over buff guys. It's unbelievable. Like, like the, the, the average girl, I think, likes dad bods more than buff gym guys. It's weird. Like, I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. That's my experience. So maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure if you take a hundred girls and put a, like, who would they rather date? And I think, I think it's a part of a mental thing too, because the dad bod guy is like higher, less likely for them to cheat on them. So in their brain, if they have to think about that, they're going to pick the dad bod guy just because they're like, they find him attractive versus the buff guy who can get anything. And then skinny guys just get left out in the, the dust usually. Dad, dad bods are a superpower. Any of you guys that have that, you should be very happy you have that. I think uh, short-term girls would treat buff guys over dad bods. If it was, okay, it's not who would you rather have sex with, okay? Sex with probably would be dad bods. Or not, sorry, it'd be buff guys. Who would you rather, like, who could you see yourself marrying or dating long-term? Dad bods, I think, would win every time. I have dad bod, I'm telling you. It's good. Somehow got Misha and Bryce here at the same time alarmed. That's actually good. All right. Guys, have we talked enough about nonsense? I just swear these new player guide things, I get on one topic and then we went from toothbrush to... Who asked that? It was one of you guys' fault. You asked me what my favorite date was. I haven't gone to the dentist in 10 years to scare myself. My mouth is still probably more clean than a lot of people who go to the dentist all the time. Okay. Most of the time. <laughs> Every dono, one piece of clothing off. I'm wearing four pieces of clothing. I have a jacket, or I have a hoodie, a shirt, boxers, and pants. You legit, I would be naked so fast. I don't know, some of the people who had the most girlfriends had dad bod of who I know. It's just, I don't, I don't know what it is. I'm telling you. Even, oh my God, wait, we're going down one more rabbit hole. Okay, so the first girl I ever dated, right? This is part of what obliterated me mentally for so long. The first girl I ever dated, I was like head over heels for. This girl, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I had never really been attached to anyone. Like my parents, I never had like a close relationship with anyone my whole life, okay? So finally having feeling like I had like a, a close attachment to somebody, I dated her for like four years and over that time after we separated um there's a bunch of stuff that happened there. i won't get into that but this is why my head got so messed up for so long when we first got out of the relationship she started like i like i didn't see any of the stuff she put for a long time but after like a year i went and saw um and like she posted something about like dad bods um something with skinny people and she ended up dating like a pretty, pretty hefty guy after me. Like he was not muscular at all. It was just, it was just pure fat at that point. And I saw that. And like, after seeing the post about like skinny guys being X thing, it was like, I don't know why, because we ended on decent terms. Like it wasn't like bad at all. We didn't hate each other or anything, but like getting like the stray, the stray punches here and there, like that, that made me so unhappy with myself for so long. And just the, just, the, it was so bad for me mentally. Social media is one of the worst things that ever happened to the world. Like sometimes, sometimes opinions <laughs> just don't need to be out there because they, they fucked me up for so long. I just, I mean, I didn't date for like three years after that. I was just like, all right, whatever. At this point, I'm not happy with myself. I'm not gonna be happy with anybody else. That was actually most of my life. Like occasionally I would just decide to, but which is social media, kind of, I guess. Yeah. Still Twitch shouldn't exist. Honestly, the world would be better without the internet. I think we'd be, I think we'd be in a better place without the internet mentally. 
I think everybody would just be going about their lives, going to work, doing their thing. The internet ruined everything. It's great. I love it. It gave me a job. But I think without the internet, things would be much, much better. <laughs> uh, exposing yourself more, kidding, this is all good and fun. Like, I don't know. I think the world would be much better without the internet. If you drink a lot, going cold turkey can be very difficult. Try to cut back slowly until you quit entirely. I already have cut back. If you guys didn't know, I used to drink like four to six cans of soda every day. Every day. Now I drink two. Okay, so I have already cut back dramatically. I think yesterday I drank three though. No, I drank two waters yesterday. I drank two can, two. Yeah, one with dinner, one with uh, lunch. So I drank two sodas yesterday and then two waters. But I, I've cut back. So I'm maybe I'm on the right path still, but. I'll just say if I don't have soda for too long, my brain is just, it's cooked. I didn't crit. Uh oh. Please don't kill me. Have you checked for diabetes? No. Guys, you can tell. If you are on track for diabetes, you can, you can tell. You are going to feel it. All right, I want to heal. Like you are going to show the symptoms of being on track for diabetes. I currently do not have those symptoms. So. You can feel your body is fucked up. Yeah, like trust me, a diabetes is something that runs in my family. A lot of a lot of things with it. But luckily I came from my dad somehow. I don't know how he did it, but I came from him and then my dad drank so much soda his whole life, and he's still fine. He's got a couple like health problems now. Uh, mostly, it's like joint stuff. It's from like his work, um, so he has to get like hand surgeries and stuff like that. But I think I'm pretty safe. I do need to cut back. Trust me. I know I I, I know I can't drink six sodas a day when I'm in my 30s, but I think I'm pretty fine for right now. At least you'd be okay until like five to eight years. Yeah. I mean, the world probably won't even last that long. Looking around at everything. Dude, let's just live it up for like three years and the world goes any longer. Then we don't have to save for retirement, right? Like, there, there's gotta be a win con here. This, the earlier you die, the less money you need for when you're older. So why not just drink some extra sodas? Just spend all the money you have. Just plan to die when you're 50. Like after you're 50, if you don't have kids or anything, what do you, maybe 60. I would say 60 to 70, but after 70, your body, you're just waking up and your body is obliterating you every day. Do you want to live through that? Once you get that old, you probably do. But like thinking about it right now, if I woke up every day and could barely like get out of bed without every part of me hurting, like once you reach 25, you're going to notice one thing wrong with yourself like per week. You're like, oh, I have a bump here. Uh oh, I have, why does my back hurt today? Like once you reach 25, you're going to start having one little issue like once a month, once every two weeks that you're just like, you get over worried about and it's your body's just slowly starting to break down. Imagine being 70 and having like nine things wrong with you every time you try to do anything. That sounds miserable. Most depressing thing I've heard was my grandma asked her how she was. She said, I'm wanting to die. I've heard that from a lot of old people. Because after a certain point, you're just so brittle. You can't do anything. It's like, there'll be something your mind wants to do. You're like, oh, I want to go out and work on the garden. I want to go do X thing. And you can't. You physically can't do the things you want to do. So I understand it for sure. Like living too long. Not sounding too good. Nothing RTA can't fix. Here's the thing, though. We're living at the golden time. Probably one of the golden times of, of living. Uh, like By the time we're old, there will probably be solutions to everything. My grandpa is 80, still walks 10 kilometers. How much Mountain Dew was he drinking in his 40s, though? And his 30s? Did he drink six Mountain Dews per day? Not all old people are going to, like, have problems, right? But a lot of old people are. So, do you want to take that risk? Again, gotcha odds. We're playing gotchas. Our life is a gotcha. Are we high rolling as we get older? Can't wait to become cyborg. Dude, that's probably the future. My grandson's still driving in his late 90s. That should be illegal. The amount of old people I've seen driving 
that's scary. I feel like once you reach a certain point, it sucks, but I feel like you should have your driving privileges revoked. Because you're putting other people... That's like, I think a 90-year-old driving is more dangerous than a 12-year-old driving. Like, you have the brain... Okay, maybe not. You have the brain power not to drive like an idiot, but you don't have the ability to focus. Whereas a 12-year-old is going to drive 100 everywhere they go because they're an idiot. So maybe not. He wasn't a bad driver, though. Okay, well, maybe he's the exception. Because most old people that I've ever driven with... I was riding back with my grandpa. My my grandma and grandpa, we had to go to the hospital because my grandma got a fish hook stuck in her hand. We were driving back. My grandpa just rear-ended the shit out of this guy uh, up in the city. He just was... Red, red light just goes straight up to him, just, sm like, smokes his car. The guy gets out, sees my grandpa, old-ass man. He's, like, 80 at the time. Sees this old ass man driving. He just got back on his car and just drove off. He was like, I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> when do you unlock hunts? Um, stage 4 8. 4 8, I believe. Why do you ask? I think it's 4 8. Hold on. Let me go look. I believe hunts is 4 8. It's part of the, uh, because you have to clear one with Tyria. I think it's in chapter four. A uh, friend asked me and I had no idea. Is someone making a new player guide? Hold on. What is the only reason to ask that? Who is this friend? I am, I am now. I'm just kidding. Someone makes a new player guide, it's whatever. It is what it is. Gramps didn't draft LRK. I think he did draft LRK. That's why our car wasn't hurt. Like, his car and our car weren't hurt. He hit him going at least 15. Like, it just bumped out of each other, and there was, like, no damage. There's disgust. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Have I decided for lunch yet? No, we started talking about nonsense, and I forgot about food. I don't think I have anything here to cook. I have to drive out. It's 12 o'clock. I, I think I earlier decided on just a 10-piece Chicken McNugget combo. I think that's just the easiest. Go make a McDonald's run. It won't cost very much. Come back, eat. Oh, I need to upload the video, though. Before I leave, I need to get that video uploaded. PV got Tristan not knowing when you unlock hunts. So that's, like, the least thing. To be fair, I'm pretty sure Sight has shown the soda doesn't have a ton of detrimental effects long-term, as long as calorie balance and weight is in check. Yeah. That's the thing is when you're in your 20s, almost anything you do, your body can recover from. But it's once you get a little bit older, as long as you're healthy in that time, eat a decent diet, get some exercise, your body can pretty much just take anything you do in your 20s and not care about it. Once your body starts to slow down, that's when everything you do starts struggling. So like if you smoke in your 20s, most people smoke in their 20s and quit and they're fine the rest of their life. They never see any long-term effects of that. So once you're out of your 20s though, that's when you're, uh, it, everybody's body's different. Once you're out of your 20s, starts getting, everything you do is potentially long-term affecting you. Uh, so you're saying Elevmage shouldn't drive anymore? Elevmage should have been done driving like forever ago. Okay, well, I think I'm done. Guys, am I done with the stream? We stream four and a half hours. Like whenever I get on these stupid rants, we, I end up streaming like an extra hour every single time, and I, it feels like it's been 10 minutes. So are we done? Hold on. Let me look. Any Twitch bounties I can do? Probably not. I think my average viewership's getting too low to even get suggested in. Or there just haven't been any, one of the two. But I said this month, I am not going to care about average viewership. We'll care about that later. Keep ranting. I got to get food. All right. Can we get one last Twitch Prime sub check? My wife is five years older than me. She had 30 and started complaining about how different things are. Yeah. Thought she was being dramatic. I'm not 31. Oh, it's different. From 25, like, I don't know. I think my body, I think I'm not truly there yet. But from the time I was 25 in comparison to 20, I noticed something wrong with me every single day. And it was usually nothing. But like, I had like an enlarged thyroid and I started finding bumps. And I was like, shit, what is this bump? And it'd be an ingrown hair or something. Like it, it just always, I'm always so stressed because I find some weird little thing. I have a, I have an inflated uh, thing in my armpit that's been there for two years. What's in your armpit? Little, little glands. What are they called? Can't think of what it's called. 
whatever it is, it's inflamed. Lymph node, there we go, thank you. Yes, I have an inflamed lymph node in my armpit that I was like, oh my god, is this is this a tumor? Which, it's all just like little stuff, it's not it's not anything crazy, people get them all the time. But no, skin tags, no, it's, a, it's just an inflamed lymph node, so. I got my, I, this is probably a lymph node too that's inflamed, but I just think that I got I got some underlying thing from being skinny that's it makes these things get really big and then shrink and then get really big. So I still feel fine. So until I don't feel fine. Then it'll be too late. You're like, oh you should have got checked up two years ago. We could have saved your life. Probably how it's gonna go. <laughs> I'm 21. I have 14 pulmonary embolisms. I don't even know what that means, but that sounds not good. <laughs> your grandpa just hit a crit on the poor guy's car, he did. All right, but that's it. We're ending the stream. I might be back live later. Um, fun stream today, though. Thank you, everyone who subbed and uh, hung out. Thank you for helping with the new player tier list. I'm going to upload that, and I'm going to upload episode two. And then tomorrow, we're going to have the PvP new player tier list, episode or part three of the guide. And then, I don't know. That's it. But have a great rest of your day. Um, are we raiding anybody? Is there any smaller E7 streamers live right now? Any smaller blood clot in your lungs? Holy cow. You're 21? That's just... That's just uh, skill diff. Not skill diff. Genetic diff, it sounds like. You low rolled on being born. And I am sorry for that. Some people just have that. Um, should we raid Lu Lunale? Oh no, Sky Surfing raided us the other day. You know what? Let's raid Sky Surfing 7. Hey, this guy here in the stream? I stream for 5 hours. That's your... That's your issue. But <laughs> all right, we're gonna we're gonna raid Sky Surfing because they raided me not too long ago. I always try to give back to the people that raid me. But if you guys are willing to go over and say hi to them, I don't know what they're doing. Probably playing RTA. That's all there is to do in this game. But hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Shimita, hopefully you'll catch a stream at a better time this weekend. But all right, have a great rest of your day. Peace out.